Uh, I, I think we're live now. Excellent. Probably. And um, if you're tuning in, which I don't know that anyone actually is, but um, it, because it's Saturday at one um, and there's films rolling, but if you, in case you're watching this, um, our keeper today is Adam Scott Glancy of Pegasus Publishing fame. Mm. And, um, Pagan. Also, Pagan. Sorry. Why do I keep? getting that fucked up i don't uh, know Pagan publishing you, and you like pegasus is better than you like pagans i think that's <laughs> it's because i deal with two companies that are one's pagan and one's pegasus so um scott also an author short stories in many 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 anthologies and um has written scenarios and um all kinds of stuff and is just like a fantastic storyteller so um this year we did things a little bit differently with the festival campaign. So we had Sean Branny run the founders call of Cthulhu game, um, which ended up being very prop heavy and fun. Um, but I wanted to make sure that Scott didn't feel like uh, his keeper muscles atrophying. So that I pressed him <laughs> into service to, to run a game for me, mostly because um, I kind of wanted to play and um, I was going to let other people fill seats first, but it ended up that there was one for me. So we have, me, I'm Gwen Callahan, the co-director of the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival in Cthulhu Con. And we also are joined by Andrew Migliori, who is the founder and um, ran the festival for the first 15 years. And we are joined by Cthulhu Girl, a.k.a. Michelle, Michelle LaRock. <laughs> and um, in a little bit, we'll be joined by Sean Branny, who is um, one half of the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society. Um, which is down in LA, but he um, rearranged some stuff in his schedule to be here with us to play. Um, but he is oh, stuck in, probably stuck in traffic. It is, right it is LA. He will jump in when, um, when he, when he is able, but we are going to get started. So Scott, take it away. All right. Um, today we are going to be playing a little something called Delta Green, which is an offshoot of Call of Cthulhu. It began as a Call of Cthulhu um, supplement back in the 90s, but we spun it off 
into its own standalone role-playing game. And it's basically, this, it's a lot of the same rules as 6th edition and earlier editions, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, it is fairly different than um, the way 7th uh, edition Call of Cthulhu is currently run. But so it owes, it owes most its roots to the earlier editions of Call of Cthulhu. Um, uh, but um, it is... Uh, it is a, a little more abstract on its combat in some ways, and um, uh, uh, unlike um, uh, previous versions of Call of Cthulhu, uh, it has sort of a revamped sanity system to make sanity even more alienating and uh, horrible. Um, that's what we're most proud of, is how alienating and horrible our game is. Delta Green is a setting uh, for the modern times. When we wrote it in 96, it was for the 90s, now it's uh, almost 30 years later, and uh, it is still set in modern times. Of course, then again, so was H.P. Lovecraft's stories. There was nothing period piece about his original stories. If anything, they were techno thrillers set with, you know, all this cutting edge sci-fi stuff going on at the time. Um, but Delta Gradle works like this. Uh, whereas Call of Cthulhu is a setting where all the investigators are just individual private citizens who have had a brush with the supernatural or are compelled for some reason to be involved with investigating supernatural things. Delta Green is a government agency with a long and storied history going back to the raid on Innsmouth from the story Shadow of Innsmouth in 1928, um, where the government first became aware that things were not as they appeared, that this was a world that was older and darker and stranger a universe that was more hostile and threatening than uh, previously presumed. Um, and in this setting, uh, the players play agents of this organization. Um, while they uh, are government agents and have government mandate uh, to do their job, they are also um, so secret that uh, they don't appear on any government ledgers. They're all employed in different parts of the federal government doing a, not a cover job, a real job. They really are members of the FBI or the DEA or the U.S. Postal Inspector Service or the uh, Department of Energy or whatever. They really have these real jobs and that's where they draw their pay and that's where they draw their retirement from. But because they are cleared to do Delta Green missions because they have had a brush with the supernatural. They are occasionally called upon to come together with teammates and try and accomplish uh, or solve some problem. Um, Delta Green is very interested in solving supernatural threats to national security. They understand that you can't put a sorcerer in jail. That's not a thing, even if he, the sorcerer doesn't put the brain whammy on the judge or the jury. Um, they'll just gate a hole out of the out of their cell and prison just walk out. You know, you cannot you cannot uh, uh, police the hypergeometric with the mundane. So gasoline uh, matches. Hmm? Gasoline and matches. Then. Gasoline and matches is another matter. We've gone back to some good old fashioned techniques that were very fond of by guys like Matthew Hopkins and other witch hunt finder generals in the in the dark ages. Um, yes, Delta Green still acts in an illegal fashion. The U.S. government officers are not supposed to murder citizens because they were planning to summon uh, an alien god. I'm pretty sure that there's probably a First Amendment protection in there somewhere, right up to the point that the god appears and smashes the earth like a, you know, China cup. But, um, so Delta Green acts illegally. And so because it acts illegally, uh, their agents don't get things like uh, they don't get a get out of jail free card. Ah, hello, Shan, Sh Sean. We are explaining ourselves uh, to the audience about what we're playing today. Sadly, you have arrived, so I can't actually brief everybody uh, about how they're supposed to feed you to the monster when you're not looking. Uh, that was the real mission: was you've got to get you've, we've got to get a sacrifice to this great old one before it wakes up and. Sean was voted the meatiest in choosing <laughs> the team. All right, I have uh, uh, Andrew. You're going to have to make sure he's uh, able to get into the Google Drive. Yep. Um, All right. And let me uh, repost it. Okay. Um, so basically, you guys are all agents of Delta Green. You have been brought together by your higher ups in the organization uh, to perform a mission. 
to perform an operation. The idea is that uh, number one, solve the problem. Number two, make sure the problem doesn't become public. That's the that's the big thing with Delta Green. Is unlike Call of Cthulhu, when you're where you're constantly trying to let the authorities know what's going on and uh, you know get stories published, if not in the you know tabloid yellow journals of the 1920s, you're trying to um, uh, at least uh, uh, tell the world about what you've been up to. You know, warn the world through the um, uh, cheesy fiction stories you're publishing in Weird Tales uh, magazine. Um, while uh, battling the mythos. And Delta Green, there's none of that. We don't want anyone to know that the supernatural is real because we're already having enough trouble with people shooting up schools with AK-47s. We do not need people shooting up schools with a flock of Biaki or night gods or Shagas. That seems, that seems a bit much. So we're going to try and avoid that by keeping all this stuff secret. Now, um, of the characters we have for you, this week today uh let's see here we've got um four uh agents uh we have uh agents uh moultrie milton and marlow now marlow i was gonna uh, let's see uh, marlow and moultrie are the two female agents uh and milton is the male agent and i was actually thinking of handing these out so that um uh Andrew, you would be taking Agent uh, Milton. Um, uh, Gwen, uh, you have a choice between either a DEA agent or a um, forensics person. Same thing for you, Michelle. You have it's DEA uh, agent or kind of rough and tumble or a uh, FBI forensics and a medical expert, very much a Scully, only more acerbic, if there could be such a thing. Who who wants acerbic, who wants tough? I'll I'll take acerbic, but if Michelle would rather play acerbic, I will yield the character to you. I don't care either way. All right. Then in that case, Gwen, if you'll go in there and pull out Agent Moultrie for yourself, that's a two-page character sheet. And Agent Marlowe will be handed off to Michelle LaRock, Cthulhu Girl. And finally, Sh uh, Sean, you get Agent Kamaroff. Got it. All right. Okay, now, everyone would take a second and rename um, your screen so that you, you can. can everybody screen. can do that oh, if yeah. you so choose. It's up at the little three dots on your, if you click on the screen of your picture. I've just redived myself to handler, which makes me <laughs> sound like I should be on a registry someplace. Or or cattle. Mm -hmm. Or your Chelsea Chelsea's big brother. <laughs> it's handler, not fondler, Scott. Yes. Well again, it still <laughs> sounds wrong to me. It just ugh. Um, I get it. We're supposed to handle problems. We're supposed to take care of our agents. Anyways. All right. So if you'll throw those up there, that's great. All right. So if you're looking through your character sheets, they're basically set up like this. Um, your their PDFs, uh, they should be editable. So you can change uh, your hit points, change your um, uh, willpower points as they go up and down. Um, currently everyone's, uh, maximum hit points is also their current hit points. I'm going to walk you through the character sheets. So everyone knows what they're looking at. Personal data at the top statistics, uh, is in the middle of the page along with psychological data on the right hand side. The psychological data gives your gives you background of your character's, uh, sort of motivations, character quirks that you might want to play up during gameplay and any um, uh, uh, mental illnesses your character is carrying. Um, then the next part down is skills. It's just a big old list of your, uh, your skill sets. And in this game, uh, many skills start off with a base skill. 
that'll be the number in with the percentage mark right next to the name of the skill. So first aid, 10%. Everybody has a 10% chance of figuring out how to stop some bleeding, you know, if someone was hemorrhaging. The second number in the column next to it, that's your actual skill. That is what your skill is now that you've, you know, studied and had practice, and that's your actual skill. In this game, we'll all be rolling percentage dice, uh, percentage dice being two tenths of a dice. One is a zeros column, one is the tens column. Double zero is 100, zero one is one. Um, and the idea is roll less than your skill. So the higher your skill, the better chance of getting it. In this game, criticals, Critical successes are doubles under your skill. Also, critical fumbles are doubles above your skill. So uh, that way, the higher your skill, the smaller your chance of getting a fumble. Always kind of bugged me in Call of Cthulhu that fumble was 96 to 100. And that never changed, no matter how high my skill got. If I got a 95 in some skill, I could only either succeed or fumble. Those were my only two options. I couldn't just fail it, all right? So this this game, uh, we decided to change that up a little bit from the original sixth edition Call of Duty rules. All right. Uh, next, uh, one of the things I really need to point out is uh, on the second page, there is a section for equipment. I have put down in your weapons columns the weapons your characters are starting off with. That does not mean you can't pick up other weapons during the game. This is just your basic things that you have at the beginning of the game. Uh, whether that's unarmed combat or your ability to use a uh, uh, a knife or one of those extendable steel batons or whatever. That's all in that section. Above it is equipment. Now, the problem with equipment is that column, that box, has uh, should have a bar that you can go to at, at, on the far uh, right-hand side of the box that you can scroll up and down. So you don't, your equipment, you know, isn't just the first things on the thing, which is just like, you know, comfortable clothes, uh, you know, comfortable shoes, pair of hiking boots. Yeah, I've got all that on there, but it keeps going down. There's more on that list. It's going to go through things like bulletproof vests and H&K pistols and things like that. that will all be on there. I just want to make sure that everybody can read those because I, I did run a game where some, where, where my, my players for whatever reason, perhaps their their access to Adobe Acrobat or an earlier version didn't let them scroll through their equipment. So I want to make sure everybody can look at the things that are on their equipment list. Yeah, my my character sheet, I can't scroll in there. If there's anything else, I can't tell if there's anything else. Okay, you can't scroll in the character sheet. That is very bad. All right, so here's what I'm going to have to do. So I couldn't scroll, but if I put my cursor in and select and then and then select down, I could get everything out, give it everything. And then I copied it into a notepad. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Andrew, I, try that as well. That, that worked. That's perfect. Okay, I'm, good. I'm really glad to see my full list. <laughs> now, uh, one of the things I want to say about this scenario is we're not going to, this is a basic loadout. Um, there are going to be there's going to be access to the uh, Delta Green, the local Delta Green Green Box, which of course is a stash of gear. And during the course of the scenario, you will also have access to other things uh, based on your requisitions. I'm just going to let you go. Hey, don't you think we ought to have a, you know, a set of bugs or a or a or a digital camera for this? And we're not going to worry about. Oh no, it's not on your sheet. I can't deal with that. We're just going to blow right past that. All right. Now, on to the mission. The four of you with M's in your code names have all worked together, so you know each other. The person with a K, Agent Kamarov, has not worked with any of you people before. Um, there you are, uh, you are a, you, each group is a mystery to the other. Um, the groups of those of you in, uh, in M cell, um, are confident that the other members of the, of the team uh, not only are aware of some elements of the supernatural and the Cthulhu mythos, uh, beyond, you know, yeah. when I say supernatural, I mean beyond hauntings and Ouija and, uh, you know, dousing and uh, astral projection and uh, hoodoo and voodoo, uh, the actual mythos that they are aware that the difference between an alien and a demon is 
not that much that we've probably been mistaking them for each other for millennia that our world is impinged upon by things from outer space and from higher dimensions and uh, that has led to a lot of legends about um, supernatural creatures that are badly misunderstood versions of the reality but no less dangerous the mission for today is going to take you to the fabulous town of El Paso, Texas, west of the Pecos. Yeah. Um, this, I don't know if anyone has been to El Paso, but um, it is a island in a sea of nothing. Um, it really is. Uh, the Texas counties to the east of, uh, of El Paso are stunningly sparse stunningly sparse with with um you know population per square mile like somewhere in the one third of a person per square mile like three square miles for one person it's 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 thin out there um there's all kinds of places to hide all kinds of terrible things going out in that part of the world it's hostile it's dry it's nasty um and again extremely sparsely populated you guys will not have to go someplace sparsely populated. You guys will instead go to Ramada Inn, um, which is uh, its own sort of horror. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, let's see here. The date here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on the scenario is July the 13th, 2019. We are in the midst of enjoying the pandemic at its most entertaining. This is uh, this is the age of lockdowns and refusing to have lockdowns and um, uh, suggestions that we perhaps use bleach as an internal, you know, cleansing for our COVID. Um, it's not a great time. Um, uh, sorry, Scott, isn't, isn't that before the lockdown? Wasn't the lockdown start March 2020? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's when the official lockdown. <laughs> that's that's when the public lockdown started. Yeah. I yeah. mean, obviously, yeah. it it was beginning to happen. Uh, it was yeah. There were lockdowns in some place like Seattle was already had been hit. We had, we were one of the first places to have it. Rush through some um, what do you call them? Uh, some retirement homes, some medical assistance uh, facilities, and you know, suddenly we were on the uh, front line of that nonsense. Yes, we were being told it was going to be over. Yeah. you know within a week or whatever it'll go away yeah that didn't work out so hot so regardless um the uh, you brought out here on the 13th what they've uh, contacted you about is that three you're, you're going to be met by a guy who works at the el paso uh the dea's uh, el paso border intelligence center there is a big giant DEA, DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration facility in El Paso. Uh, its job is to monitor, um, you know, drug trafficking uh, in the pretty much all along the U.S. southern border. Um, it's called the El Paso Intelligence Center or EPIC. Um, the guy you will be meeting with is a DEA agent uh, named Jim Rook, and. Uh, he will bring you guys up to speed on the problem that you'll be dealing with. Now, again, this is just going to be done in the conference room of Ramada Inn, away from other federal facilities. But um, before the meeting begins, Ruck will be wandering around the room. Uh, it's a it's a conference room. It's the least popular conference room in the Ramada Inn because it's an interior one. It doesn't have any windows that uh, face outside. Um, and, uh, he sets about wandering around the room, uh, checking for bugs, uh, with, uh, with some electronic gear that's supposed to pick up signals, uh, of an in transmitting in the room. Um, he has everybody take their phones apart, take their SIM cards out, take their batteries out before he starts talking. What Mr. Ruck has brought you is a rather unusual problem insofar as, we're not sure that there is a problem, but this is how we make sure that there isn't. So, um, a few days back on, let's see, the 10th, uh, let's see here. Apparently, there were uh, 
trio of fellows out in uh, West Texas uh, who were bored. Um, and uh, as part of uh, shedding their boredom, um, they thought it would be super cool to drive around and shoot people's animals. Um, and uh, they uh, zipped by the home of a feather named uh, uh, Benjamin Griffin and shot his dog in his front yard. Um, this uh, normally for these kind of pieces of shit would be a really smart move because um, uh, Ben Griffin's in a wheelchair. And uh, so what the hell is he gonna do about it, right? Well, what they didn't count on was that Griffin got in his truck and he chased these guys across a couple of counties uh, while they tried to lose him. Um, uh, this in this high speed car chase through, you know, barely populated uh, West Texas. Uh, ultimately, um, they uh, tried to, you know, again because they're not the best drivers, I suppose. Uh, they crashed their car. Um, all three of them survived with relatively minor injuries. Um, and uh, this guy, uh, Ben Griffin, uh, he held them at gunpoint until the cops came and arrested them. And uh, the reason we've got a ping on this, why this came up, is that um, uh, we monitor former members of Delta Green. And Ben Griffin has formerly been employed by Delta Green. He had Delta Green clearance when he was in the Navy. Uh, and he worked a number of operations for us. He also had a day job, a relatively dangerous one, in that he was a U.S. Navy SEAL. Now, while he was doing his day job, not working for us, his helicopter was shot down in Afghanistan, and um, he suffered catastrophic injuries from that crash. Injuries that uh, led to uh, the amputation of uh, both of his legs and his right arm. So... The first thing that comes up is, well, it seems uh, kind of uh, inspiring that he was able to, you know, get in his, uh, uh, you know, special mobility van and chase after these guys. But uh, that's that's the trick he didn't. Um, from what we can tell from the initial police reports, he chased these guys down in a uh, Dodge Ram from the uh, 80s that was a stick shift. Hard. So we can't really explain how he did what he did, except he used to work for us. Now, of course, it's a it's cardinal rule that uh, you know for when it comes to adult grain work, you do not take souvenirs, you do not take group photos. There's there are no mementos um, for this work. But there have been occasions where people have done so. And this is always extremely dangerous. And so we need to set up a surveillance on Mr. Griffin and determine whether or not he has acquired or used any uh, contraband technology or techniques, anything alien, anything uh, supernatural, pandimensional, you know, whatever. Anything he's used, if he's used anything to break the rules of physics, to break the rules of reality, um, that is always bad. And it's your team's job just to try and determine whether or not this has actually happened. Now, um, as far as Agent Kamarov goes, um, you're here because you're the ringer. You previously worked with Ben Griffin on a Delta Green operation here in the continental United States. You are familiar with him and have a history with him. Um, you were also familiar with each other through the very small community uh, that is the U.S. Navy SEAL teams. There's only a few hundred of these people at any one time. Um, it's just that, you know, again, uh, careers in life particular department can be very short not because of necessary fatalities but people can't do that job their whole career um, it 
tends to uh, tends to put an extreme amount of wear and tear on their bodies, not to mention their psyches. Um, but Agent Kamarov has had some connection with um, with this uh, this former Delta Green asset. So when it comes to trying to determine whether or not he has been involved with uh, uh, unnatural hyper normal materials uh we're hoping that um uh, agent kamaroff will be able to give us some access or some way in in speaking with griffin about this now he knows the rules he knows that um there can be extremely um harsh sanctions if you have uh you if you're using these materials these contraband materials uh for personal use personal gain personal benefit um so he will likely attempt to conceal uh his uh his use of these things um he could even be uh violent uh and what he would see as an act of self-defense uh should his use of those contraband materials come to light so he should be considered dangerous despite his uh infirmities which as we've recently seen may not be that uh detrimental to his ability to perform as we previously thought so do uh, you all have any questions about where to begin? Um, and uh, I can set you up with, right now I can set you up with police, yes, police reports. Uh, I can set you up with um, uh, those so far. I can set you up with uh, some of the information about this is leaked out into social media, um, particularly on websites that are interested in animal rights and animal the mistreatment of animals, um, this story may be starting to gain momentum. Press isn't involved yet. That is mainstream press isn't involved yet, but it's probably only a matter of time. I mean, heroic wounded ex-seal, you know, gets revenge on the guys who killed his dog in Texas. You know, that, that story is going to have legs. So, yeah. so to speak. Get, yeah. 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 Bad, bad ben. yeah. I didn't mean to go there, but all right. Um, regardless, uh, yeah, you guys are going to need to act fast on this and uh, uh, try and uh, make your determinations as quickly as possible. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on your back and let you know if there's any sign that this stuff is making its way into the local news stations in uh, here in El Paso, for instance, or uh, cable news networks. Um, I saw a question down from the front row. Go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering whether uh, my intera camera off's interaction with Ben was in a Delta Green capacity or in a SEAL capacity or both. Both, both. okay. The answer is both. You participated in a Delta Green operation inside the continent of the United States. Okay. Most of the time you saw him was overseas. Okay. Um, you are recently separated from the SEALs yourself. Okay. Um, you are... Uh, publicly employed as a uh, as a security contractor for a uh, Virginia-based um, private military contractor. Right. Um, but uh, uh, so you're technically, you're both separated. You're neither you in service. Am I aware of, have I had any interaction with him since his, his uh, debilitating accident in Afghanistan? Or was my interaction with him before that happened? Yeah, it was before. Okay. Um, he, he would have, uh, you would have, at this point, you've had no interaction with him uh, uh, since his injuries received in combat. It was a helicopter shot down, not uh, fell down. Although okay. God knows there's plenty of people who are absolutely titanium cast special operators who've gotten killed or so badly injured they're retired just because a gasket blew or, uh, uh, you know, some somebody didn't uh, fill up the oil tank or something yeah that's yeah. always one of my favorite things is that you can get hurt doing the routine stuff because everything's dangerous um so yeah your 
um, what is there anything specific you would like to know about the guy? Um, uh, I, I think if if I can through my channels uh, learn anything explicit about the the nature of his injuries, mm -hmm. uh, his recovery. And whether he's been on anybody's radar since, or has he been just quietly living out on his farm prior to this dog incident? Well, um, what we have in front of us is his VA records. Okay. Um, because goodness gracious, Delta Green doesn't believe in privacy. Um, he uh, he suffered an amputation uh, uh, at the elbow, um, at uh, the left knee, and at mid thigh. Um, that was all, that was all because of, uh, uh, crush damage in the crash that had, uh, so badly, um, uh, damaged the tissue in between that it was not going to heal back. It was not going to recover. It was, it was inducing sepsis further down the lift. Um, the, uh, uh, the VA records indicate that, um, uh, he uh, did. It's not a. It's not a record of success. Um, uh, he uh, seems to have. Um, the, their last notes were that he seems to have uh, fallen into a cycle of substance abuse. The uh, VA uh, counselor notes that you know, based on uh, patient statements, that you know his father uh, was an alcoholic, and he seems to have picked that as his. Uh, as his uh, weapon of choice uh, to um, uh, continue the process of whittling his, himself away. That's the last anyone heard of him. Um, and and how, been, how long ago was, was that? That, was, before that was about three years. That was three, three years. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, uh, the, the counselor notes that they reached out to a brother and a sister who live in West Texas, in El Paso, and... Um, out in the city of Pecos in Pecos County, and um, to find out if they had any, uh, uh, you know, had any contact with him and such, and you know, the the VA official left their phone number with him and said, you know, please call if you if you find out or anything, you know, if you learn anything about your brother. Um, but it kind of drifts off after that, after you know, putting out some feelers to try and with with family and to alert them, you know, that that, that, that they're concerned about. Uh, his um, his state um, after having and he's uh, you know according to the uh, VA documents he is you know uh, he is uh, cashed out at full retirement with 100 percent disability um, and uh, what he's doing with that money uh, we're not sure the, the the mailing address we have for him is out uh, in the uh, let's see it's which county is that. Uh, this is what I get for making so many specific details. Now I have to go <laughs> all. Um, El Paso. Yes, um, he's out in Hudspeth County, Texas, uh, off something called uh, Route Thirty Seven. Um, the people who shot his dog, however, are locked up in El Paso because Hudspeth County is so small. They don't really have a, a a a jail facility that is big enough to hold people for an extended period of time. Um, Hudspeth County is three thousand two hundred people for a total of one point four people per square mile. El Paso is eight hundred and fifty people per square mile, and it's not exactly Manhattan itself. So Hudspeth is pretty 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 thin. Um, but we've got the police reports. Um, we've even got the juvenile uh, reports on which we shouldn't have, but we've got those as well. Um, is there anything else that I can uh, make uh, bring to the table before you guys get started? And frankly, this is you guys getting started. What kind of information are you seeking? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I might suggest that we we split up into. Uh, sub teams, one team going off, review the police report, review the route, interview the trio of losers that shot the dog. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then you know Sean is obviously re reviewing the the profile on Ben Griffin uh, before we confront Ben. Okay. Um, anybody any, else? Any, yeah. Anyone else? Suggestion was. I, I was wondering if we had in our, if the, there had been interviews directly with the three men, and we had eyewitness accounts from their side, or do we need to go get that? We do have. Um, we have denials. Um, they basically said we didn't do nothing. Crazy guy tried to kill us with his truck. That that was their story when they were arrested. Now, with their story, it can be you know uh, they're all lawyered up. So some of them have uh, public defenders. Um, in fact, all of them have public defenders. Now that I think of it, um, but um, you know one of the advantages of uh, speaking to someone who's been um, who's lawyered up is that none of it's admissible. So they're literally they can do it and be safe. Um, as long as you don't get them to affirmatively waive their right to counsel. Um, the, uh, they just had flat out denials that they had anything to do with it. Now, from what I can see in the police reports, uh, the detective who's working on this, and he is the only detective in Hudspeth County, uh, and their sheriff's department has, you know, um, managed to link uh the weapons that these guys had with them in their truck to animal shootings all over several counties in the area and he's now having to coordinate with multiple agencies and uh the you know ballistics came here to the el paso office uh to identify you know caliber uh whether or not there was any um any any uh, markings on the uh, on the bullets that would be identifiable and could be matched to uh, the barrels, the weapons. That's still a process that's ongoing. Um, you mean for Ben Griffin's dog? They're still yeah. Uh, they haven't yeah. identified that yet. Yeah, um, but uh, some of the older cases, you know, some of the older cases that was not ever even done. Uh, the animals had a round dug out of them. It was placed in a Ziploc baggie and it was put on a shelf. Mm -hmm. You know. As just the, and, and attached to a file number and now that these guys and now that there's this whole thing with a car crash and you know three suspects and everything else now they've started going through their files and they're connecting these guys to a bunch of mostly domestic animal shootings um as opposed to cattle of any kind or livestock maybe because killing livestock is sort of seen as a bigger deal mm -hmm. in uh in texas as opposed they're, to they're messing with your money yeah do we do yeah. we know the the route um the supposed route that was taken where uh ben griffin chased the trio sure um yeah, do that, we that... if we know the route is there anything a gas station or anything else along the way that might have surveillance footage that would prove the the chase or have any evidence you know visual evidence um that's a that's something that I, you know, I don't know if the cops are looking into that, but if you want to do that legwork to figure out if there's any possibilities, there could be traffic cam Now, mind you, this is all county roads, small towns. Um, your best, maybe you're talking about like your best shot would be a gas station getting an oblique view of a couple of cars blowing past um, or, you know, some gas and sip. Uh, that's a possibility. Um, but if you want to run that down, um, yeah, you certainly can. Um, the, would, one of the things that you have access to is you will have access to the facilities here at the um, El Paso Intelligence Center, mm -hmm. where that's one of the things that El Paso Intelligence Center specializes in. So we will be able to get that kind of data to you very quickly. Does the police report uh, give any sort of acknowledgement of how a substantially disabled man was able to get to the yeah. location where the vehicles were found? Do they have some explanation yes. for this? Um, the, uh, the police report says that um, Ben Griffin, uh, let's see here. Um, ben Griffin's comment was, a seal is never out of the fight, which apparently is the unofficial motto of the seals. And that he said that he was able to shift gears using a um, a uh, jamming a a, a a axe handle that was hanging in the back of the truck, where in the in the, in the gun rack, uh, 
in and holding it down on the clutch uh, while he shifted with his left hand. So he claims he reached across himself to the right side to shift mm -hmm. while holding a, using his, the stump of his left leg to press down mm -hmm. on a piece of wood against the, yeah, I don't. Does, does he have prostheses or just a no, piece of he, wood? He had, he, he uh, apparently has a motorized wheelchair. Right. Um, and but, but no prosthetic limbs to help no. reach the clutch or the gas or the brake no, or he claims the other he side of the, the steering wheel. He he claimed he used the now um I haven't talked to the cops, I've just read the report. The reports, um it seems like they it it seems like they gloss over it in the report. I mean they they just they just kind of blow past that question and you know just there's really, you know, there's nothing in the highway. There's, no, there's, there's the guys who caught up with them were uh, caught up to the crashing were were um, uh, Texas Highway Patrol and uh, some sheriff's deputies, not from Hudspeth, but from another county. I'll look those guys up in a second. But basically, they kind of just refer to him as, you know, the driver of car number two, you know. And uh, do not comment on his injuries in the report, um, as if they are. I don't. Know, it, it 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 looks to like it looks like an omission to me that they have deliberately sort of omitted uh, just how injured he is, um, and I'm not sure why. It could be because they think they are. Hero, it could be because they think they're covering for a goddamn hero. Um, you know, uh, it could be because I, I don't know what they think. I don't know what they think they're covering for. Um, that we're going to leave up to you guys to find out. Um, like I said, I've gathered this initial material and I can leave the, um, the, uh, uh, uh get you access to, uh, epics and uh, information collection, uh, as far as, uh, records and things like that we can certainly give you a phone number here that you can call as uh make an official dea call to uh various uh, to the various agencies if you want to talk to people in person on the phone about uh questions you have whether it's uh, the, the various uh officers involved or the uh lead detective on the uh, animal uh shootings case we can provide you with a suitable background drop so that your calls will be coming from you know appropriate agencies um, but uh when it goes out comes to going out and talking to people that's your job not mine otherwise it'd be a very boring game indeed i mean it would be <laughs> we would not be able to maintain our plausible deniability or something so that brings me to a question is did they do a talk screen on him like was he on anything that's uh they when he got taken back he um they did have him blow in a breathalyzer and and uh pee in a bottle um and uh that all came back clean he didn't uh he didn't come back with um a bal blood alcohol level or you know any metabolites uh from opiates thc uh anything like that in his in, his, in fact yeah it, it the fact that it didn't come back with any alcohol and it was kind of a surprise considering what the last thing the uh, VA had to say about him. And he presumably drove himself home using his... No, no. Oh. Um, he had a... He was picked up. He overnighted at the police station uh, in Hudspeth County. And... Um, uh, uh, was it Hudspeth County? Actually, it was the county that the truck rolled over in. So let me get that straight. Um... Uh, Reeves County uh, is the name of the county, and um, they uh, he overnighted at Reeves County to give a statement. And um, in the in the morning, he made his phone call and uh, made some phone calls. And he got a guy who's apparently his uh, a, a ranch hand or somebody who works on his property to drive his um, his mobility uh, uh, van out there. He has a van that he can 
has a lift for his chair and a special place to lock down a seat and a place where he can steer, brake, uh, do all his signaling from one control for one hand, you know, um, ignition on the left hand side, things like that. So he has a registered vehicle with the state of Texas, you know, that could do all that. Um, you, you said there was county roads. Yeah. Between El Paso and the county you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. There isn't really. There's just they're, I they're like yeah, they're like 60. gravel roads, dude. They're 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 not much of anything out there. Yeah, it's it's very uh, sparse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This this chase went across. You know, this chase went on or went across state roads. It went across. It went across uh, roads that were basically. Uh, ranch uh, roads that cross people's properties, you know, um, it uh, uh, it ranged quite far and over uh, uh, some rather entertaining terrain before it ended where it did. Do we have a so, name for this ranch hand who picked him up? Sure. Uh, fellow's name is, uh, let's see, Carrillo. Um, do you... Okay, Manuel Carrillo, uh, C A R R I L L O, Manuel Carrillo. That guy drove out to Reeve, the the uh, sheriff's office in, in in Reeves County. Uh, he drove out in the utility van. Um, and then when he got there, uh, they got he brought uh, Griffin's wheelchair. They put him back in his wheelchair. He drew Griffin drove his van back, and Carrillo drove the. Uh, the Ram truck, the 1998 Dodge Ram back. We should have a word with Mr. Carrillo. Um, certainly, we uh, uh, we don't have much of information about him uh, at the moment. Um, all we have is the fact that his name appears in the police report. Yeah. But that's what Social Security numbers are for. Well, we have a list of things we can do. So what do you want to start with? Exactly. I mean, do we, we want to talk to the trio of lo losers and try to like, you know, get them to say, we don't care about the dog. We want to know exactly what happened and, and give us information. And if you tell us the truth, we can, we can, you know, maybe oversee things. Okay. Um, we've got, because you, you, know, you want these guys back on the street. I got to uh, tell you. Absolutely. They've got a, they've got a brilliant career in front of them. <laughs> just, they really do. Uh, it's just, it's just the, uh, the, you know, we, we there's enough evidence against them with all the other dogs that we have leverage against them most likely, um, and to reduce their sentencing or whatever. Um, the 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 route they took, if we could go to the tech center and see if there's any cameras, if they took I-10 at all, if they did anything where there is a gas station, we might get some visual uh, confirmation of something interesting, you know, going on. I mean. Okay. I, it feels like we should start there. I mean, we could break up into smaller teams and, and certainly do, that's an assignment you can just leave and it could be uh, yeah, done by DEA people that in their part, own yeah. time, not knowing what they're looking for. They're just looking to find these vehicles with these license plates traveling in these directions and, you know. and save the footage, tag it so that we can review. Okay, that can be done right away. Next, I'd suggest we uh, get law enforcement to see if they can track down this Carrillo, get us a phone number and an address. Because uh, okay. he'd have access to to the property, mm -hmm. clearly access to the vehicles. Yep. And he, he's a guy worth knowing. He'd probably know as much as anybody about the current state uh, of Ben. Okay. Again, uh, Epic can get on that. Um, just uh, doing a trace on a person is not the kind of thing that's going to require uh, that you guys do it yourselves. That's all this. That's all this center does is you know collect information on people, collect information on vehicles, collect information on on routes back and forth across the border. So, yeah, go ahead and flip the switch on that. All right, Next. I uh, would add to that the uh, also Ben's brother and sister get mm -hmm. contact information so we can uh, talk to them if we choose. That's much easier. That's actually in the. Um, uh, that's uh, actually in the uh, Please the the VA materials. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here, and you will get contact information from them for El Paso and for Pecos, Texas. Phone numbers, if you want them, um, probably uh, email addresses as well. So, whichever, however you'd like to reach out to them. 
next. Uh, do, do we want to try to do an in-person interview with the trio of losers individually? They, they are here in El Paso. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so maybe, you know, Marlo and, and Moultrie can, uh, I mean, there's three of them, so we could break, you know, we can break it up. So if we wanted to, or we, we should pair up and then cross interview each of them separately. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But, um, I just had this. I just had this moment of like, well, you guys, you're FBI, but what's he? I'm a consultant. I'm, a consultant. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to help. I'm well, here to help. <laughs> at least two of us are FBI. Like I know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. So um, these guys are held at two different. They're held at two different facilities. So let's go ahead and start off and just say that uh, we montage. Welcome to the montage. You're going to have to wrestle around a little bit uh, with things like. Uh, talking to their lawyers, talking to, um, uh, getting access to them. It, it's not, it, you, you can get access to them without their attorneys. Um, as I understand it, you can just set up an interview and it's like, well, if there's no, you know, uh, if there's no attorney there, um, you can say what you want to say and they have a choice whether to answer back, you know, answer back or not. And yes, if this was a real criminal investigation and you were mucking with it, you anything that you got from them during that interview would be inadmissible. Of course, that's not really what you're here for. Um, um, oh, by the way, just before we segue, the background here, for those who don't remember, is this is El Paso when they had so many COVID deaths, they had refrigerated um, uh, morgue trucks because the morgue was overrunning. And they had the prisoners and the and pre, um, basically loading bodies. That was their job during that COVID period. And did, I, I bet they had masks and gloves too, didn't they? Um, well, I think the guy right here does. Let's see. Oh, one guy did. I can't one guy did. Well, who knows? Maybe he's a prisoner. Maybe he's a hospital worker. Who knows? Yeah. I understand we were running short of all that stuff. So, yeah. just... so I, I kind of thought that this is the time and this is what was going on. So it was like, yeah. So um, that makes the jail real interesting. Um, uh, it also means that you know there's this weird process of showing your badge and pulling your mask down, and everybody's everybody's talking with masks, which is uh, handy for you know if you don't want to be properly remembered. Uh, <laughs> wearing a mask is kind of a nice step in that direction. All right, there's two facilities involved. Uh, one of them is the just the El Paso County Jail, all right, and that is the current home of. Dirt bag number one, and his name is, let's see here, Eric Lee. He is the oldest of the group. He is 20 years old. The other two fellas are in the uh, uh, El Paso Juvenile Detention Center. Their names are Ramon Moreno and Ray Moody. Who wants to go talk to who first? Who wants to pick? Who wants to pick a victim? Which one was driving? Do we know? Uh, Eric Lee was the driver. It was his truck. Yep. Let's start with. Well, again, we break up into two groups, and do you know one group? Which will save game time, but not game time. Yeah. Um. The. Uh, or we can just do. Yeah, let's start with Eric. All right. Michelle, what do you think? Yep. Hello. All right. So um you're uh so you two are gonna go see Eric and the other two are gonna go see the juveniles. Sure. All right. All right. Let's start with Eric. Um he uh you can get him into an interview room. Um jail personnel will be uh happy to do that. It takes a few, it takes out you know hour or so to do all the uh, cross all the I's and dot all the T's things are moving slower because yep we have COVID and we have COVID in the jail mm -hmm. uh, we don't even have vaccines yet so it's the best kind of COVID um, let's see here uh, are we playing good cop bad cop because I don't think I can play good cop <laughs> then you, you can be the bad cop <laughs> All right, this is the best. All right, so um, uh, they um, they end up putting you in a room 
with this uh this this 20 year old um he's got uh he's got an arm that is in a cast and is um isolated uh with those uh the, with that kind of pin that holds it out at a certain angle because he's also broken his collarbone uh as well um he's three days ago he bounced around inside a truck he doesn't look great he's got cuts all over his face from the blown out uh window shield glass um and uh uh he is not getting uh probably not getting the number of painkillers he would prefer for this scenario since it is <laughs> the county jail is <laughs> uncomfortable um well, but he's the EA agent you, you so know. He, he might even he might even have been taken out of the infirmary for this you know in fact you know he's probably he probably was i'm not sure how messed up you have to be to be put back into jail i mean how how messed up can you be and be back in the general population of the jail i don't know um i genuinely don't he's broken his arm broken his collarbone three days previously he might still be in the infirmary um regardless uh the all this stuff was set at the set at the at a hospital. It wasn't done here at the jail's infirmary. It was patched up at the hospital, then thrown in the tank. Um, when uh, when you show up, he is handcuffed to the uh, table by the hand that isn't broken, um, sitting around in flip flops uh, and uh, this uh, basically a hospital gown and boxer shorts. Uh, it's a white kid um you know uh he's got what you would expect of a three-day growth on a 20 year old going um uh short hair it's been getting a little longer since he's been locked in here but um blonde hair blue eyes uh you know uh when you guys come in you can see the gears moving behind his eyes he's trying to evaluate what you are and what you're here for so is he just if you guys come in he asks, so what do you guys want I heard you got into a little uh altercation the other day Altercation? yeah yeah you could say right. that want to tell Who me how you? <laughs> well you want to tell me how you got in uh you know how you were pulled into that altercation he says, uh, I, I ain't talking without my lawyer, man. I don't know who you guys are. What are you, cops? Not really. Um, we don't care about, you know, what you guys are doing. What we want to know is, um, you know, how, uh, like, let's see, do I spill all the beans? Do I just say, like, uh, we want to know how a one-armed man kicked your ass? <laughs> <laughs> He uh, he says, well, he kind of blurts out, well, I'd like to know that too, but I, I ain't talking because I, I, you know, my, I, I, I'm not talking without an attorney. I already explained all that to the cops. That guy was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Out so, of control. So he's, got the, he's, got the P, he's got the PTSDs. <laughs> so who's, who's with um, Agent Moultrie right now? Um... I think you it's, are. I thought it was you. Okay, then well, I just want to make sure. Or is it is it Marlo or Melton? I thought. Yeah, there's so many M names in this. Yeah, go for it. Okay. All right. Do you want to take so, the lead, Andrew? I, I guess so. Look, we know we can pin you to all these animal shootings. You know, you're going to go away for a long time. We don't care about you. We're, we're with the FBI. We're looking at actually at, at Ben. And so we want to. What that guy? Yeah. Want to know what what was going on? Tell us the truth. We might be able to help you. Oh, all right. Um, go ahead and give me a roll on human intelligence, human, please. Both of you, you can. I think you both have the skill. It's alphabetical. It'll be in the uh, let's see, first column, second column. Human int. Okay. Yeah, yeah there it is. It's in the it's in the middle column. Uh, 28 out of 55. Excellent. Uh, How about you, Gwen? What, what do I roll? 
excuse uh, me. Two, two ten-sided dice, or okay. yeah, two ten-sided dice, and uh, pick one to be the tens column and one to be the ones column. Or if you have a percentile ten-sided. Oh, yeah. uh, 71. All right. Um, did you make it your, did you make it under your human intelligence? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, both of you can see the little gears moving in this guy's head. The wait, idea of... be, wait, I have to be under or over? Under. 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 Okay. Do you miss? Oh, no, no, I was way over. Okay. Um, well, Andrew got it. So we'll, you can see that he's warming up to the idea of getting the guy who he victimized in trouble. That seems to be really okay. appealing to him. So he begins telling you a story. Um, he says, you know, and and go ahead and both of you roll me, uh, and, and and I'll just say one roll for this, right? Um, I will, I will just say that I will tell you his story, and I will tell you when because you made your human intelligence roll, when he's lying and when he's not, okay? And he just starts off with a lie, which is basically, well, no, he. He says we were driving down that county road uh, when, uh, let's see, that's it. He, he, this is a, this is a lie. He says we were driving down that county, uh, county road when this other uh, truck blew past us doing like 100 miles an hour. It was, a, it was another F-150, a uh, black one like my truck. And we lost sight of them pretty quick, but the other truck had the same truck colors as mine, all right? Um, all right, all right uh, just stop. Hey, um Agent Moultrie, let's go. This guy's just lying to us. I, I'm not... No, 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 no. I mean, it was a, it was a mistake. Like that guy must have thought that was my truck. That guy must have thought it was my truck because you know we didn't see this guy before. Again, you think he's lying when he says we never saw this guy before. Um, we we never saw him before, but he he uh you know he must have been chasing that truck and mistaking it for ours, right? Because this 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 yeah, Dodge right, Ram. You know, you're wasting our time. He you're says wasting, this guy. You're wasting our time. Do you want? Do you want to get a deal? Because you're going to go down for all these animal shootings, and that's up to you. You you can spend all this time in the El Paso prison. You'd be a fine fodder. You being twenty years old and all, but hey, you you gonna you gonna keep lying to us? That's always the always go with the always go with the applied prison. I got a pretty mouth. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you know. He says, uh, uh, "Look, you got one more. You got one more chance. All right, I, I'm done because I'm I'm tired of this. Okay." Well, he says, uh, uh, "Look, the, the the guy in the the guy in the Dodge Ram, right? The guy in the Ram, the the, the meat log, right? He uh, he came up behind us, right? And he was just he was really flying. And 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 when we saw him, he was blowing his horn, and uh, 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 you know, we could he was blowing the horn as he's coming up by us. He's really close on our tail. We." tried to outrun him right and so that part seems like he's telling the truth he says that one of the guys in the truck one of the other guys i think it was moody uh says he saw the guy had a a, a big silver revolver and you know from the report that the police report said it was a colt python that was uh nickel plated which is in fact a huge silver revolver for those playing at home, uh, I think that's Rick Grimes' pistol of choice from the Walking Dead TV show. Mm -hmm. um, just ridiculously, so it should have wheels on it. It's that side <laughs> of the pistol. Um, anyways, he says that guy. He said he was. He, he he saw that the guy had a pistol, right? And so we weren't going to pull over. Now that you know, we had a. Now that they said he had a gun, right? Um, and they were panicking. You know, this again starts sounding like lies. They were panicking. They kept telling me to drive faster. You know, I wanted to drive to a police station or something. No, I didn't. But you know, but we were we were we didn't know you know where the nearest one was, so we just kept trying to lose him. And he kept uh, you know we cut across some people's property and 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 uh, you know cut through some of these access roads, and he stayed on us the whole time. Um, you know, uh, we ended up having to blow past some other cars uh, when we got back on uh, one of the main roads, one of the state highways. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess that's who, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I we, we, you know, we, they must have seen him too, uh, uh, being, on our, being on our bumper the whole time. But, um, you know, at some point he actually, he tapped the bumper. 
And that's when I lost control of the vehicle and it went off into a field and ended up upside down. And um, at that point, you know, uh, the truck rolled over, I'm upside down, um, fucking Moody and, uh, you know, um, uh, Ramon, they just, they just got out, you know, they went crawling out the windshield, didn't even bother with me, right? I could smell gasoline in the truck. Those little shits just, just scrambled out on their own, right? And I, I can't see much, but I can see that the Ram, the Dodge Ram pulled up and um, I heard the door of that truck open. And then just as it, you know, just as I heard that, uh, I could start to hear the sounds of the sirens of the police cars coming in. Uh, and then the door slammed and he, he I guess he came across the bench seat to the passenger side of the truck because um, the driver's side was facing away from us. You know, the passenger side, and he pointed that um, he pointed that uh, that big revolver out the window and and told uh, Ramon and um, uh, 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 and Ray uh, not to move or he'd shoot them. And they were all like, "Oh, we got to get uh, we got to get uh, you know me out." And he says that can wait. He said, "You know," and, and uh, he just um, you know kept us kept the pistol on us. He said some crazy shit and laughed at us about when they were trying to, when they were saying that, you know, what if the truck catches fire? Um, and, you know, eventually the cops were on the scene. And as soon as the cops pulled up, he, uh, he, he took the pistol and he flipped it around into his hand. So he's holding it by the barrel and held it up out the passenger side window until the cops came and took it from him. And then they just, left us cuffed they actually cuffed me with a broken arm they cuffed me to my buddies and left us out in the sun uh while they were processing the scene they didn't even, they were shade in these trees and they didn't even bother putting us in the shade they just made us sit there and cook all afternoon while they let that asshole sit in his truck the whole time before they you know they fucking carried him to a police car they fucking picked him up and carried him like he's a god like he's the goddamn uh 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 emperor or something you know they picked him up and put him in the back of the police car like they were oh yeah All right, it was, great. he um, was he was the maniac who started this thing and they treated him let's back like up. he was let's, royalty let's, hey all right let's let's back up let's let's talk about before you noticed the car was actually chasing you let's back up and talk about what you did to provoke the situation because right. it didn't happen out of the blue come on let's let's just be honest and again we don't care. We're with the FBI. We don't care about the, what you're doing around El Paso shooting animals. Well, so he's, we need to know what you did to provoke because this guy sounds like a terrible old man to me. Perhaps the terrible old man. <laughs> um, it's always a good starting point, that story. Um, yeah, uh, he he's, he he does a he did, he puts on a performance of not knowing why this guy would have come up and and chased him. Uh, a performance that you uh, are sure is going to just go over gangbusters in court. I mean, the whole lack of eye contact thing, I mean, that really sells the story. So, yeah. Perhaps, maybe he'll get the word loser tattooed across his forehead before he gets out on this one. Because, yeah, he's got a, he's got a great career. Uh, in front of him as a as a uh, small time thief or small time crook and big time big time incarcerant, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he 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 just uh, obfuscates. Now, um, give me a, a a role perhaps under your law skill. Both of you might have law at different levels. One of you is a doctor, but you've probably picked up some law. So go ahead and see if you can roll under your law skill. Well, I, oh, that's, sorry. No. Wrong one. All right. Hang on. 39. 39. Okay. That's, um, I think you've got a lot. I, I, I actually just did it. 41. 39. Okay. 41. Um, you could try telling him the actual truth, which is you haven't waived your right to an attorney. Um, 
this questioning can't be admissible, can't be admissible against you. You just give them that. Like, um, uh, he, he's like, really? You know, which again, you shouldn't ever. There's no recordings. There's nothing. We can't, you know. Well, we're, just for, we're just looking for data. We're looking All for right. It. Well, the story changes a little bit, and the story becomes, uh, "Hey, man, well, I was just driving around with uh, uh, Ray and Ramon, and they're the ones who shot out the window of the car and shot that guy's dog. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't have. No, I. Would, I didn't. I was as surprised as anyone when they shot that dog." You know, it was them. He goes with that. He, he goes okay. with that approach. Right. The, then what happened? They they shot the dog. Yeah, and then we and, and then well, once we you know once they shot the dog, I was I was scared and I thought we should get out of there before we got you know now if they'd gotten me in trouble. So I stepped on the gas and took off. Did did you approach his house? Did you do anything other? Did you slow down when you? No, shot? we shot we shot from the uh, we shot from the county road. The dog was out in the front yard, uh, you know, at the edge of the property, and he was over by the house. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's just, you know, he's motoring around, puttering around in his chair. I didn't get. I didn't get. I wasn't. I didn't see him. For, I mean, I, I, I barely even saw him before we, you know. Uh, kept going so i don't know what if it would be i don't know what he was doing in his front yard all right so i believe him based on his tells um yeah we'll just go ahead and let the human roll low the human roll, roll cover some more of this he does seem like he's well he's telling the truth about he didn't get a good look at ben griffin he yeah. is lying his ass off about whose idea it was yeah sure okay hey. Anything unusual about the animal, the dog that you saw? No, you... it was just a. Well, it was a. I mean, it was a tripod. So it was missing a leg as well. Yeah, it, it was missing its uh, front, one of its front legs. I can't remember which. What what breed was it? Uh, it was like a. Let's see here. Dog like. <laughs> dog like, except for the except for the wings and tentacles, it was very dog like. <laughs> They had hooves, but they were not reindeer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, that's my moment advertising for a guy here in Seattle called, uh, puts on a show called the Sugar Plum Gary, where he manages to mix a uh, cosmic horror with Christmas. Well, that's very much like the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society. If I remember, there was a, a, a fine album years mm -hmm. ago. I've, I've heard those guys do that. I don't know. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. Um, Matter of fact, that saved Christmas years ago when my house was robbed. They took everything but that. You know the. Uh, <laughs> um, he says it was a uh, it was a big dog. Um, it was like uh, it was one like one of those devil dogs from the Omen movies. Devil dog like an Om the Omen movie. Mm. Yeah, like a really fat um, Doverman pincer. Mm-hmm. Rottweiler. Really fat. Rottweiler, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Um, Agent Moultrie, do you have anything else you want to ask? Um, so I just want to get this straight. You idiots were roaming around the county. Um, you shot this guy's dog. You know, you kind of out of the, you know, vaguely noticed that he was running riding around in a, a motorized chair um and then you claim that he jumped jumped into his dodge ram he says i didn't see how he got in the truck all right all i knew he was in the truck and he was behind us i didn't see how they how he got out of the chair and into the truck i just know he was in the truck okay fine 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 so he's in the truck, he's chasing you, and as he comes in, he is honking his horn and waving a pistol at you? Yeah. So how, how do you suppose he was honking his horn, driving, and wa waving a pistol at you with one arm? Give me a uh, roll under under human for both of you. <laughs> Ooh, nope, not this time. Okay. 
Uh, nope. He goes, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Just guess. If you were missing an arm, how, how do you think you would accomplish that? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I know I saw the, pi <laughs> I, I mean, I saw the pistol. Um, I mean, I, I didn't know he only had one arm. I thought he had two arms. So I thought his hands were at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. Okay. Um, and he didn't, he never exited, you never saw him exit his vehicle after he rolled. Well, no, I mean, so he, he, see he, everything, but he started he to. Started. He started I mean, to. He started to. Um, he opened the door and then the, like the, the sirens are coming. And so he just, he just slammed the door again. I don't know what he's going to do. Roll over to us. I don't know. Okay. Uh, one last question for me. On your, your fine chase that you had, your compatriots were complaining about obviously the gun did they say anything else that struck you as highly unusual that you need to repeat now Again. well they were really scared so they were they were suggesting that that, that they should um uh shoot at the, the the truck behind us you know but i didn't want them busting out the back window of my 150 you know i was afraid they were gonna break the window so I, I i told them not to besides it would be dangerous mm -hmm. <laughs> man i wish i had some human to understand what that meant yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah but exactly what did they say just tell me what exactly what they said to you what just were they that he's, well, they, they, he's gonna kill us he's gonna kill us he's crazy it's a crazy old man Terrible. Not, okay. not, yeah. not that old, really. He's only like in his early 40s. So, okay. what do these guys know for old? <laughs> I, I somebody somebody posted this, you know, uh, some some old Twitter thing where it's like, you know, the, the 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 email that this guy got from one of his students saying, "I'm wondering about, you know, is there a time limit on how far back we can go for our sources for this paper?" Because you know, I've got some sources from the 90s that I think might be appropriate. The guy's like, yeah, you go back to the 1890s. And the guy's like, no, no, I mean the 1990s. It's just like, oh. Yeah. Uh, right. 1900s? Yeah. 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 Yes, apparently the 1990s are now the, <laughs> the 1900s. 1900s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm done. I think uh, so. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up. And All right. Um, we're going to communicate with our fellow uh, other agents and mm -hmm. tell them what transpired so when they interview the other two. Mm -hmm. um, I will shorten this slightly Good. because what you guys are going to be faced with is a goddamn repeat of this where these people start off and put them in a room by themselves and they manage to always Mess. Tell get to a story where somebody else did all the things. All the things happened. Like a dog was shot, and there was a getaway chase. And you know, but these guys weren't the drivers, so they're all about, well, Eric kept telling us we should shoot a dog and it would be fun. And I didn't want to, you know, but he's older than me and he had access to beer, you know. And then, you know, I wanted to pull over, but he kept saying we had to keep driving. So he was the one baking the speed limit. I wasn't reckless driving. He was reckless driving. You know, it's that. Okay. No, no material differences in the two, uh, the, the, no, the three stories. No real material differences, except for the part where they just keep moving the blame around okay. uh, to whoever uh, they think that they need to shift it onto. But it's absolutely not their fault. Um, One question I have that I don't think was answered before was what how long did it take for the the Dodge Ram to start chasing them after they passed? Well, they say that's a good question. They say it's really fast. It was really fast. They can't believe how fast that that guy. Like even if he was able bodied, it was so fast they didn't know how he got in. Well, no. I mean right. if real, he was like, sure, a guy could have well, you know, that's why Eric picked that's why Eric picked out the guy in the wheelchair because he couldn't chase us. You know, it would take him forever to get into that that ramp and go up and then, you know, the the, the chair lift and everything. We just, you know, we'd have minutes head start, you know, we'd be we'd be gone. Um, but he was in that truck and uh pulling out of his property in like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Tops. Can, can we determine from from them which of them was the shooter 
and what gun they used? Yes, you are able to hear about the shooter. They they used a uh, uh, a boring old uh, Remington hunting rifle. Okay, but it was in a uh, a it wasn't a it was a deer round, which yeah. means it did catastrophic damage to that there, dog. And um, yeah, six foot was this? Yes, yeah, yeah. That that would be, you know, your standard. That once upon a time was a standard deer round. I know people get into all kinds of fancy magnum rounds and such, but this is. Yeah, this is essentially um, uh, just a uh, God. Uh, yeah, just a, just was a Remington deer rifle, uh, bolt action, um, uh, and fired a you know uh, had the benefit of not leaving the brass at the scene, yeah, and um, uh, you know again caused and they weren't shooting from very far away. They shot that dog from like you know thirty yards, forty yards tops. You know, okay. And who was the shooter? Okay. So yeah. with these two, uh, these other two, um, I assume they had more chances to actually observe the man driving than driving because they were not driving. So do mm -hmm. I get anything else out of them oh. that I'm not in terms of like the waving they, the gun, honking the horn, accelerating? Like what could they see of him operating the vehicle? They, they'll tell you they didn't know he was... Uh, they didn't know he was a cripple until the cops lifted him out of the police, out of his car. They didn't understand why the cops weren't making him get out of the car. You know? The but they'd seen him in the wheelchair there. in the first place, right? Um, yeah, they'd seen him in the wheelchair in the first place, you know, and then the cops were like, you know, but they, then they lifted him out, but we thought it was somebody else. Mm. We thought the person chasing us was somebody at the, the ranch, like a ranch hand. Who is chasing us? You know, because how could he? You do could that? see, you could see him shift. I could see him shift. He had both hands on the steering wheel. Yeah, you know, phantom limb, and <laughs> yeah, and you know, you could see. I, I could see him. There was one point where the the pistol was on the uh, dashboard, and then he picked up and put it down below somewhere. With which hand? I, um, I guess he was his right I thought it was his right hand. But I'm, you know, it can't be because he doesn't have a right hand. But I thought he had a right hand. I mean, maybe there was somebody else in the truck and he was just hiding the whole time. Like when that door opened, we didn't see who got out on the other side of the truck. Maybe somebody got out on the other side of the truck. Okay. I mean, that's all I'm going to get. All right, but they they reiterate them that once the truck came to a stop, the door opened as if somebody got out. like he was going to get out, and but then the, the then the uh, uh, the sirens come on, and they will go far. One of them, let's see, I think it's I think it's Ray actually says, um, let's see here, Ray actually says what he remembers that nobody else remembers. And that is, sorry, just rolled past my manuscript. And if I cringe worthy attempts to shift the blame. Okay. <laughs> Guess that's accurate. Um, Ray says that what he remembers, because he was the first one out of the truck, uh, crawl out of the truck after it rolled over. He says, uh, like I said, uh, when he, came over to the passenger side of the truck and was aiming the pistol at us. He says, he said that if those cops weren't going to be here in seconds, this story would have ended different. So really he's the criminal. That's like attempted murder, right? We'll look into that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting right on that. We got we got detectives working in shit. We have our best top top men. Top men. Top, <laughs> top men. That's right. Always. <laughs> All right. Sadly, uh, sadly, it's one of those guys in the little motorcycle cap. Is what we, we say top men. Right. <laughs> we we put a leather daddy on the problem. He'll he'll be he'll be coming to your cell anytime now. <laughs> All, right. All right. Do you think it's worth seeing the body of the dog at all? No. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, are there photos of the is the there dog any? is the dog is um probably at a local. Burger. You have to ask the cops where it ended up. 
chances are it's in the local veteran veterinary's um, freezer for the time being. But there's crime scene photos. We have access to that. Oh, house. yeah. Yeah. Uh, animal looks like it took the round um, uh, in the... Um, uh, right in the uh, chest, under the under the collar, right in the chest, next to its, its one good front leg, um, exited by the uh, hip on the opposite side, did did it did catastrophic damage on the way out probably yeah. killed the dog instantly i'm going to say dog you know uh with <laughs> our experience is there anything that's unusual that we notice uh, about the animal no, um, or any of the crime scene photos oh um no there are pictures of the dog there's not what there's not pictures of is like there's no pictures of like the uh, the burnt rubber, or if, if there's any, if there if there was burnt rubber left as Ben Griffin got that Dodge Ram out of his gravel driveway and onto the 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 the, the tarred and tarmac you know road, the cops didn't take a picture of that. They took pictures of the crash scene. Mm -hmm. You know, there's pictures of all that, but there's no pictures of the actual like like where Griffin pulled out of his driveway or anything like that. The only thing they took pictures of was the dog laying in the uh, the dry grass right next to the barbed wire, the short barbed wire fence. It's the kind of fence that you use to separate animals. It's not a security fence in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's just there for cattle. Uh, it, 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 there's no pictures of Griffin's house, really. So we don't uh, see the the wheelchair sitting outside. No, or no, they don't have anything like that. They they just took a picture of the the dead dog. You know. It looks conspicuous in its absence. All the... No, it's just that they, you know, they didn't think of it. I mean, it looks like they just, they took like pictures of like how far the dog is from the road. Like right. they took a picture trying to show where the dog's body is and how far it is from the road, you yeah. know, and uh, that sort of thing. But they, they didn't, it doesn't look like they put, uh, you know, whoever was there first didn't appear to put a lot of thought into, you know, where was the wheelchair left? Where was the, you know. <laughs> They were just thinking about it's a dead animal. That's what we're dealing with. Guys were, you know, shot into a yard that had a guy in a wheelchair with it that shot his dog. They were sort of going, it looks like they're kind of moving along those those uh assumptions, you know, rather than trying how did, to put how do the how do the police get called into this? Because uh, the police reports say that did not call them, right? Mm -hmm. So who called them in? He didn't. Uh, it looks like that they were called by other motorists who the kids were passing. So the high speed the, chase. And... Yeah. I mean, the um, distance between El Paso to that place is like hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, it, yes. And not all of it was done on, a lot of it was done off road and across people's properties. Um, but when it got back on, uh, got back on state roads, um, that had other traffic on it. Yes, people called it in. And um, uh, Highway Patrol, and it was also getting called in by things like, you know, some of those gas stations you were looking for, where somebody just saw that zip by at 100 plus mile an hour past their place. And they're like, hey, you guys ought to know that there's two maniacs on the road. You know, just it looks like they're, yeah, it looks like they're reenacting Smokey and the Bandit or the, you know, the fucking, uh, chase from bullet you know <laughs> and if you're in a gas station you don't want anybody reenacting the chase from bullet i think i think that's 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 super bad for that's your gas, for gas well, station owners maybe we should uh unless anybody has a more pressing line of inquiry i think talking to uh manuel carrillo yeah uh, uh, and trying to learn a little bit more about daily life with ben uh might be okay. informative to before we want to talk to Ben. Sure. Um now uh let's see here. The let's see here. I'm trying to find my little notes here. Um, again, this is a huge area and there's tons of little bergs. Let me see where Codio lives. Um because Ben Griffin lives outside of uh incorporated uh, outside of an incorporated town but his but uh, Corillo lives in let's see where is that 
um, ah, here we go. Um, uh, looks like it's town of, it's not San Elizario, it's a different town. Um, Okay. Um, rather than slow things down because I can't find things, um, I'll just say that there is a very small town uh, that is not much more than a uh, sort of a you know gas station, dry goods, uh, you know, uh, farm supply sort of hub, you know, of hundreds of people, and. Uh, Carrillo lives in that town in uh, in a house that is a, it's a rental um, it is a, actually it's a, a it would yeah it's a it's a it's a it's actually a house as opposed to a trailer there's plenty of those for rent around here too but um, uh, a little bit of looking into that will reveal that uh, while his, his while his address is this particular house, um, that house has like uh, different names for every service the house gets. Like there's there's a different curio for the water. There's a different curio for the uh, electricity. Um, the rent is paid by a third curio. Um, uh, it, it, there's, uh, there's not all just one name on all the bills and none of them are Manuel. They are like, you know, uh, you know, there are uh, names like uh, Gustavo and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to blank on names, but he looks Juan. like he's got a family of people <laughs> living in there. Multi, Multi-generational. Yeah, yeah, probably. But um, he's got an address in there. Um, if you guys are looking at his, you know, I mean, he's got... He's got 1040s on file. I mean, it basically his, you know, his taxes filed are basically, I didn't earn enough money this year to get taxed. You know, I was gonna say, did he work? Did he have a job apart um, from uh, uh, he's income? had multiple jobs. He's done farm work, farm labor, um, you know, but his tax reporting is basically like, yeah, I didn't earn, I didn't break 14K or whatever the cutoff was that year. Not sure what the cutoff is today, but I just remember once upon a time when I was first starting out paying taxes, the cutoff was like, "Yeah, if you didn't make it to fourteen, you don't even." Don't it, even yeah. Is there anything that documents that that he worked for Ben? Um, probably not. Um, yeah. There's probably nothing in the way of like uh, you're not going to have access to pay stubs and things like that. Um, probably a lot of this is cash. Yeah, uh, sure. but um, uh, he um, he does have things like you know birth certificate for the state of Texas. Um, he's uh, I think he's in his mid twenties, so he's old enough to you know have a voting registered to vote in the state of Texas. Things like that. Um, no outstanding warrants. No criminal no, history. No. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, it might be uh, worth law enforcement going in to to talk to him. I can keep a security perimeter from outside the house just to. It's not a sure. it's not a bad neighborhood, but if you, if you want to, uh, you know, keep your eye uh, on the back of the party, that'll work too. Um, uh, but it, in fact, it's you know, it, this part of Texas, I don't know it. Um, uh, it would be a great place to cook meth. I'll, I'll it, it has that. It has that Breaking Bad. There's nobody for miles around there. Yeah, if you, big, if you wide really, open skies. If you really wanted to cook meth, there's all these places that you could totally do it, and no one would smell it, and no one would care about the the chemicals that were dumped afterwards and the chemical waste and what a mess uh, that is. But um, uh, the place doesn't look the, the, this this little this little burg doesn't look like it has been you know rattled by crime. Um, I will say this when you when you get there, uh, the demographics are definitely 
uh, leaning in a direction that would make Fox News viewers panic. Um, there are plenty <laughs> of there are plenty of places with you know signs in Spanish out front, you know, um, and uh, in English, uh, you know, there's um, uh, plenty of uh, the the most the restaurants that appear to be doing, you know. Uh, the best are the places that are, you know, there's, there, when I say restaurants, there's like, you know, taco trucks. I mean, they've, 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 you know, there's a couple of, there's a couple of places where they've just, you know, rather than go broke on a piece of uh, real estate, somebody is making food and selling it here, you know, uh, with something that costs a hell of a lot less. And there's plenty of people who want to buy that food. Um, let me hey, just hey, yeah. So, uh, so, would you say this is a, a nicer neighborhood than you would expect him to live in? Um, it or is. It is absolutely dirt poor. All right. Um, it is. It is absolutely a poor neighborhood. Now, the house is old. It has a look like it was, you know, a house that was, you know, uh, built when this town in maybe the 1900s. It's actually <laughs> okay. pretty big, but. Um, you know, uh, but at the same time, and you know, but uh, uh, and you get to it, it's it the it's there's not junk piled up in the front yard. It's relatively maintained, but the the lawn is dead. They have not spent any money pouring water in a desert, right? They they have not. So that so, so shabby, but neat and yeah, yeah. They've cut the lawn. They have not. They have not watered the lawn. Okay. Um, uh there is uh you know there's a mailbox there's a fence around it the fence again looks like it's uh old uh like it could have been part of the original white picket fence set up when this house was built over maybe a century ago it's got all its windows but it doesn't have its new it doesn't have new paint okay i mean it's a rental so they're not painting the house that they they're not you know that they're renting but um uh there's um you know, uh, there's uh, uh, when you find this place, there's 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 kids in the yard. Depending on what time of day it is, what time would you like to turn up? Uh, inside school hours, outside school hours. What do you want to? Or do you want to call? I mean, how do you want to do it? Call. Uh, well, when is he? I mean, so he's a ranch hand for um, Ben Griffin, but do we know that he had other jobs that he was working? Was was he like a full time ranch hand, or we don't know? We're that. not sure. We're not sure. Does he have a, a telephone number, a cell number, or a... um, uh, he uh, yeah, you guys will be able to use the materials at Epic to actually come up with a phone number for his, you know, by by minutes plan, you know, yeah, you might want to see where he is and then plan accordingly to go chat. Okay, with uh, you want to call or you just want to try and get the uh, try and figure out if you can uh, uh triangulate cell towers. I think law enforcement should should do this. Yes, not, exactly. Not not me. Yeah. My question. Well, somebody out there, somebody in this group, somebody in this group has SIGINT. So if you want to actually try and use the facilities at, at Epic to, and I'm looking at you, Andrew. Um, you can, signal intelligence is a way you could use their system to uh, give you a at least approximation of his location between cell towers. Uh, I keep looking at the wrong agent profile. Here we go. How many agents do you have? I, I have them all up. I haven't trust. Wait, wait. Oh, you're spying on the other. You're spying on the other players. You're spying. On well, I kind of, I kind of trust, you know, Mcell, but I don't know about this other guy. All right. Oh, I got. Oh no, I failed miserably. Ninety. All right. Um, for whatever reason, that's not working. Do you want? I was going to go literally just. Can you hear me center. now? Can yeah, you hear, can you me, hear now? me now? Okay. You tell me what you want to do. I think Marlo and, and Kamaroff are leading on this. So. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, if, but I got, well, yeah. I think we, we still we haven't tried calling him yet, right? So nope. why don't you we see if we can just reach him and, and set up an appointment? I mean, he hasn't, as far as we know, done anything wrong. So the, he's not under even investigation. We just want to ask him some questions about a uh, an incident that he was involved in just to try and better understand it. So I don't think he's likely to okay. behave oddly unless he's 
you know, more deeply involved in something weird. So, I mean, so he lives in a Spanish speaking neighborhood in a multi generational house. Mm -hmm. You said he does have a, a birth certificate. We're not worried about him being contacted by law enforcement and being worried about any well, immigration. He's issues. got a he's got a, a birth certificate, but that doesn't you know. Yeah, the rest of that. So the, the, the showing up at his house maybe not so great. Maybe trying to get him to meet us somewhere. That yeah, that mm -hmm. could make him very nervous, depending on what their situation is. Which you know, again, you kind of don't know, but um, right. Uh, there's the, the, welcome to you know welcome to texas in 2019 you know it's not super great the, uh, does he have a registered vehicle and a driver's license uh no he does not uh, no no on both i mean he has a driver's license yes okay there's a there's a driver's but license does not appear to own a but vehicle. he does not appear to own a registered vehicle yeah i milton why don't you give him a call and just see you know let him know you want to talk with him and see if you can find a Place he can I, come in, I, or we can I, go meet him. I will note that Agent Marlowe is fluent in Spanish. Can I'll say, yeah, I, I've got the Spanish. Oh. I've got Spanish, so that's probably going to be to be. Yeah, good thing. Me calling. All right. Uh, he picks up. Do we know the... he's fluent in Spanish? Um, no, just that. Uh, I mean, we have no idea at this point whether he is uh, uh, Spanish as a first language or second. I mean, he's born in the states. Right. He's got a U.S. No, we don't know. Okay, so I'll start. I'm just saying that there's yeah. the classic when the police, when the when the authorities contact people who don't want to talk to them, they will often revert to the right. your, their abuelas or their grandmother's language. Yes. <laughs> um, I've I've always wanted to see that happen with like somebody defaulting to Yiddish, you know, like <laughs> some some you know somebody who's like you know got a, 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 a an office job and they're just like you know. Uh don't sorry, I don't speak your crazy moon talk. I'm you know, right. I'm I'm straight out of the shuttle. <laughs> no, you're not, sir. You have to speak you speak you speak the king's English or whatever we have here in the States. Um, but at least it'll avoid that problem. Um and uh like I said, you call him, he picks up on like the second ring, um, and just begins with, you know, uh hello. Hello, am I speaking to Manuel Car Carriero? Wow, I butchered that. Who's uh, who's at? He basically says, "Yeah, who's asking?" Um, I'm Agent Marlowe. I was calling in regards to an incident you were involved in with your employer, Ben uh, Griffin. Uh, yeah. Well, um, yeah. I already gave. Yeah, I yeah, I gave a statement to the police. He there is a statement to the police, which is basically like. Well, I wasn't there when the dog got shot. He called me at home, and then I came and picked up the truck and drove it over. That's his whole statement. Right. It's just like so. Yeah, yeah. We've we've got that uh, report here. I just had a few more questions that we wanted to ask. Would you be able to meet with us to uh, have a quick discussion? Uh, well, um, you know, uh, I'm working today, but uh, how about yeah, I could do it tomorrow or after work. After work is fine. Um, we guys have a place that we want to try to get him to come to. Could be could be one of those taco stands. Yeah, I was gonna say somewhere Perfect. In public. Yes, somewhere convenient to him in the public. Right. Yeah, he's the, yeah yeah. Where where's the easiest place for us to meet you? Um, he goes out and throws out. I will name my favorite taco truck. He uh, he names a place called El Camion, the okay. truck, um, that uh, is uh, uh, parked out there. That you know uh, they they're open they're open till eight, so he can be there uh, after um after he's done working uh at six okay well uh i will look for you there and we will talk soon thank you um all right Let's... um see if he shows up well i'm gonna <laughs> say uh do we want to send somebody so if he says he's at work <laughs> mm -hmm. do we want to send somebody to you know covertly watch to make sure he's not doesn't run for it it depends where he's at work he could be at... right Griffins, he could be. We don't. Yeah. We still don't have any idea. We still don't have a way. Now that we've on the phone with him, do we have any way of actually figuring out, trying again to figure out where he the cell connected? You can burn some more time. <laughs> get get that sigint sigint guy to work the telephones. Here, let me go make that happen again. Let me see. Now with an updated, you know, nope. connection. Uh, Hello. No. Yeah. Useless. Useless. 
maybe that maybe he took the battery and the and the and the uh, SIM card out as soon as he hung up. I'm going to use my my computer skills to check my equipment here. What do you, you check, oh, check maybe maybe what check your bank account? What are you doing with your computer skills again? Uh, I, I I failed. Sorry guys. All right, excellent. That's that's what I was hoping for. So good and solid. All right. Well, um, uh, there are some other things you asked about. Let's go back in time because you asked for other things to be looked into, right? Yeah. yeah. So Video. let's start with some of the things that you were looking into having the uh, having Epic do for you so you didn't have to. So what did you? What were some of your suggestions there? Uh, Andrew, you called out one. The, the, the route and if there was any video surveillance footage of the chase so that we can observe it. Um, they got to, they, they, they have a number of hits. Uh, one of my favorites is the one that was from a camera that only fires every three seconds. <laughs> so it's just a blur. It's just, they just, you know, that's all they got was a shitty blur and a bunch of blurry people around some still cars and some still, still pumps. It's terrible. Um, but you do get at least one uh, that uh, you know shows uh, this uh, this black F one hundred and fifty with this kind of brown uh, two tone uh, you know, Dodge Ram. Uh, probably they they look like they go by. It. If you make a drive roll, I'll let you I'll give you an estimate on speed. I will How note that eighteen. How about eighteen? Okay. Yeah, they're 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 topping like 120 miles an hour on this particular piece of straightaway. Um, however, when you go and you look at your Google Maps, you can see that um, uh, that they probably don't maintain the speed very long because it starts the, the road starts curving and such, and so you know, um, just but they're getting up on the straightaway to like over 100 miles an hour, um, and it looks like that Dodge Ram has maybe got the 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 width of a car tire or two between its front bumper and the back bumper of that truck yeah. he is right on them. anything with the driver of the you know of the uh dodge uh, okay uh energy? give me a um give me a uh spot or give me a, an awareness okay uh where's my thing here we go and awareness is um that's just your general senses, sensory input, can you know, picking out things, hearing uh, things. I don't see it up there. Where is yeah, it? It's the it's the it's one of the it's in the uh, far uh, left hand column of skills. It is accounting alertness. Oh, sorry, alertness. Alertness. Okay, I gotcha. awareness. I was thinking, is it alertness? Yeah. It's alertness. Uh, I'm yes. Uh, Twenty nine out of fifty one. All right. Um, uh, go ahead and throw. All right, you think you're seeing something in there that might be a right arm. Now this guy's got some right arm down to the elbow. The question is how much right arm does he have? And so um, you're gonna need to fiddle with the computer skills on this digital stuff to see if you can make this. Yes, finally, get to my computer skill. Um, 40 exactly, and I have computers, 45, 40, right. 45. Um, what you're getting is something that looks like, uh, it looks like there's, um, uh, it looks like his sleeve is rolled down, um, uh, past his elbow. Um, but, uh, it, you don't actually see it's kind of like it looks like the 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 elbow the, the the sleeve is kind of flapping around loose at the end of his elbow here but you don't see you don't see a hand okay interesting very delta greeny <laughs> you were hoping for something like that i presume exactly all right I say we so, set up, we look for survivors, and we burn everything down. <laughs> Just to make safe. Yes, we'll think. do more damage that way. Um, what was the other things you wanted these guys to look into besides the cameras? They were going to uh, contact his uh, brother and sister, or okay. at least get the contact info on them. They do, um, and they are able to uh, set up some telephone interviews with you guys so you can get these done before you go see Manuel. 
Okay. Um, what would you like to conference call these guys on? Or would you like to actually, you know, I mean, you could spend part of the day driving out to these places. Um, yeah, the, 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 you... these, this is background info from these folks. So yeah. I don't think at this point there's any need to talk to them in person. But I think we want to try and find out about his mobility, his mental state, his drinking, okay. uh, his truck. Do they think he can drive his own truck? Mm -hmm. uh, that might be informative to find out whether he's doing what I think he's doing. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's go down to family. All right. So, um, yeah. So uh, we've got um, a sister, older sister named Gwen Townsend, uh, married. She lives in Pecos in uh, Pecos County. And he's got a younger brother, Randall, uh, who lives in El Paso. Um, what would you like to get out of these guys? And I am going to simplify this because we're on a clock yep. so that you're going to be able to ask questions to both of them. And I'll tell you what answers each of them give to the various questions. So you don't have to repeat everything for the other sibling. Perfect. Do that. All right. What are you guys looking to know? Go ahead and fire it off, yell out, raise your hands. What do you want? <laughs> um, well, how how close are they? How what's your relationship like with estranged? Estranged. And estranged at this point. Um, and, and during during the time of the you know, the accident, um, when he was coming back and was in rehab, were they in contact with them? They were. They time? were. I mean, he um they both had a lot of admiration for the brother. Um, and, uh, they all came, you know, you, you, you'll pick it from both of them that they came from a very crap, um, upbringing, uh, with a, uh, uh, a father who had, uh, uh, problems with alcohol and a mother who was, uh, 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 sort of cowed into absentia, um, you know, and um, uh, they, all of them, you know, got out of that house as quickly as possible, you know, whether it was through marriage or joining the military or whatever it was. Everybody got out of the house at 18 as quick as they could. Um, none of them have, uh, I mean, uh, none of them, some have a little, little uh, you know, a little, we need college under the belt, but none of them came out of a uh, any place where they could afford to go and get, you know, uh, a four year uh, degree anywhere in Texas. Um, so escape meant uh, escape meant, you know, marriage uh, to more successful people or, you know, uh, getting hitched to Uncle Sam. And um, that was sort of the trajectory for everybody. Um, and um, you know, uh, the older sister uh, will definitely, uh, Miss Townsend will be, um, it seems like because alcohol was the, the fulcrum that moved their father, uh, what's the old saying? There's, there's, there is no devil. There's just God when he's drunk. Um, <laughs> that that's that's kind of the you know that that Jekyll and Hyde sort of thing that goes on with alcohol abuse uh got them to move away move to got them to leave and as far as they were you know able to um the uh the next problem was um that uh you know when their brother uh, Ben started abusing alcohol a lot of that old trauma came up and it got harder and harder to be around him. He was definitely pushing people away. He got very, they will, they will, you know, say that he had a real uh, spiral of self-loathing and uh, uh, substance abuse. And I know it seems weird to suggest that a one-armed man could be uh, successful at physical abuse, but because he was in a diminished state, he didn't hold back. You know, um, 
he didn't hold back. There was a number of facilities where we were trying to negotiate uh, out from, you know, possibly getting him, he could have gotten sentenced for, for battery, you know, um, for punching the staff or hitting the staff. Um, and then it was just systematic, it was just sort of symptomatic of, of, of him falling, falling into his father's footsteps that he moved back to his dad's ranch after he died. I mean, father died. Um, we, you know, there was some discussion about what to do with the place. Um, ben said he wanted it. And we didn't, we didn't think that was a great idea, but he took it and, um, rather than I mean we were just trying to placate him uh and he moved out there you know and um we we actually thought you know both of them were like we thought we thought it was going to end like it like we two years ago he burned the he burned the ranch house down uh, the, he, 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 he always smoked but with the drinking he set the ranch house on fire and burned down. He would have died in that house. And we thought that that was going to be the end of him, you know, but, um, you know, he just, he just freaking lucked out, uh, you know, um, uh, that, uh, that dog of his, uh, woke him up, uh, Kearney, uh, woke him up and got him out of the house and, uh, you know, saved his life. I mean, since then he's used the insurance to sort of rebuild the place so that it's um yeah we it was rebuilt his wheelchair accessible you know um and uh easier to, for him to get around in because it wasn't originally but uh, uh it's it's built on it's still built where the old ranch house was and uh it wasn't a house that uh we grew up in it was a house that dad picked up after everyone was out of the house and um the gardeners yeah um so uh but yeah uh we figured that that was gonna with him getting getting drunk and setting the house on fire seemed like that was where that story was was heading um but again we reached out to him in the hospital you know because he did have smoke inhalation and he was hospitalized briefly for that. He was uh, he was not as overtly angry uh, anymore and um, abusive. And I think he made a show of being abusive because he did not want he didn't want the people who knew him to see him in the conditions he was in. Um, that's my guess. That's my you know. Um, pocket psychology, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, opinion. But uh, ultimately, when we saw him in the hospital, he was just, he didn't tell us that there had been a fire in the house burned there. We had to hear it from a guy who worked on his ranch, you know, worked on the property, called us. Um, and, uh, you know, he just didn't seem open. To having anything to do with us he's cold he's distant he's monosyllabic you know um he just yeah he just uh didn't want anything to do with us at that point um and again as much as both of them were ashamed about this the experience with their father was when you're dealing with something like this the answer was to to, to get out of the get out of the blast radius you can't you know the, the answer is you can't fix it get away so they did um but uh you know what's happened since then um they don't know that was almost that was almost two years ago but well, they he's been with that dog a long time i assume that that was like a a va emotional um support animal no actually um my when we tried to get him interested in getting one of those emotional support animals but he didn't want to do with that um uh, I don't know where he got that dog. Um, I don't know if he had uh, adopted it or something or what, or if it was a stray, but it didn't come from the VA. There's nothing in his VA records about that as an emotional support. Yep. 
I know he had his uh, his disability van that he was able to drive. He also had a, a Ram Dodge Ram pickup. Uh, yeah, that was. Is that. he able? Was he able to drive that? I would think there'd be no re reason for him to keep it. He probably couldn't drive it, right? Well, it's like I said, it was Dad's, and yeah. uh, I think he kept, it's just kept around as some sort of sentimental thing. Well, I don't know about sentimental, but maybe some sort of one of mausoleum like memorial to the old man mm. um i know i think maybe some of his 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 handyman his ranch guy used it sometimes to haul uh like fence stakes out to do you know to do repairs on the on the on the fence you know uh right. the kid the kid rides uh the kid rides a, a, a like a dirt bike around so you can't really you can't really haul stuff around the ranch on the dirt bike. So I think, I think he lets that guy use the truck to move stuff around. And, you know, I mean, dad used to use it to put hay out once upon a time, but I don't think there's any cattle out there now. I don't think there's any. Yeah, how, how big is this ranch? Um, you know, it's a couple hundred acres, but it's, um, I don't think it's a going concern anymore. I mean, we sold off the animals that were on it when, when we inherited it there weren't many left it wasn't in great shape um we got it because dad died at testate um uh but we we got the animals off the property before you know something like they ran out of water or whatever feed um but after that uh it was just a it was just a house with a barn and some sheds and some a lot of property. empty space mm -hmm. yeah That's a good uh, uh, depiction over your shoulder there. <laughs> You're also on mute, but that's okay. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, this is the area we're talking about in Texas. It's it's, hus pretty, it's hospitable. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's pretty bad. I mean, there's little areas where they have a little little uh, tree here or there, but you know, it's pretty pretty barren. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I don't feel like I have any further questions for the. For the family, anybody else? No, I have a general question outside. For uh, do the brother and sister live together? No, um, I'm condensing this so that you don't okay. have to ask uh, all the questions to one guy on one phone call and all the questions to to her on the other. That's all. I'm just just for okay. story purposes. I don't want to don't want to have to make you guys repeat everything. Your economy is admirable. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should at this stage either do uh, one of two things. If it doesn't take too long. I, I'm I'm really curious about seeing the dog, <laughs> the carcass of the dog, but maybe it's it's mute. It's just mm -hmm. a red herring. Um, we should probably at this point maybe uh, do finish the interview with the ranch hand, but then just confront Ben. Okay. Yeah, I um, think we should talk talk to the guy first, and then and then after that, I think talking to Ben is okay. likely the way to go. Um. All right. Uh. Oddly enough, uh, Manuel uh, does in fact keep his appointment. I said, by the way, there's something I wanted to point out. Um, I, one of the parts of the scenario is the green box. That is to say, the um, the storage facility that Delta Green rents uh, to store tools that can be lost, left at the scene, um, that have that are that have been sanitized so that you can walk away from them and you know leave them at the scene, and there's no there's no. Uh, repercussions for them they can't come back on you um and i will point out that the one of the features of this green box is that it's uh not so much a storage unit as it is it is a garage um you have access to in this scenario a uh ford ltd uh from 1977 um it has nice uh, lucky has, us yeah, um, <laughs> it appears to be in modest condition. Um, however, I will note that um, as you are taking a uh, a uh, survey of the vehicle, one of the things that you will notice is that um, uh, there are signs that it has been spray painted different colors multiple times uh, cool. over its lifetime. Uh, there sure. are some signs where... Uh, some putty has been put in to some bullet holes in it uh, and then spray painted over. Um, 
there's, uh, let's see here. Uh, there are some modifications that have been done to it. Um, let's see, uh, the registration is uh, in the name of someone named Douglas Wilson uh, with a uh -huh. Google address in um, uh, El Paso. Uh, there are um, several license plates front and back and uh, a, a number of uh, license plate, license um, tax stickers, including some years in the future that haven't handy, happened handy. yet. Andy. Um, uh, there is a, um, uh, there is a compartment uh, between the front seats on the bench that you can fold up and there is a, um, a uh, Glock pistol in there with a um, suppressor already attached to it. Some extra magazines, the back seat uh, bench, uh, on the back seat of the bench, not the, well, not the, the I guess the bench part of it. And, this part, the vertical yeah, part, yeah. Uh, not the horizontal, uh, actually folds down if you reach up and touch a release and you can reach into the trunk and pull out the Mossberg shotguns that are in the trunk and uh, get access to them from the passenger compartment rather than from having to get out and go around to the, to the trunk. Um, if you, uh, I will note that uh, uh, Agent Marlowe looking at this thing will very quickly determine that it is it may be a 1977 frame, but it's got a much more modern engine in it. Um, for instance, it can run on unleaded. It can run on uh, unleaded gas, uh, for instance. Um, and uh, although it is absolutely um, manual, everything um, you know, it is manual windows, manual door locks. There's nothing digital about this thing at all. Um, it, uh, it also appears to have, um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, windows are made out of what appears to be some sort of ballistic glass. There appear to be ballistic sheets inserted between inside the door panels. Um, so, uh, it could probably slow down, uh, some serious, yeah. Some 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 rifle rounds it might slow down some rifle rounds. Uh, the uh, I could have a pretty good time in Dallas with all that. Yes, I was about to say this is exactly. <laughs> thank, thank you, Major Khan. Um, so it is uh, it is um, uh, it is like somebody took the blues mobile, and uh, you know um, uh, this is the this is the bastard child of the blues mobile and possibly the last of the V eight interceptors. Uh -huh. So. What please, about, please feel flame free flame to enjoy. Hmm? Flamethrowers? Any no, flamethrowers? No, no flamethrowers. No James Bond shit, but some definite criminal shit. Yeah. There's some definite criminal shit. Um, I will note that uh, along with the shotguns in the in the trunk, apparently there are, um, uh, let's see, what did I say here? Uh, a box of nitrile gloves, uh, uh, four black balaclavas, two sets of hand handcuffs, eight zip to sets of zip ties, and a half gallon or a gallon bottle of bleach that is half empty. <laughs> um, the smell, the car, the interior of the car smells a little bleachy as well. Uh, flash grenades, hand, hand grenades. What, what no, 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 no. It's on my list. I have it on my. my... <laughs> you have it on your list of things you'd like to have. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, so would everybody. Reading, you know. If I had the time, what I should have done is gone and just generated some items randomly from the green box generator you guys remember with that i haven't used it okay it is it is hilarious you just go through and you select how many items you would like to have in the green box so mundane weird and then supernatural and just punch in you know how many items do you want and it just <coughs> generates a bunch of stuff like you know what's in the green box okay well there's a bunch of half used for there's a half used trauma bag you know it was just, just there's half the supplies are missing and the ones that aren't missing are in the are stuffed in a trash can or you know there's a uh i think one of my there's all kinds of one of my favorites was the one that uh dennis used in a scenario which is like a a small idol with a um elder sign that has been epoxied to the idol and then a uh <laughs> a, 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 a sticky note on the I, on the elder side that says, do not fucking remove. 
It just sits there like a bomb waiting to go off the scenario. Like, is this what the scenario is actually about? Was we just tricked into coming on this whole thing just to get us into a situation with this? Yeah. Um, so there's like always a time in Portland storage, right? When we went, we went to the yes, the cash. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly right. Um, okay. So based on my, I'm just looking at my character street. I'm probably driving. Yep. Yes, you probably are. <laughs> I'm um, <laughs> you get into this thing and it's like a glove. You just slide yeah. right into it. It's like, oh, this can, is can it, you know, go, 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 and you know, it, do you have... it does <laughs> not I have the hydraulics. Uh. Is, <laughs> does not have the hydraulics. Oh, that, that is a hilarious. Uh, the, usually, the men in black don't get out of a, of a, a car that's doing the hydraulic thing, but it, they do usually drive out of date vehicles. That is a classic of the men in black mythology they would show up in like cars from the 50s or 60s all right um we're all loaded well, up you guys managed to get out there uh show up at el camion and uh it uh, looks like the guy based on his driver's license photo has turned up uh not the least of which because if you he meets you here then you don't go anywhere near his house that was the plan <laughs> so he's actually made this appointment um how do you introduce yourselves Are all of us meeting him or just um how many want to? I I I'd be comfortable staying with the vehicle and firearms at a comfortable distance. Okay. Should two of us go? I mean, yeah. I have to go. Well, yeah, Agent Moultrie and um uh you know uh, the Marlo. Two women, the two women will go and kind of yeah, yeah, them that, into that, a full sense of security. Yeah, exactly. That's uh -oh. I'm gonna have okay. to be the good cop with her though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he's nervous. He's definitely, um, you know, um, he's just, like I said, 26. Um, uh, I guess your character, Marlo's character is uh, Puerto Rican. Um, yeah. So, so Afro uh, Caribbean, Afro Latino Caribbean background. Uh, this kid is definitely more Indian. Um, uh, so, you know, Mexican or, or places further south that direction is what he looks like. Um, higher cheekbones, you know, um, uh, a little shorter. Um, but um, he um, he speaks, he, he, he doesn't, he speaks practically, there's, there's accentless English. Um, he's lived here his entire life. Um, and when you guys approach him, you guys look official enough that he, you know, uh, <laughs> stands up and says, "Yeah, this is," uh, and and stands up, which may be a response to to maybe he just had good upbringing when women women in the room were. In this case, when women approach the picnic bench, you're supposed to stand up, which he does, and he says, um, "Are you Agent Marlowe?" Hi. Uh, yes, Manuel. Yes. Um, what uh, what were you wanted you wanted to talk about about my statement? Oh, uh, please sit. Let's sit down at the okay. picnic bench. Um, You're not in trouble, Manuel. I just we just wanted to have a, a quick discussion with you about um, what you may have seen or what you know about uh, the incident that happened with your employer. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what, I, I didn't. Like I said in the statement, I didn't see what happened to Kearney. Um, I didn't see those kids uh, shoot the dog, so I don't. Were you know. on site that day? No, I wasn't. Um, uh, I wasn't working at his place that that uh, that afternoon. I was, um, you know, uh, working over at the uh, uh, at the uh, Baker Ranch. You know, they had a little extra work over there. How often are you over at Ben's place? Um, I usually am there uh, a couple times. Uh, well, maybe three or four times a month, you know, maybe once a week. Um, there's not a lot to do. Uh, all I'm doing really is just doing maintenance on the buildings and sort of keeping up the fences and stuff. Um, there's, you know, uh, the scrub's a little overgrown. Um, there's no animals out there, you know. So the only thing I've really been doing is is just uh, doing 
basic maintenance around the place for him. Um, you know, he, it's the stuff he can't do himself. You know, he can't get up on the roof. He can't get up, you know, he can't reach up the sides of the house. So anything that's out of his reach is, is, was basically what I'm taking care of. But that only, and sometimes I'll come in for more time if like something's gotten damaged in the storm or if there's, you know, something like that, I'll, I'll spend a couple of days there in a row. But, you know, again, I'm only checking in with him maybe four times a month, something like that, maybe once a week. You know? How long have you been working for him? Mm, well, um, I guess it's been a couple of years now. It's been um, since he got the new place. I mean, I knew about the, I mean, I'd seen the old place, but I wasn't so after after him. the fire. Yeah. Um, some, somebody, I think mentioned that you might be occasionally driving that old truck of his. Yeah. How's that run? Um, it runs pretty good. I mean, he's, uh, he's always had me, you know, uh, he's always had me do the maintenance on it. In fact, he taught me how to do the maintenance on it. Um, uh, when I got to work there, um, uh, I learned how to do the maintenance on, both uh the truck and the van is it uh pretty tricky to drive it's an old truck no no it's a stick i mean a lot of a lot of you know a lot of kids don't know how to form a stick these days but um it wasn't that hard to master ask him about the dog does he take care of the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are all mic'd. Yeah, right? all, yes, everybody's yeah. mic'd up, so yeah. I don't oh, have to worry about this. Yeah, so <laughs> Sean and I in the car can we can ask questions. You, uh, like yeah. how was uh, how was his dog? Were you, was he friendly? Did you get along with the dog? Uh, Kearney was fine. Um, Kearney was a was a good dog. Um, uh, the uh, uh, he's had he had Kearney for as long as I've known, and from. What little I gathered, it seemed to it, it seemed to have a real effect on him having that dog and having that dog in the property. Um, yeah, first of all, you know that dog. He he said that dog saved his life uh, by waking him up and and getting him to get out of that 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 old house, the old ranch house, before it burned. Um, but other, after that, you know, uh, he and the dog were pretty inseparable. I mean weirdest thing like when um when he'd be out there you know in his chair uh it's got like this thing in the chair that makes it go up and down so you can get it up high enough to see like into the over oh, the the hood into the engine block you know when i was doing things like uh changing spark plugs or taking filters out or you know doing just doing the maintenance on the trucks uh that dog would just sit you know right near him it just just you know uh lie down on its uh, its belly sometimes and just sit there uh next to him the whole time wouldn't get bored wouldn't wander off i mean they were you know that dog was was with him all the time could could ben drive the truck no well i mean he did but i never saw him i mean he did i just never saw him do it but he's done it before this incident with the uh i don't know about that i mean when i got there the truck was actually in kind of sad shape um it had it didn't look like it had been driven for a while the battery had to be jumped you know um the uh the the tires um had to be rotated i think they'd just been sitting there um maybe without enough air in them kind of half flat um uh we kind of restored it um i mean it wasn't like it had any body damage or real mechanical defects. It just it just sat there, you know. It just sat there for I don't know how many years. Um, so yeah, he uh, he wanted to make sure that that, the, that it was put back into shape. Um, and I was his uh, I was his hands, uh, and uh, I, you know, to do that job. You know? But you you never saw him drive it. But would you? come over and it would be parked somewhere different or something it seemed like you're suggesting maybe he did drive it but you never saw him do it well he says um 
I don't know how he could have driven. I really don't. Um, I, I, I mean, I tried to figure it out on my own because I mean, he did obviously, um, but you know, I don't. I couldn't figure out how he did it himself. I just, I can't. I. There have been times. Uh, it's not that the truck's in a different place, but I have noticed that the fuel levels changed. And I have noticed that the odometer has changed when times when I'm not driving it. Um, so I think he's got somebody else on the ranch who's using it instead of, you know, when I'm not there. And I don't use it very much. I've only used it uh, in a, for a few things. Some of it was for like, you know, uh, policing up all the old uh, water troughs that were out on the property, you know, and, and, and hauling those off to the dump. We hauled a lot of stuff off to the dump out of the barn and such. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, um, I, I'm not sure. I, I know it, I know it's getting, I am pretty sure it's getting used, um, but I don't, I don't know how he, I don't think he's the one who's using it. I mean, Ask him if there's anything strange on the uh, on the I'm property, sorry. any you know, bat caves and anything. What are the barns being used for now that they don't have? Uh... What are the what's being used for? The barns. I mean, right now it was just like where he was parking the vehicles to keep them out of the Texas sun and Texas wind and Texas, you know, environment. You know, uh, so the paint didn't all just get scoured off and bleached by the sun. He says that. He says that, you know, I have seen, I've seen footprints around the house, uh, in the sand outside the house that are, you know, with a, with a tread that's different from mine, you know? Um, so I know he's got people coming by and he's got people coming over. Um, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't even, you know. He doesn't even own any shoes that I know of. <laughs> you know, so. Have uh, you noticed anything um, odd or, you know, that just out of place that. Well, the oddest thing, the oddest thing that um, happened, ever happened there was just recently. I mean, I went over and, you know, it was the night that we, um, we picked up that uh uh we picked up the uh i picked him up from uh that other county we drove the uh i drove the truck back when we got back to his place and you know uh parked the uh parked the truck in the van um As soon as we were there, like just just waiting on uh, out front of the house, uh, was this dog, um, this sort of uh, really short haired, white colored dog, a uh, big, big head like a, well, kind of like Kearney. I mean, well, uh, I mean. Uh, big muzzle, short hair, floppy ears. Um, yeah, uh, but it was right there. And he just, he just rolled out of his, uh, out of his uh, van and, you know, went up to the front house and, and basically said something like, you know, well, who are you then? And the dog just kind of looked at him and he says, you know, well, you know, I guess you better just come on inside. And, you know, when he got the door open and went in, that dog just followed him into the house like it had been living there the whole time. You know, I just, it was really weird. He just, that's the weirdest thing I've seen at the house. So the he same day a, his I, dog was shot, he got a replacement, well, it was, a it replacement was dog appeared? It was like the next day, basically. Oh, I mean, I guess the it was, jail. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was the next day. 
Milton's like, yes, the dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> yeah, he just he just uh no, he just walked that dog right in the house. Yeah. Dog didn't have a collar. Does he still have that dog? Um it's been like four days. It, this is this is that was like I don't know, four four days ago, five days ago. I can't remember, you know, it 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 uh back on the the eleventh or whatever. Um so I don't know. Uh I haven't been back over there. Mm. But um you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the VA wouldn't have just dropped off a dog, you know, and left. No, the, no they would not. Um, Ask so him if he's shopping for him. Does he? Did he ever take care of the dog and all that stuff? Um, he has. Well, most of his shopping appears to be uh, is delivery. Um, he there's a there's a, a, a co-op or a you know grocery out there in, in town that'll drop off stuff uh at the house and i will show up when it's time to do that and and stock things in his uh pantry he's kind of like redone the pantry so he can reach everything from you know his height uh but um and you know other stuff gets the you know other stuff gets delivered too um that's another good point i should say that um now you keep your ears out. Your handler will get back to that in a second. But yeah, he says um, sometimes I help with that stuff when it's too heavy. Uh, you know, like, but there's also like a delivery person who uh, comes out and puts the stocks and stuff away for him from the grocery as opposed to them just leaving the boxes on his front steps. I mean, that only happens when he's out of the house. And he's he sometimes isn't there. He sometimes is gone. Although I mean, sometimes he's gone. And sometimes the, the the truck's always there. The 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 you know, I've never been by and seen the um uh the the Ram Dodge Ram missing, but the mobility van is sometimes uh, gone for days at a time. No, I'll, I'll see that. Go. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And there's nothing else on he the takes the dog with him. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it in the property. I, well, I mean, I've never, I've never gone on the property without, you know, without being scheduled or whatever. So I, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen uh, the dog there alone. Um, well, I mean, certainly not the new one. I guess maybe I must have seen Kearney there um, once or twice when he wasn't around, but I just can't remember it. I was going to ask if you had ever been alone with the dog and how the how the dog seemed with you. Um, dog's quiet. The, Kearney was quiet. Kearney was a quiet dog. Um, didn't bark. Didn't cause a fuss. Didn't get its back up uh, or growl or anything. I never. I never saw the dog get um, aggressive with anybody. Um, on the other hand. Um, there were a couple times that I found like uh well there was a town there was that time we found a rattlesnake uh uh, uh well the back half of it anyways and uh another time I found a Gila monster that looked like um uh Kearney had chewed them up but I've never seen him I never saw him get uh and you know, um, I guess he'd light on things like, you know, you'd sometimes see him light on like a jackrabbit or something or, you know, out bouncing across the property. But I never, I never saw him chase one. So Marlo, ask him if there's anything else besides the barns on the, on the property. What else is on the property other than the barns and the house? And that's the All new right. house. Obviously, the old let one. Me, uh, there anything else out there? Zip, let me zip over to that section of the uh, scenario. Pull that up. Cast all the villainous NPCs. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right. 
so the Griffin Ranch, is a, if you want to call it that, is off a, a two-lane blacktop called County Road 37. Um, it is uh, on some lower land insofar as uh, the slope goes from the opposite side of Route 37 is a little bit higher than the, than the land that the, uh, the ranch is on. Um, let's see here. Uh, there is a corral attached to the stables. There's a stables. Um, but again, it's all, it, it's, there's nobody, there's no animals in it. Um, there is uh, the barn. Um, there is also a, a, a tool shed outside the house. There is a uh, well <laughs> uh, that has a, uh, a well with a wind pump. So it has its own water. Mm -hmm. on the, it has its own water because it's not attached to the uh, the, yeah. the county water supply. Um, it's got its own septic tank. Um, and uh, there's a lot of abandoned pasture around it. And then there's the, the house that he built or had built to uh, replace his dad's place when it burned. So those, are, those are the main structures. Is the new house built on top of the old house or in a different yeah. location? It's, a, on it's built on top of the house. It's, it's built on, on the old foundations. He had the old, he had the old basement like filled in with with um, gravel or something. Uh, after they hauled all the, the house collapsed into it, and then they filled it in with gravel and just built this uh, one story, uh, sort of shotgun style house on top of it. Um, I, we we know that Ben's you know been through a lot. He's he's been and sometimes been uh in some tough spots. Um, and can sometimes be kind of a difficult person to be around. Have you found that to be the case? Well, Jesus, since I started working for him, um, Ben's uh, he seems. You know, I heard that he had a reputation um, as a drinker before I uh, before I went to work there. And there were some people who said, no, don't take that job. It'll end up, uh, you know, throwing a wrench at you or something, because apparently that was a thing he would do. Um, uh, apparently went through a couple of tool sets that way, just throwing wrenches at people. Um <laughs> And uh, yeah, he, he get, you know he had a reputation for you know getting dr getting liquored up and trying to get into fights, you know from his wheelchair. Um, but after that fire, uh, I think that just turned him around. I mean, he just stopped. I he just stopped drinking. There's no booze in that house. Um, you know, I don't know if he got Jesus or you know got saved or what, but he uh, he turned himself around. He, he doesn't. He, he's He's got some distance. I mean, he's not um, unfriendly, right? He's not hostile, but he's not uh, super sociable. He's dead. I don't see him. I don't see him out in town. I mean, I know he leaves town sometimes, so I don't know what he, where he goes when he does when he leaves town. But he's not super social or sociable or want to sit and talk or whatever. But he, um, he's all, certainly not an angry drunk anymore. Um, he's just, uh, you know, um, I don't know. He just, he just feels distant. He just, you know, he's uh, uh, aloof. That's the word. He's yeah. kind of aloof. Um, you know, he, he, uh, I mean, he showed me how to do the maintenance of the vehicles and showed me how to do some things, but that was just so I could do my, I think it was just, he wasn't trying to be some big brother. He's just trying to make it so I could do my job better around the place. All right. Time to lock and load and have another fire. Yeah. I think it's a no further questions for, uh, All right. for this gent, unless any, any of you have got anything else? Good. Doesn't 
<laughs> there is one thing I want I should have uh, I'm going to throw at you guys because you haven't mentioned it, and it's something that I would like to make sure that you cover or have covered, and that is things like his purchase history. Um, this guy definitely has. You guys can get it as banking records, and you can get it as um, his credit card records. And what you're going to find is is that he's got almost no online presence whatsoever. Um, he does not appear to own a smartphone. He appears to have a, he has some social media account. He, he doesn't have a, he has like a Gmail address. Um, he has no social media accounts like Facebook or Twitter or any of that kind of stuff. Um, he uses his credit cards online to pay for things like, you know, the electricity or his phone bill you know any of those kind of bills uh, he shops online with sort of like uh, uh, standing orders that that come in and come through his credit card you know on a fairly regular basis um the only thing that that, that stands out in his financial history is that uh, is that that there are times when he has uh taken out relatively large amounts of money um uh, all of his living seems extremely frugal he owns this place of uh, 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 outright but he'll take out uh uh he'll buy a cashier's check for like three to five thousand dollars every once in a while several times a year um and where that money what those what that's spent on uh you know, uh, the because we're dealing with time, and I don't want to bore you with too many do, do, with having to do too much uh, running around and doing work. Uh, ultimately, you'd be able to figure out that um, uh, he's making cash purchases. He appears to be making cash purchases at. Um, uh, gun shows in texas the money comes the money the money comes out before there's a gun show a a a arms collectors show um he has a texas uh uh for what firearms registration is required um he has the appropriate permits i know there's a lot of open carry but he has a concealed carry permit which um, is something that requires a background check even in Texas, which is a shortcut to being able to join some of these uh, uh, arms collector shows that if you've had the background check, then you can have a membership and now you can actually buy and sell weapons at the show rather than um, uh, only ever to be able to buy accessories or ammunition. There's a, there's a line about most of these places about how much you can purchase in them and uh, whether you can sell a, a firearm there or not. It all has to do with whether you've got, uh, you've either paid the show to do a background check for you or you showed up with your concealed weapons permit that says, I've already had the background check done. Uh, my only question about Texas is how often do they have to make you do that background check? I don't know. Um, but he uh, he appears to maybe be going to gun shows. And what's the heaviest armaments we have? We have shotguns and, and pistols. Rifles. Rifles. There's one rifle in the, in the, in the team. Yep. Yeah. And so pistols. Pretty light. We got some lightweight uh, body armor. Oh, try, try not to get in a firefight with the guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> uh, it's we're gonna have supernatural body armor and Kevlar, you know. I'm set. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to, but <laughs> I'm I'm suddenly as, as long as he's not like you know got a psychic sp- link between this cripple and this dog who's giving him phantom limbs, and this guy's gonna be able to kick our ass. So I I think like at this stage, you know, just you, you're you're all set for the drone strike and walk away from it. Just say you know, won't you? Problem solved. <laughs> well. <laughs> It would that solve the problem. The dog. Tragic fire kills, you know, hero. And, yeah, yeah, no one, no one's going to miss him. Yeah, until this news story makes the news, and then it's well, then it'd be like, oh, tragic. You know, like his father, he died, and you know, and there he goes. We yeah, could kill the reporter too. 
<laughs> how, many, how many bodies do you think it takes to cover something up? We should check with how that work out for how many how many you got? Can we just, can we just throw one um, under his house and burn it down again? <laughs> there yeah, is no, with Mr. Corbett in the basement. Under. Yeah, there isn't a there doesn't appear to be an under in that okay. so far as that the house isn't up, isn't elevated with a space underneath it. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, on a, there's on no a slab. slab. No cave on opening slab. on the property because in Texas and West Texas. You know, most of the uh, stuff that's maintained, there are tons of bats everywhere. Like they're in. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't a, some grotto near nearby. You're already banking on the bat <laughs> grotto. Is he, is he Batman? <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, all we have are. We can check for the dog. Teenagers body. saying they saw an arm mm -hmm. where there couldn't be one. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he drove the truck. That's really all we have right now. <laughs> That's a very rational way of looking at it, Agent. You know, we've looked at the uh, autopsy photos of the dog. Oh yeah, um, yeah. you'll be able to get access to those. Do we notice um, anything about them? Yes. The most interesting thing about that. Give me a um, give me a medicine roll. Everyone, just go ahead and do that. If no, 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 well, no. Just just Moultrie. I think I'm she, pretty sure it's just Moultrie. She's the only one who's I think has the score. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I made it. My medicine's 85 and it rolled a 67. Right. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, she teaches. What can I tell you? Um, just, uh, anyways, um, digging through and trying to understand the, you know, the uh, report put together by the veterinary who was where the dog ended up. Um, the, uh, uh, the animal. There's nothing unusual about the animals being dead. It is. It was clearly shot and um, uh, it suffered uh, trauma to its pulmonary system um, before and and was killed almost instantly. The one thing that maybe stands out to you is that the uh, dog's missing leg um, was uh, uh, missing uh, at the. Uh, just a little bit above what would be the dog's elbow joint um I and it. <laughs> and it was um it was clearly and, and the veterinary says it did not appear to be uh it did not appear to be a surgical amputation mm -hmm. um the, the the vet thought it was uh, an amputation due to um uh a violent act with another animal perhaps um that, that this is this was an injury from a fight okay. when is the dog's it, helicopter yeah. went down yeah exactly the helicopter went down. Burn, the burn, dog have burn, okay. burn the burn the carcass please what happened when you let the dog drive the helicopter um <laughs> it's, it's like it's like tunes is the driving cat just don't do that <laughs> This, this area is not known for drive. Norwegians. But I, think we're okay. I think we're okay in that front. So. Yes. Is there anything about the photos, like angles, or um, is there anything in the photos that leads me to believe that I need to dig around in the body for any reason? Um, not in the photos and not in the uh, report. Um, the, you're, you, this guy did a, looks like he did a fairly competent job. Um, a lot of what he, he did open the animal up in an attempt to try and you know um, recover any fragments of the uh, shell that went through it, uh, the bullet that went through it. The bullet was actually recovered by um, the investigators at the scene, uh, in, in, the, in that it, it went right through the animal and it came out the other side. And I don't know how cops do that, but they find bullets. They I don't understand how they find a bullet that went through a person, but they somehow it's have that lasers. magic. Yeah, you know, <laughs> or or they do that scene from The Wire where they take out the, the 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 rulers and do all the angles. I don't know if you remember that scene from The Wire, yeah. but there's a sort of a classic where they determine where the bullet ended up. Right, it was the refrigerator in the refrigerator door. Yes, okay. yeah. So the bullet hit the refrigerator door and it went backwards and the the, the and then closed. Yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about the refrigerator, Scott, if you just burned the place down. Then you'd be true. <laughs> With no evidence. I yeah. mean, I know well, we're not. I mean, followers. sure, sure, he could probably jump in the refrigerator. If Indiana Jones has taught us anything, it's a refrigerator. 
We'll save you from an atomic blast. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, uh, you okay. Know. So I, I don't, I feel good about not, um, you know, digging around in a frozen dog carcass. <laughs> frozen dog. Well, you know, it's big in publishing. You can't get too far from a dead frozen I know, dog. You must be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. so, so Delta Green Group. So put your heads together. Is there anything that you've experienced in, in your odd, you know, career here in our group that would point to something that, you know, possession. I mean, these dogs. Seem All right. Just... Everybody can roll. Everybody can roll on your uh, skill marked unnatural. Everybody's got two or three or four points of that. Go ahead and take a shot. Okay. So we have to, we're rolling against two. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you check on your skills here. Or five. No, I'm, no, I'm looking at mine. It's a two. I'm looking okay. at the, I'm, I have to score under oh, yeah. two or oh. under. Yes. If he's I throwing it out there. Timer off. He has 11. 60. <laughs> close. <laughs> Damn close. Oh, well, uh, 11's a critical fail, right? It yeah, actually, it would be a critical fail. And yeah. I ro also rolled an 11. So, all right, you're, you, you know, <laughs> we really I, don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I really don't sure. understand. Oh, no, no. Like, I know this guy. He's a good guy. Why would you want to try to put his last I can speculate, is all I can say. I'm all sorry. right, I will, I will say this with two critical fails. Um, what you've come up with is there's no unnatural stuff with dogs. That's not a thing that the dogs aren't involved. The dogs are good. Dog, dogs aren't involved. With good, the boys. good boy. Good boy. All Look, good boys. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> if, if, if you want to make a role under a cult, you know, that's fine too. Yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, the floppy sleeve is covering up a dog leg that he is now. <laughs> Frankenstein style attached to his arm. Close. I, I I just I know it. I can I'm just not I don't have the role for it. A, a but I'm close. I, I do. I, I succeeded I on an occult role. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Well, there's a couple of things I can tell you based on a cult. Mm. Um dogs are um in a lot of cultures, including including uh West Texas. Mesoamerican. Okay. Um, you know, uh, pre-Columbian Indians. Uh, dogs are psychopomps. Dogs and canids are the escorts of the dead into the afterlife. Um, freaking uh, uh, freaking Zeus has a pair of hunting dogs that hang out with him. Uh, what is Anubis but a jackal-headed deity? Um, there are uh, there are some dog uh gods and dog heroic figures in um uh like i said aztec and southwest indian uh culture you know that are um again uh guides to the afterlife um so dogs are certainly around now dog yes dogs there's dogs in supernatural in a cult right mythology mm -hmm. um yes and, i just uh, google too so i found a bunch of stuff. uh you know there's things like you know the Wild Hunt, for instance, which is uh, from sort of from Celtic mythology, which is a you know a a, a, a pack of dogs that runs uh, through uh, the uh, the area and and will sort of randomly pick out somebody to pursue um, uh, with this uh, figure of the huntsman, who is a, like a stag headed or a stag horn wearing figure that shows up and is super spooky and you probably don't want them chasing you with a pack of dogs. Um, but um, the biggest thing I was supposed to from an occult is that dogs certainly have a connection to various mythologies about the afterlife, death and, and things like that. And that is probably because of the tendency of dogs to dig up the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, all kinds of wolves, all kinds of coyotes, all kinds of jackals uh, are big at going and getting into graves. Um, uh, but um, as far as the the stuff that you guys have gotten involved with, the stuff that deals with um, uh, 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 non-human life on planet Earth, um, you're not you're not feeling like there's a there's a connection to dogs that you can think of. There's just nothing, just absolutely not ringing a bell at all. Um, certainly, there's there's a connection to dogs and healing, 
because like in in folklore people say if a dog licks your wound it heals quicker because dogs lick their own wounds of course that's bullshit because you know dogs carry both do dogs saliva it will kill some bacteria but they also carry their own bacteria in their mouth so it's like you know it may not work out okay. so hot for you but there are plenty of old still wives tales about having a dog lick your wound and it'll heal you know so that's what a, that's what that's what kind of what you'd pick up on a cult you know those sort of things okay and of so, course there was the uh, of course there was the uh, dog soldier society <laughs> from the Sioux, but that's a whole other thing. That's a that was a uh, a warrior cult or a warrior society that was about showing no quarter to the uh, European invasion. We just weren't going to make any treaties anymore. Um, but that's all up in the Montana. That's all up in the Dakotas and the Montana and stuff like that. Um, well, there, there I, guess. I think we got to go investigate. To that we were waiting for any other information that the i don't think so was there anything else that you wanted to get your hands on i can uh, i can deliver some of that to you better weaponry better weaponry uh, ben's medical record mm -hmm. do we have a timeline on like how long he spent in facilities or he facilities? was um he was uh in facilities for like a year um and no miraculous that was, healing was happening. Yeah, that, that, that when he was, um, uh, that is recovering from the injuries from the crash. Okay. Um, but he was just like that a normal, time. normal military hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know anything about the doctors that worked on him? Their names appear in the files. You Google them. You can Google them like anybody else. Uh, you'll see a bunch of smiling faces on the internet of people hanging out. Oh, nice squidly. So you see you've pulled up a, a nice fat squidly. Mm -hmm. Perfect for eating. Um, yeah, uh, they, um, they, they'll, you know, you'll see, you'll see plenty of, uh, uh, you, you Google these names, you do some work, you uh, fail to find any, um, uh, published papers with their names on it saying, you know, um, uh, the use of uh, the use of salamander tissue and the regeneration of human flesh. You know, there's, there's <laughs> no one, no one is, a, no one in his, in his medical history has attempted to cure the ills of man by injecting massive amounts of reptilian plasma into anyone. That's no one's crazy. published it. Yeah. No. <laughs> no one's they may have tried, but that was they, on the haven't, they haven't published it. <laughs> No, at no point has any of the doctors in the facilities been mysteriously asked to leave, you know, <laughs> in the dead of night, you know. All right. Well, at this point, do we do we snoop or do we go call him and announce ourselves? Do you want to do Scooby? We could go Scooby? visit him at home because I want to get a good look at his bookshelves. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I think we definitely should scout the area and, yes. and do a little snooping. We have... We have listening devices. We might have drones. We might have other things. Uh, mm -hmm. I assume mm -hmm. that we can do observation first, and then that way we can roll in with confidence about with what the layout structure is when we want to burn the place down with him in it. Okay. Um, uh, one thing uh, we'll throw out because it's super not obvious. Oh well, just to throw this out at you guys. Um, there's no way to sneak up there. But. No, well, I mean, you can sneak up there. If it's dark out, <laughs> you can sneak up good because it's country dark. I mean, it is, you know, with the line blacker than a steer's took us on a moonless night. Yeah, you go up there at a night the where there's stars no... at night shine big and bright. <laughs> yeah, well, not that big and bright. It is. It is dark out there. You can tell where the sky starts because it's full of stars, but the rest of it is just like you know, Thank black God. mat. Um, you could get very close to a building and not be seen if you're if there's no light. It, it's shocking how dark country dark is for those of us who live in cities. It always blows my mind. And right, I'm calling the airstrike in. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, so getting close to the place is not necessarily that difficult, even though there's nothing like trees, bushes, plants, you know, uh, un you know, the terrain features that you could you could use to get particularly close. Um, the property, like I said, is is empty of animals except for this new white dog. Yeah, so 
It's just don't, pay, pay, pay no attention to the fact that white is the color of death in Asian mm. mythology. Yeah. That, I'm sure that's not connected at all. Do you name the dog Ghost? <laughs> um, uh, so the so that's not that's not necessarily an issue. Um, I will say that when it comes to getting up to the place uh, and doing the next part, you got two basic approaches. You got clandestine and you got covert. Clandestine is where you guys want to sneak up and not be seen and not be detected and be like, I don't know, wearing your black balaclavas and the black, you know, uh, grease paint on your faces and sneak in and sneak out. That's your that's your clandestine. Covert is where you show up and you're like, hi, have you heard about the good news of Jesus? And you're there with a bunch of Bibles or whatever, or whatever your cover is. So you approach openly. He's a, he's this, Delta, he's a former Delta Green operative. He's, Navy he's a former are, Navy SEAL. And a yeah. former Navy SEAL. Now, he's probably, if he's smart, would have had countermeasures on his property, too. So we got to be very careful. But um, I would I would assume but I'm paranoid, so don't, don't listen to me. Of course, Manuel's been all over the property, and he hasn't set off any trip mines and wires, so if there's countermeasures, it's not the explodey kill you kind. Right, I, I was having that thought, that I was like, Manuel's like talking about going all over the place and hasn't been like, oh, yeah. I just, you know, buried mines in places, or, you know, like, he would, you know, like, yeah. he told me not to ever go into that corner, you yeah. know, like, none of Where, that. Where's the minefield? The place with the tall grass. That's the minefield. Right. No one runs the mower <laughs> over that section. It's other um so there's and then there's the third option which is just over just go in and say we're from delta green you got you got sort of three options which ones do you want to pursue pick the bad week to stop drinking all right the uh cover i like the cover story idea mm -hmm. I, I, I go to church so, visible uh, in the cover story cover off the, is a known entity to ben. just just stopping by to say hello after this incident, when you're both used to work for Delta Green, probably won't go very far in the whole, how will that cover story hold up? I will throw out two options that have come to my mind when I was figuring this. One is the news hasn't shown up yet. It could be the news. Yes. Second of all, um, if you want to be, you want to create a really hostile situation, you could show up as being from the VA and say, if you're so crippled and getting 100% disability, how come you drove that truck? We're here to investigate. That's the kind of, that, that that would be the horrible kind of Snoopy government thing he might actually expect to be having to deal with. But it, it, again, I say it might also drop you into an immediately adversarial situation. You know what I mean? But hope, yeah, but not one where he's likely to immediately point, pull guns out. Hopefully. No, no, he you just know, will, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but those but are the two that those are two that came to my mind. It's number one, the news or what passes for the news these days, which sometimes is people, you know, trying to get you on their TikTok. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> all of you are too old to pass as TikTokers. Right. Everybody here is in their late 30s, early 40s. So uh, TikToking will not be a thing that you can possibly get away with. You had some, if you had some tweens or something or some, <laughs> some 20 year olds, maybe you could get away with it. But um but I'm yes but, but still you know uh there's so much dispersed and in, in small scale news and journalism showing up from a website uh that you know uh, we have a podcast we are buzzfeed okay yeah exactly <laughs> you just give uh, andrew 20 minutes to put together a a, a, a website with his computer science <laughs> skill and then they can go right to it. You just crew a bunch of stories from other places and attach some links and go, look, we're an animal rights group. We want to hear about you defending your doggy, you know, whatever. But so press is one government, nosy government bureaucrat might be another uh, as far as the cover story goes. If you've got, a, if you've got some more, I'd love to hear them because I'm going to write them into the scenario. And come over them. <laughs> um... Either way, what do we do with camera off? Well, either we're doing the approach and, and you know, Agent Moultrie and Agent Marlowe is going to go up there with this cock and bull story about the podcast stuff and, and try to and try to get some eyes on the property and inside. Um, or we or we do a direct approach and say, look, we're from Delta Green. You know that, you know, and then we use hopefully build have some trust 
<laughs> with Car uh, you know Karmaloff having formerly worked and been in seal with him and get some cred that way. I, it's either way. The third option is is the stealthy, like you know, we're gonna go wearing our mask and, <laughs> and observe and see what we see because I'm telling you, those dogs aren't natural. Those dogs ain't right. at, the, at the at the moment <laughs> we have we have we have nothing antagonistic between us and him that we know of. <laughs> uh, that we know of, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm inclined to knock on the door as concerned old army buddy or, you know, seal that, that, you know, people, people noticed what you did, you know, hmm. help me help you, mm -hmm. you know, okay. uh, that, I mean, that's kind of my inclination. You can certainly, you can certainly mic him up yeah. with, you know, uh, he, no, he, yeah, but then he'll know. So let me, let me just, I'm going to be very blunt. Or maybe I can pull my uh, my, my. You've been holding oh, back until oh. now. I've been telling you, you've been, you've been holding back Clearly. until now. All right, yeah. let's. It was the itself. end of the subtlety. He's gloves not off, in. gloves off, Andrew. Let's have it. But look, we don't know who this. You know, he's not from the M cell. You know, we're from the M cell. He's an outsider. I'm just saying, I, I don't think he should go by himself. I don't know what you know, you know what the situation is. That's all I'm saying. Are, are are you wow okay no offense right did you put no offense on the end of that no statement offense. no i'm not feeling the love here <laughs> not either i'm really <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh okay andrew well that's i think I, that cemented but, the team together like a I, finely oiled machine that's good good shit there us and them I, we've got an unnatural event here i'm just saying you know it's imper paramount that we pr we protect uh, us and people from the, from this act. I can't treat this but anything but a potential hostile situation. And to go in 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 uh, into the situation in any other way is foolish. Just based on my experience, I'm just saying. Well, I got a question for you next. Um, you do have some surveillance capacity. Do you want to try and observe the place from a distance? Listen in. You do have listening options. Um, everything from an actual bug in the house to, um, you know, monitoring his um, his uh, online traffic, uh, his phone line. Um, you can, you know, there there is a there is a landline in this place. You can tap into that anywhere along the line. Um, not to mention. Uh, Besides visual observations, there's also the use of what I, there's there's a use of um, laser and shotgun microphones to listen from a distance. They're kind of shocking how well they they work. Yep. The yeah, lasers yeah. are particularly good. You just bounce a laser some uh, laser off of a uh, window, and the vibrations that are hitting the glass, you know, you'll be able to hear those sounds. Mm -mm. I mean, I threw this out because I don't it's know. Like we can it... listen at everything, but if he lives alone, unless he calls somebody. Talking to the dog just... or the dog's talking to him. That's true. That's true. In his mind. You're, you're waiting for that son of Sam. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we can either be just, you know, for both game's sake and other things, do we just want to do a direct approach? But then I would say Kamarov should be with someone else when we do that. And we have two agents that are back up you know nearby okay. i mean that's what i would suggest otherwise we take the slow route a slightly slower route and we uh, we do some um intel and do some observation and get I think some i would i vote for camera off to try a buddy thing but maybe bring a friend i don't know Did okay you Mara, you're the friend me <laughs> very yes. dangerous you go yeah. first <laughs> <laughs> one of us must enter this dangerous place which one of you will do it i'm not let, i said i'm alone but i don't think you're gonna let him go alone so somebody's got to go with him and and right. i'm probably i'm probably too uh edgy violenty to... <laughs> i don't believe i i don't believe i put your sand rating that low but this is just you <laughs> let's 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 well, get this straight that the, i want to point out the handler did not hand him a oh, hand I, grenade I, 
I didn't hand you a hand grenade with a pin pulled, all right? This is just you. You are you are a hand grenade with a pin pulled. Just got to grip it tight in case anything goes wrong. Oh, well, I just thought I had all these wild. incidents of violence, and so I'm just, I'm playing that up a bit. Well, that's true. Um, you have got a couple, and, and by the way, how that works in the game is, just to let you know, there's a thing in the game called um, uh, uh, Hardened Against Violence and Hardened Against uh Help, helplessness, which are two types of sand loss in the game. You never get hardened against encounters with the unnatural, the Cthulhu mythos, or if you read the evil tome and you see the creature from another dimension, you never get hardened against that. But the, but the things that happen on Earth, uh, you can become, if you choose to be, you can become hardened against them. And what that allows you to do is you always make your sand ball against those kinds of sanity losses. So you always make take the minimum amount of hit the problem is in order to get hardened you have to take a hit to your stats mm -hmm. uh in this game we use charisma as opposed to appearance um charisma is about your ability to interact with people it's why your character's bonds are rated at what they are um uh, and the thing is is that when you become hardened against violence the committing of violence um you kind of become a bit of a dead-eyed fuck and your charisma goes down. You're a little less cheerful and bouncy and fun to be around and compelling. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, you know it 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 lowers your it permanently lowers your charisma score. To be uh, helplessness uh, for someone who was incarcerated or subjected to torture or was uh, forced to undergo uh, uh, loss of friends or family that they couldn't do anything about. Uh, helplessness when you're hardened against that it sort of low it lowers your power your mm -hmm. characters you know uh access to willpower points and things like that go down um it makes you slightly more passive but it's only because you've learned the kind of patience it takes to get through situations that you can't actually affect at the moment um, this is uh not a charismatic group no, no. It's no. not. <laughs> I, I think I have the highest charisma, and that's not yeah, saying and, and, much. <laughs> like Kamarov, that's why I don't believe the old army buddy story because he's probably the most hardened of us all. He says, oh. "Looking at the character sheet, you dirty dog." I, I'm just looking at his cold, dead eyes. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, that that's a that's a plus when you're an ex seal. Yeah, that's just that's just the yeah that's, that's how you that shows you're really in the club. Put your cards right on the table. Who am I? You know, uh, look into my eye. I, By the way, just a side note, my cousin Terry Moy was in Navy class SEAL 1, and he was the trainer for the Navy SEALs for many decades. He was called Mother Moy because he was Irish. That was the Irish side of the family. Uh, because he, uh, yeah, everyone, were, they were afraid of him at the time when they trained. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> Mother Moy? Yep. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like a one step. Or what is Mother Boy? Is it like the Irish version of Baba Yaga? <laughs> I, I I couldn't say. All right. What about um, Agent Moultrie coming in with her medical background as a secondary? Would that yeah. make sense? Like you maybe send her as in a second because she's got medical, and you can be like, "Hey, we're worried about you. Want to check up on you? Make sure you're doing mm -hmm. okay." Yeah, I hadn't thought the of that. The VA I'm here to make sure that you don't need. Anything. Th there is a possibility. Check you out. That is a uh, that's an interesting possibility. The idea of somebody showing up for the VA also might, um, of course, considering how uh, responsive the VA is, having you parachute in out of the blue four days after he had this incident might okay. set off every single alarm in his head. But you know, like on, the, say, other you know, hand, hey, on the other hand, on the other hand, you <laughs> having medical skill in there, looking around that place. Maybe there are things that your skill as a doctor will be able to tell people that a regular observer would not. This place is supposed to be the home of a, you know what? A, a, somebody's going to have to educate me here. He's more than a paraplegic and less than a quadriplegic. So what's... Three quarter plegic. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got is is three quarters, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, triplegic, triplegic, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to how the Latin works on that. Can but, we come up with a legit scenario where we send Adrian Moultrie and Kamarov uh, in together? If it's uh, again, it could just be hi, we're from Delta Green. <laughs> you know what I, happened? He's going on. He's not going to be 
surprised that you know if we do the direct approach the fact he, i mean i could say i'm only here as an ex navy seal but he's probably going to know that I, other people yeah. are watching me other people are in the bushes coming mm -hmm. forward about it and saying here's another agent and you know uh, they wouldn't let me come alone and but i'm here to talk to you about you know what went down well you know uh, the I, yeah not lying uh will cut down on the amount of distrust i mean he's still going to be nervous sure yeah no, but, I especially that. if he's done something wrong but um yeah. at, at least you know at least if you start off not lying you're going to score some points that's what i'm thinking but I, I think that's the best approach i was going to ask milton you're paranoid what's the what's the way to get uh approach if you someone had to come at you head on what would be the best way to not get shot well, <laughs> well, yeah, walk up with, uh, you know, uh, clearly uh, being direct. I mean, obviously, there's there's multiple teams involved and, and whatnot, but but doing the old army buddy thing isn't going to work. I, I don't think that's that's a, a serious route. You don't think you'll so, be fooled by that. He's not going to be fooled by that. So, like, I think going direct and having uh, two go in and they're clearly mic so that he knows that, he's, that we have other teams, that they're not alone. And uh, that we can call an airstrike in at any time, but oh, on U.S. soil, maybe. Okay, um, I think I think is it will cut down the 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 time to just get to the. I'm, the I'm down. I'm, I uh, I'm down with that. So, so Milton and I in the background, yeah. all incognito, waiting yep. to go yep. in guns a blazing and. Okay. Well, are we doing this in the right. day or night? Because I'm not going to tell first. me. What? You tell me. I was I was talking to uh, Marlo. Uh, oh, and, and you guys. Uh, uh, what do we want to do? I mean, yeah, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for us to hide when. I'm stepping away for a second to hit the bathroom. Anyone want to take a bathroom break? I think, I think we, we, we lost Sean come. for that. But I'll, <laughs> I'll, be right back. I'll be right back. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go um, refill my water. All right. Like in this lovely. Um... Oh, ooh, it's a disappearing ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. metaphysic backgrounds. At this. Ooh, 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 ooh. I just disappear if I try to put the background on. Yeah. See, I've got my my poster behind me. All right, Sean. So, uh, you and Mulch. Oh, Sean can't hear us yet. There we go. Wait for it. There we go. <laughs> Had to pee rather uh, desperately. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, we're taking a bio break right now anyway. So, oh, are we? No, I yeah. didn't even know. You, you instigated. You, you instigated. Oh, there you go. I, I'm, an, I'm a born leader. Uh, so Kamaroff and Moultrie, you're going to go in uh, direct, and uh, Marlo and I are going to be uh, back up. Okay. And uh, you'll be, you know, we'll have our mics on, and you're just going to be direct and just say, hey, yeah. Jane, tell us what's going on. Yep. And then, uh, so the question Andrew had is, are we going in at night or uh, during the day? Or dusk? Well. Are we doing a half and half? You guys are, you know, there, but we're in our black ball of clubs, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably or, safer know. to go in at daylight so if, we're, if we're being overt about it anyway. We don't sort of need the cover of darkness. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, it's probably safer. And it, he'll probably feel safer if he get in daylight. Yeah, it would feel less like an ambush. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do that. So where are you and I going to be, Milton and Marlo? Uh, we, we can just be on the road and uh, within sight behind yeah. the car. Yeah. With a rifle and uh, rifles ready if necessary. Yeah, and a um, quick departure if necessary. And, and a quick yeah. departure if necessary. But um, but we'll keep our hands on the uh, on the roof so they can they can see us, or he can see us. They, they, you know, I didn't imply that there's any other supernatural things out there, but there probably is. <laughs> Just a nice dog. Just a nice dog. Yep. So, yeah, I you know you know yeah, that's it. It's good enough. Okay. Although it would have been interesting to, to observe to see if we could have found anything, but time is running out. I guess we need to wrap it up. Need to move. We need to move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moultrie, you're going in live with um, Kamarov, right? 
well, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can bring your medical doctor's bag. I could bring my medical bag. And, and we could have TNT in it, you know, or plastic explosives. Of dead there you, go. So you could have a dead man's, you know, release. So if you drop it, you know, it explodes. So, you know, you'd have that going for you. I don't know why you think something so terrible is going to happen. <laughs> well, I, I've been it's playing with Scott for 25 years at least, and um, I think I haven't survived a scenario. <laughs> well, well, see, then there's nothing to worry Scott, about. Scott, in the last 25 years or so, so the last 25 years we've been doing this kind of stuff. Have I survived? I remember like dying from, you know, you know, you know, shards of glass and then dying from explosions and dying. Dude, did I ever, did I ever survive? Um, I don't know. Uh, did you survive the, uh, did you have the one where you were in the Italian Alps during World War One? Yes. I don't know. No, I don't think we survived that one either. <laughs> I might have survived the the one with the airplanes with the I th did we survive that one? Um, there yes, there was the one with the, the night mission where you're yeah. being attacked yeah, yeah. by the uh, uh, by, by the Yaki Yaki mm -hmm. fly me away fly me yeah away. yeah uh, uh, over the Alps yes I think I think you may I don't know um, I I think you got chewed up by the father of war with the obsidian the, the giant oh, blizzard no, definitely did not make it it was very much like uh <laughs> the blizzard the of of, uh, dirty, dirty dozen we made it we made it okay <laughs> remember that remember one of the guys fumbled with a dynamite trying to throw it and it fell into the oh truck? that's right that was in uh san pedro uh was it in san pedro? i can't remember where it was the the, oh, the, the, the best the, the best run of that scenario was in san pedro where okay. somebody so no, the fumble the fumble was here with like Douglas Wilson or someone like okay. that. Okay. Okay. I can't remember now. It's been too long. But that's why, you know. You've Charles. died a lot. And and I don't know who you're supposed to blame for that. Uh, These are your choices. You, you well, know. not really. Like some of these, like you, you know, we're we're you know, 18 year old, you know, I kind of folks that are are rate like we did we didn't have a chance, Scott. Come on. <laughs> Well, granted, but in that one, you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be like one of those EC comic Vault of Horror stories where you play terrible people and then terrible things happen to you, so no one has to feel that bad. You ever <laughs> notice that whenever they do that in EC, it's always like some Nazi or some gangster or some murderer, you know, and he shows up and then the supernatural thing eats their face off? Well, you know. Yeah, I know. It was very, very the same thing here. Nice little morality play. Yep. Don't don't break artifacts or you'll release demons, kids. They survived the tunnels in World War One. By, by sealing one of our, our, our teammates behind. Ah, him. yeah, everyone pay attention to that part. Andrew survived by sealing everybody else in with the monster and beating Not everyone, <laughs> just one, one person, just one person. Sure. All right. So, All right. any any thoughts about how you're going to pull this off? Or what would you like to do next? Uh, surveillance, direct approach. What do you want to do? Direct approach. Yeah, right. we're going. We're going direct approach. Uh, we're going to go to the front door. We're going to leave two agents in a car by or by, at the car mm -hmm. uh, at the road for either long, long uh, distance firearm support or speedy departure. Mm -hmm. to get Possibly away. both. Possibly both. And uh, we're going to go knock on the door. All right, who's doing the knocking? Who's doing the listening? Knocking. Knocking. All knocking. right. Well, All right. Uh, what time of day do you want to approach uh, the Griffith Ranch? Griffith Ranch. Griffith? Morning. Morning. I think full daylight is good. Yeah. Yeah, full, day, one full daylight. I don't know. Like, you know, maybe they're not a morning person. You know, one o'clock. Okay. All right. Welcome to the Griffin okay. Ranch. It is now uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Any uh, any uh, self respecting seals should have been up for four hours by now. Basically. <laughs> This is, is the mid, this is mid morning. They've already done all their chores, you know. Uh, set, uh, made their cot, scrambled their eggs, whatever. All right. Necronomicon. Then uh, let me go ahead and uh, for those of you who are walking up, pick a number, odd or even. Uh, odd. Odd. Okay. All right. Uh, you get there. Um, in your uh, relatively bulletproof. Oh boy, I roll a dice, and the first thing that happens is these guys show up. Yeah, looking uh, around. For, oh, I heard, I heard something rattle. I heard something skitter across. 
I, I recently posted a thing about having found dice that my cats had lost for three like years. You know, they oh, knocked yeah. a bag of dice down the stairs and scattered them all across the house. And I only just just a couple of days ago found the missing dice. It's quite the dopamine hit. So uh, you get there in your relatively bulletproof vehicle. The two of you um, are sitting there. I guess uh, you know Marlo is in the driver's seat and Milton yeah. is in the shotgun seat. Well, we're I'm gonna we're gonna get out of the car with our hands on the roof, uh, roof and looking at the door so that they can see that we have our hands up, but we're on the roof. All right. And All right. Uh, so body, body armor, armor on. on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I would like to know what, uh, if you were going to wear the body armor, that's going on over your clothes, right? Oh, yeah. You I mean, can't really wear, vest. that stuff's bulky enough, it goes over the top of your clothes. So you guys got bulletproof vests and body armor, and in this, I understand that you actually can layer that stuff if you don't mind sweating to death. Um, the question is, which ones do you want to wear? And uh, if you want to do that, you know, again, uh, it's it certainly looks less aggressive. Yes, to wear the bulletproof vest under your clothes than it does to wear the just, body armor on top. But just the just the under body yeah, armor. Yeah, Kevlar. Yeah. Okay. Try not to be intimidating. All right. Um, I guess. <laughs> on your way, let's see here. When you get there. Neither, um, uh, neither uh, uh, Ben Griffin or his dog are. Uh, visible in the in the front yard. Um, in fact, that's a good question. Um, Sean, give me a uh, give me a die roll if you would be so kind, and just tell me what. Just you... a percentile. Yes, I will sneak okay. this in this information in, depending on how you make the die roll. Both van, both truck and van are there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry, one second. I have to sure. generate it through a Pearson dice here. It is a 60. Okay, that is less than your military science skill. Mm. Um, Kearney. Kept, uh, the dog's name was Kearney. Um, Kearney is the name of a one-armed general in the Union Army. Who fought mm. the Mexican American War as well? Okay, but um, just thought I'd throw that out at you in case uh, it was of any interest in to, you, in, to you whatsoever. Well, it it is interesting, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to change our underlying plan. Um, you get up to that. Uh, you should come up to that door, crossing in the front yard of this place, uh, and it's about you know from the front door to the road is a. Oof, probably about 50 yards okay um uh and the house is actually um it doesn't have the front door actually doesn't uh there is a door that faces the road okay. um there's also on if you're looking at the house straight on on the left hand side there is another door both of them have ramps uh built out in front of them as you're coming up, uh, the, let's see here, the door that is facing the street uh, is not the one that opens, it's the one on the side of the house. And by side, it's actually the narrowest part of the house. As the house is set up, it is longer this way, side to side, and not as deep. Right. So on this end, the door opens, and um, this big white dog uh, with short, short hair comes uh, down the front steps or down the front ramp, followed by uh, uh, Mr. Griffin in his uh, wheelchair. Um, you guys are, you know, probably 20 yards from the front door um, uh, when that door opens. Um, you got some options. Do you want to... Dive for cover. Do you want to just uh, keep walking forward? Do you want to stop him? Wait for how he arranges I'd himself. Like to stop and uh, verbally greet him. 
Ben Ben Griffin. Uh, my name is Kamarov. That's not would, the name. Would, he, name. would it, that be a, enough that he'd know me by name, or would I need to introduce the um, contact? He, if you, you worked with him, he would have known you. Well, the thing is, yes, he would have known you by both names. He would have known you by the Delta Green code name, which is Cam. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, by announcing that your name is Kamaroff, that's yeah. just pretty much telling them yeah. you're here on business. Yeah. You know, so that is certain. That certainly makes no bones about what's going on here. Yep. Um, uh, he wheels down to the bottom of this. He's wheeling down bottom there you go and this is um you know not a weird clunky you know car battery put together by the local science fair you know mobility device this is he's got a pretty state-of-the-art you know chair right um it's uh you know he's belted into it um, okay because if you stop one of those mobility devices when somebody's on it without a belt it's very bad yeah um uh it's um, uh, got some, uh, uh, it's designed to be able to go outside for limited distances on rough okay. terrain. Um, it's got some, so it's got some pretty decent sized wheels. Um, the, uh, the ramp is covered with this uh, sort of, you know, material that, that does uh, this plastic material is supposed to knock all the dirt off the wheels when he goes in and out yeah. since, you know, brushing your feet is not a thing that you can do with a wheelchair right is the, but, uh, the um, do dog being aggressive or is the dog no 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 it, 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 it comes out and it, it, it comes to the bottom of the uh ramp and okay. kind of waits for him to get to the bottom and then turn and he's like and he's coming down the ramp he's chuckling a little bit and he's it's, uh, you know that's uh it's just, so he basically so you're here on business I take it. Yeah. You know, there was a chase the other day, uh, drew a little attention, and uh, they can't just leave that alone. So here we are, seeing what's up. I see. Um, Sorry, but, you know. Well, what can I tell you? Um, I had a bad day. Sounds like it. Poor old Kearney. Sorry to hear about that. Well, that's all right. He's a good boy, you know, but um, looks down at this. Who's this boy. one? That's DeWalt. DeWalt? DeWalt? Like the, like the screw gun? Like the what? Like the screw gun? DeWalt? No. Or just Walt? Uh, it's DeWalt. Okay, go ahead and give me another roll under uh, military science. <laughs> okay. Another dead general. <laughs> 67. All right. Sounds familiar. Um, he says something to the effect. He says, um, no, not like the screwdriver. Like the, uh, like the Brit, like the uh, Belgian. Uh, let's see here. DeWalt is the last name of a uh, an officer uh, mm. who served in the First and Second World Wars um, who he, this is back in the age where you could just bits could get knocked off of you and you could keep serving. Right. DeWalt had lost an eye and most of an arm in World War One, came back, served in World War Two, served in both the Belgian and the British armies at various times, um, you know, was captured by the Germans, escaped German prison with one arm and, you know, bits of his foot missing and just, you know, but just banana shit. He's one of these guys who's got like huge chunks of himself shot off and, you know, his response to, to two world wars was it was the only time in my life I ever felt alive. Um, he's, he's, he's quite a mad bastard, but, um, yeah, 20th century as opposed to 19th, but again, named after a military officer who was, uh, maimed and, uh, did not leave service. Staying a trend here. Is this a, a the Texas 
state person that we're talking about from Texas? Mm -hmm. The DeWalt from Texas? No, no. I'll um, I'll uh, it, it's uh, I'll pull up the actual. Let me see here. Pull up the spelling properly because it's uh, it's not spelled like DeWalt to the uh, screwdriver company. It's W I A R T. It's uh, D E W I A R T. DeWalt. Mm. This dog, um definitely has some uh pit bull in it because it's mm. got one of those big broad heads that uh, pit bulls uh, often have um but uh it's um like i said short-haired uh a little bit of a raised, a little, the hair is a little longer down its back than it is under the parts of its body. Can be like a ridge on the back of the dog. Um, he says, um, Duarte's the Duarte is uh, is settling in just fine. I'm sure she's gonna be a she's gonna be a good girl. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, we're gonna have to. Tell him something, you know. Oh, you are. Well, you got anything for me? <clears throat> well, I could tell you um, that um, a seal's never out of the fight. You know, no, that. sir. I know that. Um, but I suppose you're not um, inclined to believe that. I could be that much in the fight. Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. Uh, which fight we're in and how deep we're in it. It's the same fight. Okay. It's the same fight. I mean, not those guys. Yeah, the other guys. Not not those not those punks. That was just me. I just uh, lost my temper. I just... Mm -hmm. um, I was just surprised. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Didn't really have time to think about it. <clears throat> but um I'm still in the fight. And I'm still That's in good. the same fight. I'm still in the same fight that you're in camera off. Who's your who's your buddy? Who's ah. your yeah, your friend? Well, you know, they can't send me here alone, so uh and I introduce uh, Agent Moultrie. Mm. Well, Agent Moultrie, um, I suppose I should be polite and ask you guys if you want to come in and get some out of the sun and get some tea or something. That'd be nice. Actually, I, I, uh, if it's not too much trouble, I, I could really use to use your restroom. Mm, I bet you could. <laughs> All right, let's go on in. And he turns the chair around. He's looking out past you guys at the car on the, you know, yeah, on the street or on the side of the road. He turns this uh, chair around. He toodles back up his steps, and the dog falls in right behind him. I mean, the dog falls in like, like it's doing a close order drill. I mean, just right up the back, right up the, the ramp. Um, the inside of the house, uh, I suppose I could throw it at you in the um, folder, in the chat over here, or would you prefer it in the uh, oh, chat's fun. Let me just uh, throw this little JPEG at you. Uh, in... And And Marlo, we might want to move into a closer position so we're not too far away from the house. It will definitely take you a few minutes to get in there if the thing goes absolutely in the shitter. How close are the cars to that ramp you mentioned? So what I'm looking at here, what I'm showing you here is you're going to be in the area of the house that is on the far left, which is basically a living room area and kitchen area and 
a, a dining area. The um, there are no chairs in here, obviously. Um, but uh, and the kitchen has had some modifications to it. The door that I said was facing the street is the one at the bottom of the image. Uh, the door that he came down is the one to the left side of the image. To the north end is a fireplace. Um, and uh, there is a, you know, a half counter there in the kitchen, the kitchen being, uh, you know, right there. The bathroom that you were asking about, uh, he says, uh, basically, second door on your right. And uh, with his left hand gestures down, you know, to the uh, down the hallway. There's a sink actually at the end of the hallway, um, and then a bathroom uh, to the uh, bottom of the picture. The other rooms doors are closed. The uh, uh, the uh, doors uh, have uh, the, the the door knobs are set a little lower than because he's got to be able to open them from a sitting position. So they are a little bit lower. Yeah, uh, looking around, does anything look uh, any pictures well, on the wall? Uh, unexpected for you know what we might uh, not particularly. Seeing. Um, okay. go ahead and give me a um, an awareness. Both do both you guys do awareness checks uh, as you're sort of stepping into the middle of this yeah. this open area. And tell me how you oh, do doing. Yeah. I failed uh, failed miserably. I okay. also failed miserably. All right. Then um, let me just say that it's the, right outside, it's so dark inside, I can't see anything. Um, let me just say that um, the uh, the living room has a large uh, plasma TV. Uh, it's on the wall next to what is marked as bedroom two. So if you go to the north and north end of the picture and then go to the to the right hand side, that's where the TV yeah. set is. Um, it. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it it's um, hooked into a satellite reception on the uh, on the roof. Um, there is uh, there are pictures uh, on the walls. Um, there are uh, there are pictures on the mantle um, uh, over the fireplace. Pictures of uh, him with various people he's worked with in his career uh, groups. Sometimes there's there, there's obviously pictures of members of SEAL Team Five, uh, at different, <laughs> different times. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just they're just uh, terrorists. terrorists. I was gonna say terrorists because. All right. So, anyways, um, you know, he's got he's got some of those uh, pictures from Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, possibly less less uh, describable places than that. No pictures of Relia or uh, the Madness of Madness, so you're you're off the hook for that. But um, the uh, the there are some folding chairs that are basically uh, uh, around that that dining table. Uh, there there are some folding chairs that are put up on the wall, sort of on hooks or whatever. You know that could be gotten down, but there are no, there are no chairs in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like I said, there's that there's that cooking area. Um, uh, when are you gonna? Uh, are you going to afford yourself the bathroom or not? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay. Rifle around his medicine cabinet. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, cool. Before, before uh, she goes to the bathroom, uh, we we have you know so Agent um, Marlowe and, and I we have. Uh, obviously, audio um, capabilities, but there's no, we don't have any visual. Uh, mm -hmm. Correct. Kind of visual. That's correct. Okay. And then, and I don't know if you heard us, we were going to, uh, the cars are, are they like in a kind of driveway in, near the doors? I don't, I don't know where they're situated. There's a, there's a, a, a kind of, now that you've gotten out here, there's another detail that is disconcerting. The disconcerting detail is that. As I said, there's a uh, there's a, uh, a, a short uh, barbed wire fence around the property that's designed to keep animals from you know wandering over the property. But there's also a gate 
it's not much of a gate. It's uh, just a, like a basically a a swinging arm that uh, goes uh, up and down with counterweight on the end to up and down and, and latch. Um, your car is on the outside of that gate unless you choose to lift it and drive the car in. I am presuming you are parked on the side of the road. We're, we're, um, we're parked on the side of the road. Um, it does raise the question how he got the truck out of the yard uh, after having climbed into it and then gotten past the gate. Yeah. So you have all these folding chairs and he can't use them. So it's kind of interesting. Clearly, maybe other people are about. And it is a possibility. Now, um, uh, let's go back to um, Agent Kamaroff for a moment because you are going to be burning some time with him. Yep. Uh, while Gwen is out of the room. Um, please, uh, what he, you know, he, he basically goes and parks himself with sort of his back to the fireplace um, okay. and, uh, turns himself around and the dog sort of pads over and plops down next to him, uh, sitting up on its haunches. Um, and he's like, um. So, um, I take it that uh, I've uh, I've made them nervous. Well, I mean, I don't know what to say. Um, I'm not incapable of doing the job. Yeah, sure. You know how it goes, though. Uh, there's a prohibition on souvenirs. No. I understand how that works. I, mean, I never took a souvenir. I can I can tell you that I never took a souvenir home with me <laughs> of any of the work that I did. Said, and oh, if oh, you would be so kind there um, to roll against your skill in human, huh? um, I would be curious as what the result is, whether you succeed or not. It's not looking great. Uh, my human is... No, I did not. Oh, and it's a 77, so that's a critical. All right. Um, you're pretty sure he's lying. Okay. Um, uh, he's said, uh, yeah, I, I never took anything home like that. Um, well, that's great. I, I'll just have to uh, reassure them with how you uh, pulled off the, uh, the great chase. <clears throat> he says, um, He says, uh, you know, <clears throat> the uh, higher ups, they have a tendency to um, react like, <laughs> like, like monkeys the first time they see an open flame when anything new comes along. I mean, not everything frightening is necessarily hostile. Dangerous, right. maybe. Not hostile, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Some things are tools. Yeah. I just... And, and one of the things that is always sort of troubles in our work is how alone we are. Sure. This, uh, this <clears throat> wide carnivorous sky that we live under, this hungry universe doesn't seem to have any place for us um, you know, as anything other than somebody else's speed bump or somebody else's appetizer. Hostile, you know, inimical. It's always the phrase I remember guys saying. 
but it's not necessarily that lonely out there. There are options. Gwen, would you mind rolling a search roll uh, while you're in the bathroom? I believe you said you were going to do some some searching, so I believe the skill is literally search. If not mistaken. Yes, search. Yeah or nay? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I was trying to not like crunch the thing while you guys were talking. Um, I my search skills of forty six, and I rolled a four. Oh, well, gee, you, you, I'll tell you that you, you, it's not so much a question of that you found it, which is kind of a question of how quickly you found it. There's okay. a, <laughs> there's a thirty eight caliber revolver in tied two inside two Ziploc baggies in the toilet tank of this bathroom. Um, you do as you do but yeah of course the the maniac yeah, is like, well of course there is why would if he didn't have a handgun on the toilet i'd be worried <laughs> <laughs> you know that'd be crazy then i'd be like oh so clearly they got to it you know um apart from that there's apart from that minor detail there's, there's <laughs> nothing uh particularly uh, out of line in this bathroom um what i will note is this is a guest bathroom um, it doesn't appear to have anything in it like uh, 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 his shaving and grooming stuff. It is it is it is set up for uh, others to use. The medicine cabinet is is empty. Okay. Um, there's just you know some hand cloths and you know for their, and then some soap, that sort of thing. Uh, there's nothing in, the, in here as personal as a toothbrush, for instance. So is he um so where he's sitting in the living room he can't see the can he see down the hall or no? Um, where he's sitting in the living room, uh, he is looking uh, from the he's sort of at the back of the house. Uh, if you're looking at the picture, he is right up against the fireplace. He cannot see down the hallway, okay. but he can see uh, sort of out those front out out the windows by the door on the other side of the uh, dining room table and you know the kitchen area. You can see out that direction, which is basically the direction of where the car is okay um i would like to try to stealthily take a look in each of the other rooms <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get a stealth because there's away. one dude he rebuilt this house and he still chose to have two bedrooms and four bathrooms or mm -hmm. four bed four bedrooms and two bathrooms we'll have to see what's in those rooms go ahead and make me a stealth roll please uh 21 all right i am not going to make you roll for every goddamn room <laughs> all right guys so, uh, because i just i hate that shit all right these other rooms um the one that's marked bedroom number one um this space has been converted into a kind of office um inside on the walls are and shelves are are, are plaques certificates medals ribbons the indicia of come with a life of service in the United States military. Um, there's a desk. Uh, it has been built to accommodate uh, the mobility chair. Um, there's no computer in here, uh, but there is an electric typewriter on the desk. Um, there is uh, a low, uh, like only two store, too tall, like a, a handicapped accessible filing cap. Um, in this room, do you? That's just looking into it. That's what you see. Do you want to search it or just look and then look in the next room? Look in the next room. Look in the next room. Um, I'd like to check out the filing cabinet. Okay. Or um, actually, first, is there anything on the typewriter? Or is it empty? Yeah, there's no uh, all work and no play makes Cthulhu a dull boy <laughs> in there. It's a, there's, there's nothing like that on it. There's okay. just it's just there's no paper in the typewriter. So yeah, um, let's snoop in the filing cabinet. That's another, that'll be another uh, uh, stealth roll because metal filing cabinets are annoying. <laughs> uh, I got an eight. Oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, ninja, please. All right. You um, quietly open the filing cabinet. <clears throat> what it looks like in here is um, 
th this just looks like a filing cabinet of, of bills, personal finance, um, you know, tax records, property records. It just it just looks like, you know, literal the things you don't want to lose, like the deed to your house and your tax records for the last seven years and um, things like that, your water bills and such, and, or excuse me, electricity bills, you don't pay for water. That's what's in here. Um, let's go ahead and move you on to the next one. And uh, while that's happening, um, Mr. Kamaroff, um, he says, uh, what do you get to say to this guy? Uh, do you prod him or do you just let him mumble at you? Uh, I want to, I want to keep pushing towards the, how, you know, we got some vague blathering on his part, but I really want to know, okay, how, how did the, what exactly went down, uh, for this chase scene? He says, um, it's, it looks just like it, 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 it looks like it was, I got in the truck I drove the truck are, yeah through through the through the gate it just seems like you I got doing out. a bunch of two-handed two-footed types of things during that sequence and that's what it's got everybody scratching their head well I got out and I opened the gate and then I drove the truck through it and caught up to them and got them off the road eventually um yeah, took, but that was I a... took the I took the truck because uh, you know that van's got no pickup whatsoever. I wasn't gonna catch it. Sure, it was a pretty pretty fair drive you boys went on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you driving along with the uh, driving a stick shift with your with your one hand, brandishing a gun with the one hand. You can see how this kind of isn't adding up when uh, and it's got people wondering whether. Uh, special tools might have helped make this feasible for you not a tool ah what uh what was it then a special understanding with uh your dog he looks at the ward and gives her a rub on the top of her head no it's, no it's not Anything more than a a guide. And <clears throat> frankly, she's just a replacement. Kearney did all the heavy lifting. Kearney's the one that saved my life. Kearney's the one that uh, took me down the 700 steps of deeper slumber. Kearney's the one that showed me the way back from the pit I was in, from the death spiral I was on discarded and left to die by everyone really yeah you the you guys the navy yeah even my family yeah and by me huh. me i'm the one who discarded myself i only gave up how, how did uh, how did kearney find you or did you find kearney i don't know Woke up. You showed up looking, one day? Dogs look in my face. House is on fire. You know? How about um, that? I was drunk as shit. Um, smoking and drinking. Yep. Set the uh, set the bed on fire. Um, and uh, wouldn't have made it out except that uh, you know that that dog pulled me off the bed by my one good arm, had me uh, you know, halfway down the hall before I sort of came to. Everything went up with that, the old chair, yeah. everything I had to crawl out to the, crawl out to the uh, front step to get away from it. That's but, amazing. Uh, that's the first time I saw that dog. Dog means meant everything to me. It, um, saved my life, saved my soul, showed me the face of God. Uh, yeah, I, uh, 
I'd be dead now if I was a fat animal. Yeah. So, um, uh, Kearney helped you somehow? Oh, when next room, which room would you like to look at? Um, let's just do the systematic search. Um, the okay. bedroom number four. All right, bedroom number four. This one is, let's see here. Um, this is a spare bedroom, it's got two twin beds in it. They're made both, you know, you know. Here's the thing. These twin bids are made, and yes, they have military quarters. <laughs> They're extremely squared away, two extremely squared away beds. Um, and um, there's, uh, there's one thing you notice about this room as you came into it. And that is that um, unlike the bathroom, where the lock on the door is on the inside, the lock to this room is on the outside. Hmm. Suspicious. Sus. That's pretty sus. <laughs> you want to try and search this room, or do you want to check the next one? Um, is there is there anything to search? Any other furniture? There's not much in here. Beds? It's just like uh, there's like a there's like so there's two made beds, and there's um, what looked like a couple of uh, side table dressers with you know a couple of drawers. Anything under the beds? Uh, you take a quick look. You don't see anything. Like no chest of drawers or anything. No, 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 uh, no trunk. You know, no footlocker. Um, yeah, and no decorations or anything like that. No. Uh, it is boring in here. Okay. Mind you, the fact that the door locks doesn't mean very much because it's still an interior door of this place. And if anyone wanted out of this room, they would get out in a hurry. I mean, it, this door wouldn't stand up to maybe one or two kicks before it came off its uh, its hinges. It is this lock maybe buys four, maybe buys five to ten seconds tops. Okay. So um, yeah, as a prison, as a prison, it's not much. Okay, it's more of a deterrent than a, mm -hmm. a protective measure. Um, yeah, let's move on to the bedroom number three. All right, this one actually looks like a uh, this one actually looks like a full bedroom. Um, I believe it is. Yes, that's the master bathroom, master bedroom and bathroom. All right. Um, it uh, there is a you know uh, a a low bed in here. Uh, for easy transfer to and from uh, the wheelchair. There is a charging station against the wall for the, 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 the wheelchair kind of like backs into the charging station and charges from there. There's, there's very little hookup involved. Um, let's see here. Uh, that's, that's the things that you see immediately. There's a, there's a door that leads off possibly into a the uh, master bathroom over there, but that, that's all you can see from the doorway. Now there's there's dressers and uh, and stuff in here in closets, you can see that on the map, but um, there's nothing that's showing up like, I don't know, there's not a, a, a wall full of machetes and hand grenades or anything like that in here. <laughs> it looks like a normal bedroom. Any bookshelves? Mm -hmm. uh, not in this room. Uh... I kind of want to see the bathroom. All right. Um, uh, you can quickly stick your head in there and take a look. And what you see is a uh, bathroom with a uh, that has been um, uh, modified uh, for uh, handicap use. There is a bar hanging from a chain. There is a bench in it so that he could lift himself over from the chair into the uh, into the shower area. There's a rain in the floor so that the whole bathroom can get wet and all the water will go down that rather than just be stuck in the um uh stuck in the you know overflow the bathtub and then fill the floor uh, it's designed to get water everywhere um but uh yeah that's that's what's in here uh there's a low sink that he can use um that's, that's what you see just just quickly looking in the room. Okay. Mm.
I want to check out his medicine cabinet. All right. Uh, you uh, find some minor things in here, like, um, you know, uh, there's no SSRIs that you see. There's no, um, uh, uh, you know, no blood thinners, no, you know, other medications that you're seeing. What's in here is things like toothpaste, um, tooth floss, um, toothbrush, uh, you know, combs, uh, brushes, uh, you know, there's some, um, uh, there, you, there might be a, uh, a uh, there might be a, a, a beard and um, hair trimmer in here with different guards, you know. Um, his hair is cut fairly short. Um, he does wear a, um, a, he is in the front room basically wearing a build cap to keep, you know, his, keep the sun off his eyes. Like a, you know, like you'd expect somebody to be having with a, like a John Deere or a Cat Diesel, you know, sort of cap on his head, not a cowboy hat. He's just wearing like a cap. Um, so you would have seen that his hair was fairly short and with tools in here, looks like he does it himself. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to make my way down the hall. Um, I noticed that there's two doors in the hallway that appear to maybe be a... Yeah, there's a good closet. Or or yeah, and there's, there's exactly what you would expect to see in that electrical band. Um, there, is an, there is an attic ladder, though. An attic ladder in the... Yeah, it's an it's an overhead ladder in the hall. Oh, in the hall. Okay. Yeah. Um, now taking that down is going to make a shit ton of noise. Yeah, he's I, right uh, around. I'm just going to make a mental note of that. Um, bedroom number two. Anything interesting in there? You were looking for that library, and uh, it appears that you have found it in here. Um, this room has been converted into a library. There are no chairs in here. Um, there is, however, um, the walls are covered with bookshelves. Um, there's the bookshelves are filled up with, and there is also um, uh, there's a uh, a CD player in here. There's a lot of there's a lot of CDs in the bookshelves as well. The majority of the books in here, oddly enough, are books about foreign languages. You know, learn French, learn German, learn Russian, learn Mandarin, learn Hindi. You know, there's things like that. Because there, there, there's, it's an enormous amount of stuff here on on foreign languages. Got to learn to speak with all the dead soldiers. So. Uh, there <laughs> is, however, there is, however, um, oh gosh, um, there might be um, some books in here. Uh, there might be some here checking titles. You're going to see things like um, there's a lot. Of, there's there's a number of magazines and journals, scholarly journals. Uh, the scholarly journals are, are uh, uh, books on uh, appear to be books on archaeology. Um, there's some stuff to, uh, that's uh, uh, clearly been published in the uh, the UK, United Kingdom archaeology. Um, there are other books about um, uh, sort of uh, Celtic mythology up there on the shelves um, as well. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, it's there are no crumbling tomes. There are no uh, books bound in human skin. Um, <laughs> But uh, there does seem to be a lot of books uh, related to um, English pre-Roman archaeology that are up on here, and books on. I mean, you know, you got your you got your Fraser, you got your Golden Bow, you know, you've got um, uh, Margaret Murray's Witch Cult in Western Europe. You've got a lot of the a lot of the. I wouldn't say the basics because some of it's, you know, uh, some of it borders on the crank. Um, <laughs> you know, Margaret Murray stuff hasn't turned out to be correct, you know, uh, as far as we can tell from 
things like um, in in recent times, her some some of her theories her theories have been debunked. Um, but at the same time, just checking on my car out front. It was cool. Um, but uh, it's um, it's stuff that uh, your character might um, have heard of, uh, just in broad academic terms. Um, the stuff uh, that you've got here uh, doesn't date back. I mean, it, it looks all mostly. 20th century maybe it dates back to the, something might date back to the 1920s uh but uh most of it's either 20th or 21st century material um that's what it seems like that's with just a cursory run in your eyeballs okay any right. um, hidden switches in the two cases <laughs> go ahead and give me a uh, a search roll please Twenty nine. All right. Um, you come up with a. Um. Uh, you come up with a uh, a revolver, uh, another one. Um. It's um, uh, hidden or stashed behind one of the bookcases. Um, there's a literally there's a holster holding the revolver clipped to the back of the wooden uh, bookcase. Um, and a place uh, for a revolver? Yeah. Um, where if somebody stuck their hand down in there, they could uh, they could come out with this come out with this pistol. And Not a particularly big revolver. Which bookcase is on? Like would you need your left hand to get it or your right hand to get it? That's a very good question. You're right. It looks like you'd have to do a right hand draw with this. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, back in the front room. Mm. Um, he says, um, He says, uh, listen, Charles, um, I recognize that I'm in a tight spot, but um, there's a chance we can all be reasonable about this. Just listen to what I have to say. Maybe, maybe we can see that um, there are options besides having this end like the last scene in the wild bunch. I, uh, when Kearney uh, got me out of there, I, uh, I got back home. Actually, yeah. Yeah, when I was still in the hospital before they rebuilt the house. Um, They wouldn't let the dog uh, be in the um, be in the hospital with me. You know, I kept asking where was the dog, right? You know, they, they're like, you know, what dog? You don't own the dog. But I dreamed about her, dreamed about Kieran, and uh, she led me down those steps all 700 of them down to the uh, down to that deeper world that we all have right up here to do that left hand <laughs> um, and when something's there the well those things can't and took me to the throne at the heart of the abyss. Uh, caves that uh, uh, seemed almost endless, lightless. But there was light. There's always light. There's always light in the dark. 
talking about here is actual a light in the darkness, right? Better to light a candle than curse the darkness, right? Well, this is the candle. The things that we've been up against, the things that we've we've fought and seen, they come from somewhere. They come from a source. They they come from a place. You you've seen aspects of it. Uh, uh, you've seen facets of it. You've 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 you're the blind man describing the elephant, right? Okay. But it all comes from one source. This 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 uh, <laughs> for whoever's listening to this, it comes from the mighty messenger. It comes from the crawling chaos. It comes from well, the, the black pharaoh of Egypt, right? The Nyarathotep. That's the source. But what I found, what I found is the cure. What I found is the light to that darkness. There, it doesn't have to be us trodden underfoot by demigods. There are things out there that will stand with us and will help us stop the darkness. And it restored me at a price, but it restored me. Here, let me show you. And he stands up. Really? He stands up and his uh, pants legs, which are sort of tucked under him, sort of fall to the floor uh, down underneath him. But his pants legs don't reach the ground. Uh, he's, but they're there and they're not flapping around indefinitely. They appear to be encasing a pair of legs that you can't see. So, so the pants just like stop uh, an inch or two above the ground and there's no feet or anything, but they're otherwise. Um, okay. That's weird. Um, Remarkable. Uh, he reaches over and um, uh, picks up a pack of cigarettes with his left hand. And he holds it up. And the sleeve that was an empty sleeve, um, or rather, he's got a stump. You can see the stump it's sticking out the bottom of the sleeve. Yeah. He opened the, the packet of cigarettes opens without him touching it. He just holds his stump up to it, opens, taps out a cigarette. The cigarette floats in midair. And with his left hand, he lights that floating cigarette as it floats in midair. Would you care to make a sandal? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you seem you seem sort of you know just lulled into a, oh this is going to be fine. I just have to. It's going to be like Claude Rains, except you know, it'll be just fine. Uh, I did a forty nine. I think that makes it. I think it does because I got fifty five at the moment. It's worth a point. It's fucked up. Dude. Yeah, that's weird. Um, he sits down again and switches switches the he sits down again and he switches the um the cigarette to his left hand. I and, appreciate that. And his the the, the sleeve kind of deflates and so mm. the pants legs. And he says, um how many guys have we had to put out to pasture because something bit off part of their eyes fucking burned out of their heads or their eardrums burst or they're or they've got a mid-chest spinal too many out of the fight out of the club off the team exiled from the tribe right it doesn't have to be like 
It doesn't have to be that way. No. This light, this light shows me that we can put these guys back in the fight. And more importantly, more importantly, this isn't new. This isn't local. This is global. Everywhere, every time, there have been people like us who couldn't do this job anymore. I mean, wars make warriors, right? Well, wars also turn warriors into beggars, paupers. You can't do the job anymore when you've lost so much meat in the game that all you can do is hold a bowl and ask for alms, or hope that your family wipes your ass and feeds you on a regular basis because you can't pick a crop and you can't chop wood anymore. This thing has always been there waiting for us, waiting for us to have give us a second chance to get back in the fight against the real enemy, not other humans. Wow. I'm not sure I'd call the things that serve it humans anymore. But you know that. You've seen them too. This is our this is our ticket to a real shot at winning this war. This is what Delta Green needs. think well you know it uh sounds impressive in uh theory and it's uh pretty remarkable what you've shown me what uh what are we in for what's it take what do we do you have to give up what you lost you just have to give it up in that deeper space you have to remove the things that you want to have back there. You give them up permanently there. You can never have them back. You can never dream them back into existence for and and for some people that's a sacrifice you're not willing to make. They'd rather live in that that insubstantial realm rather than here in the real world, here in this place. Some people would rather escape into that that dream. But if you give up what you have, what you want back there, you can have it here as long as you serve the war. This isn't this isn't without strings. You have to fight the war. The war against the mighty messenger against the heart and soul of the outer gods. Um, but it's the it, it's it's the only war. It's the only war that was ever worth fighting. We wasted the, the blood and the meat that we wasted fighting each other over who knocked over whose fucking buildings. I mean, what the fuck does that matter compared to this war? This is a war about existential threats. They used to tell us that one, existential threats to our way of life. This, this means commitment to the only struggle that really matters. So, so uh, you're... I, he, 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 by the way, he goes, do, do you think, do you think that, um, ah, I see the message. Do you think that your friend's done searching my place yet? It's her job. She's got to have a look. You know how it goes. Hmm. Uh, well, I think there's only one thing left to do at this point. Yeah. Am I back in the room now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I pull a gun. He jumps up out of that chair. Um, go ahead and give me a dex uh, roll versus his dex roll. Okay. He might go on. I was forever. watching Milton get twitchy through all of that. <laughs> so I'm like, I just take him out uh, now. Okay. I'm, I'm sure uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. You guys are undoubtedly out of the car across that 
Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. They, well, shotguns ready to go. For a yeah, monologue and, like that? Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting closer and closer and closer. Right? All right. Uh, I have I have a dex uh, of uh, I rolled a thirty six and right. I have a dex of sixty. Let me quickly move the cat and pull up the opposed dex opposed checks in this game because they don't work like they did in Call of Duty. Let me do a little something different. Opposed tests. So you rolled what? I rolled a thirty six. Okay, and oh, that is unfortunate. All right. That's bad. Um, in these in this game, basically what you do is you you roll against your you know dex times five or whatever. And if both people succeed, the person who rolled, I believe it's this is the weird part. The person who rolled the highest number uh, succeeds hmm. because um, because one 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 uh, attribute or whatever could be higher than the other, right? So hmm. if you have a 76 or whatever, you roll higher than the uh, yeah, highest roll points. Okay. All right. Um, you get your pistol out. You're going to be able to get a shot off before he goes out that fucking window. Okay. Um, he's just out of the chair, poo, out the way, heading for the window. Uh, you're going to be able to get a shot off at him. Uh, go ahead and uh, if you would be so kind, roll firearms. Okay, is he like running on his invisible feet? Is that oh yeah? Of it? Okay. Oh yeah. I, I didn't know if he was yeah. flying That's or a, what. He was. No, no. Well, it's I don't cool. know. The the pants legs are going. I mean, you know. And then he yeah, just goes. I, yeah. So we've got you know Agent um, Marlo and me coming to the two doors. What window mm -hmm. is he jumping out of? Let me see here. Let me pull up my. Pull up my. He's sitting by the fireplace. So are they in the? Are they in the near the fire? Apartment? Yes, they are near the fireplace. Okay. And so which window? There's... All right. Um, he is going out the window. That is, um, uh, if you look at the fireplace, he's going out the window. That's on the right hand side. Okay. Of the fireplace. Okay. All right. Uh, no, uh, my firearm roll was successful. All right. You fire. Give me a um, <coughs> give me a uh, percentage dice that will be your hit location. Okay. Seventy. Okay. Um. You shoot him in the leg. Um, <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> I was trying to disable him. Um, he goes out the window. One of the things you'll know, uh, give me a, an awareness roll, please, there, Sean. I rolled a 48. Again, I think that's less than your, I give like a, at least, yeah, a I have a, I have a 55. So, all right. Um, going out the window, he covered his face with the, uh, with his right hand or okay. right arm or where his right arm should be. Yep. I mean, he gets it up there and there's just a stump that ends here, but he goes out the window like that. Yeah. Um, crashes right through it. You guys outside hear the crash of glass. Uh, Gwen, you're inside, you hear the crash of glass. Gwen, what do you do? You also hear the gunshot. Everybody hears the gunshot, obviously. It's a I, boom. I drop my pistol and okay. run out. Run out there to see what's going on. <laughs> um, you've got you got Sean there standing there with an empty, the uh, big window that's just blown out right there, and maybe some curtains hanging in it. Um, you two, um, which one? Which door were you near, and which door was the other one near? Marlo, you go left around the building. I'm going right. Okay, around the building. So I'm going to be on the side with the where the door was, the the door that they gone in. The main entrance, yeah, the one they went in. Did, he, okay. did the legs game. did the legs seem hurt by being shot or did it um there was not a splash of blood yeah or a gout of blood and there wasn't um there wasn't a particularly uh, a sound of pain um beyond oh. the sound of gritted uh, uh exertion and okay. throwing yourself out a window which okay anybody's likely to make a noise but you know yeah. there wasn't a uh there wasn't a scream or whatever. Wilhelm right. scream. Yeah, I'll, I'll there was try not and, a Wilhelm scream. I'll try and follow, follow and fire another shot into his back 
through the window when my opportunity arises. Okay. And I um, might say, around, going right around the building, Marlo's going up left. All right. Um, Gwen, you're uh, right behind him, I suppose. Um, let me see here. They put a few things away on my very crowded screen so I can right behind Car Carlo. Get this sort of out. Camera off. Camera off. All right. Um, you're going to move to the window and uh, try and find the target because he kind of fell down beyond uh, below the the uh, your immediate frame of reference out the window. When he went out the window, the window is you know doesn't go to the floor. So he <laughs> I went, go to the window. He goes yeah. He goes he went down. Um, uh, all right. Um, so you go to the window, right? Uh, you're going to go to the window. Uh, you're going, uh, Andrew, you're going around the side of the building and you are what, the side door or the front door? So if you look at your diagram, mm -hmm. there's the door on the left and the door on the bottom. Yeah. We're approaching both of it. Yes. Marlo, Marlo's on the left. I'm on the right. So we're just going to go around the building. Okay. All so right. I th I'm thinking somebody just came out of the window right in front of, like, right in front of me. No. Um, oh, no, I said, oh, or I said the other window, the bay window. It's the back window. He went the back to the top of so the, the I'm top of this. Much closer. You're, you're All right. closer. All right. So for that door, so I hear that, and I'm and I'm very yeah heading that direction. All right. Um, go ahead and uh, give me a um, uh, both Sean and um, uh, Michelle. Give me uh, awareness rules as you're coming around the corner. Oh, uh, alertness and what? Alertness. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I rolled a thirty, which is okay, a good. success. Uh, uh, alertness, sixty-two. Okay, and let me check your alertness. Seventy-three. Okay. Kind of good. You're pretty fucking alert. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Comes from growing up. Watch out for drug drug dealers. Yeah. Um, oh, all right. Um. Here's the good news. Um, uh, Sean, you start to come up into that picture, into that window, looking out. Yep. Um, go ahead. Uh, you see that um, uh, that uh, that uh, Griffin is about to fire around at you from a revolver that he has produced from I don't know where. Um, but he has one. Um, and a gun. In his left hand or his invisible right hand? It is hanging in the middle of the air. <laughs> of course. The, it pistol, is. the pistol is hanging in the middle of the air. Well, that's um, not strange. Okay. Um, a flamethrower. Uh, he goes, uh, he, he's going to be firing at you. Your awareness roll was low enough that you've got a chance to dodge this. So go ahead and give me a uh, dodge roll and we'll see what happens uh, as a result. I rolled a 51. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I have a 50. Okay, that is not great. <laughs> Jesus. All right. <laughs> well, you roll 1d10 and you roll a 10. That's why you're wearing a bulletproof vest. All right. Also good news, he shot you in your bulletproof vest. Nice. You are shot in the, uh, you were shot in the abdomen. Okay. Um, it, uh, it sucks up three of the, the, three of the hits from that hit, okay. but it's, uh, still seven points of damage. Um, Ouch. you literally have no penetration, but, um, an enormous amount of hydrostatic shock as your internal organs are actually bruised, which yeah. is nothing that anyone wants to have happen. Um, you, uh, it, it, it's terrible. Um, you, however, did try and dodge out of the way and ended up picking up this round as you dodged out of the way. Gwen, uh, you are behind him. He sucked up the bullet. You'll be able to shoot out the window. And Michelle, you will be able to shoot around the corner. All right? Because you coming around the corner with that 12 gauge. Uh, go ahead and give me your two hit roll under firearms. Uh, the shotgun does not have the advantage of the um the laser sight on the pistols so you'll have to just roll your regular unmodified shotgun or fire you failed I got a nine 
You got a nine? I rolled a nine. <laughs> All right. You, I rolled okay. a 69 on 59. So. Okay. See, okay. Boom. Shotgun goes off. There's a giant explosion of dust and dirt as the uh, 12 gauge round plows into the sand. Uh, Gwen, give me a uh, percentage roll after having rolled that nine. Wait, Marlo or Gwen? Gwen. Uh, Gwen. Uh, Moultrie. No, sorry, Moultrie. Please give me a percentage. I missed. Oh, okay. Is the percentage roll still the two D tens? Yes. Not that I should ask this, but the sanity roll as I'm watching the gun fire from you know not being. I, I will ask for an awareness roll to see if you notice that there wasn't an arm attached to the gun that was in there that was fired. <laughs> uh, um, I then rolled, you. Forty uh, percent. Forty percent. Okay, you actually hit center mass. Um, please to roll one d ten damage. I made my awareness roll. I'm not sure that's a good thing. <laughs> Five. Okay, you tagged him. You see the bullet impact him in his chest, and he uh, makes a makes an unhappy face when you shoot him with the bullet. Um, it does not make him happy at all. He he grimaces in in pain and agony. Um, uh, please, Agent Marlowe, make me an awareness roll to see if you get to have your sand roll now or at the end of combat. So I rolled a fifty four and a seventy three. So I succeeded in my alertness. Congratulations! You now get to roll a sand roll. <laughs> right. You've actually like, noticed. I'm too aware. <laughs> uh, you've noticed the problem. How? Uh, what? 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 what, what what benefit is wisdom if it brings no profit to the wise? I so please, a mm. I succeeded. Well, you take a point of sanity loss because holy shit, that gun was in the middle of the air, and mind you, there's a gunshot from inside. He sort of turns um, uh, again. Uh, he's standing. Um, you probably maybe you didn't notice that the pants are long, so we don't notice that the feet are touching the ground. But um, uh, yeah, uh, he turns like something impacted him from the house and the, the pistol comes kind of back in from instead of being extended like this, it comes back in, you know, as he as he turns with the impact of the round that hit him. Um, and he starts hightailing it um, around the end of the house where Andrew is actually, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, uh, new combat round. Um, what do you want to do with yourself, Gwen? Do you want to come out to the window and stick your head out, or do you uh, uh, do you, do you two both want to run for the window at the same time and crash like Archie and Meathead, <laughs> trying to go through a door simultaneously? What do you want to do? Um, tell you what, let's let's do this on dexterities. Call okay. out your dexterities, and I'll tell you who goes first. Well, my dexterity is God, sixty. All right. Oh, 60. 12. Uh, the times five is the 60, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, uh, you're all doing it? Because I'm at 80. Yep. Then you're you're the you're first, then Gwen, then you're the same thing. Okay. Uh yeah. then everybody else has a 60. It's yeah. uh it's a, okay. Me first. So Michelle, you actually get to go before everybody else. He turned his back on you and started running. You can see, like, you know, as he's he's as he's running, make another awareness roll. Where's the dog? Uh 47 success. As he's running, um, he is neither leaving footprints or kicking up sand as he goes. Funny you should mention the dog. It just bit Gwen. <laughs> All right, I need a Almost different... Don't like me. I don't know why. All right, it has bit you on the leg, and it has done a whopping five points of damage as it really savages your leg, tears through your pants. Um, blood goes everywhere. Dog goes. Arr! I'll shoot the dog. Okay. Um, that is up to both you and Gwen to shoot the dog, uh, which will be happening simultaneously. Okay. Um, now, uh, but before that happens, uh, Michelle, yep. um, you have an opportunity to fire another shotgun around at this guy as he's trying to run around the side of the building. Absolutely. Take it All right. 
Wait, is the does that mean I have minus five hit points now? Yes, we have. You've so lost five. five. I've lost five, but that's ah, yes. like in the the nines at the derived attributes. Yes. Yeah. So yes, the five right, is running around the building toward me. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. All right, that's definitely a hit. Um, yeah. <laughs> please to roll. I believe it's two d ten, and then I'll ask you for another percentage roll, please. Um. Zero, zero, and nine. Oh. Oh. Um, the percentile is zero and zero, zero, and the other rolled nine. Yeah, that's a nine. Okay. Yeah, so nine. Here's the news on that. Zero, zero is 20 points of damage. Oh, nine is uh, neck up. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, he's headless. <laughs> you shot him in the back of the head, and um, his head explodes. Um, <laughs> you 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 put every single piece of buckshot, all all was it sixteen or eight the, the sixteen pellets into his head. It's not good. His brain exits out the front of his skull. Boom! He falls down. You're there at the side of the building, ready to shoot, and this headless guy falls. <laughs> basically goes forward past the edge of the building and flops on the ground and spills out like the interior of a holiday pumpkin the rest of his brain matter on the ground in front of you no no alien worms or anything else come out or anything you want to get closer for a look i'm, I'm probably going to be horrified by this right? he compulsively has to i think yeah it seems so. he immediately goes and starts poking his finger into the brain matter and See it again there. All right. Um, yeah, he just he, yeah he's he's blasted from behind and falls dead at your almost at your feet. I mean, not quite because I'm sure you were back behind the edge of the corner so he wouldn't see the gun barrel sticking. I don't believe he's going to be quite dead because I think his his dog guide is going to rest. It, you know, he's going to be coming up like a thumb. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, back in the house, uh, Gwen and uh, and uh, Sean are in a fight with a dog. So, um, I'm just going to let Gwen go first because uh, you're at the top of my screen. And Sean goes, go. Like, go ahead and roll some percentage. Roll me a percentage dice. See if you can shoot this dog. Uh, you do not get the bonus of the, the from the weapon having a laser sight because you have been discombobulated by being bitten right. by a dog. I rolled a 36. All right. I think that's under your... I think that's actually 42. under your skill. All right. Roll me a D10, please. One. Oh, well, you like shot the dog's ear off. Blam! We're going to get a call <laughs> from the SBCA about this. Sean, uh, the dog has not let go of uh, Gwen's uh, leg. You should probably do something about that. I'm going to use my excellent Navy SEAL training to put a slug into it. Uh, I rolled a 13, which is very much a hit. All right. Give me a, um, give me a uh, D10 damage. 10. That's much better. Let me just see. That's check. my Navy SEAL training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's a dog, not a SEAL. I don't know. Really... Let me quickly check in on Dewart's hit points. Wow, the dog makes that sound that dogs often make in movies. That breaks my heart every time Ooh. it happens, and uh, it lets go of uh, of of of. Uh, it's mortal uh, coil. Agent Agent Moultrie's leg. Mostly, it lets go of the leg and goes goes limp on the ground uh, flop bump. and um it's real quiet now what yes i wheeze <laughs> Please. my injury yes you do actually <laughs> <laughs> fuck not good Mess. not good at all keep the shotgun pointed at the body because yeah <laughs> i don't know i well, trust I'm, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm expecting something to happen does you do could, do the pant would, legs deflate once he's dead, or does he? Well, you'd stay? have to go outside and look. But uh, oh, basically, just... you guys are looking at a guy. You seem to have blown the head off a no-legged man with one arm. <laughs> I mean, those I'll yeah. As far as you guys can see, there's no, there's nothing up those pants legs. Just they're just empty. I mean, I mean, there's something up them now. Because you know everybody poops themselves when they die. That's just the thing that happens. Well, thank you, Scott, for sharing. But <laughs> <laughs> they don't show you that part on the movies. They never, they never. That never happens in Die Hard. But I'm telling you, it's just the way it goes. Hans Gruber is definitely well, shooting. Um, 
<laughs> well, that's you make a good point. I, in fact, Alan Rickman is shitting himself because every from what I hear from Alan Rickman is they dropped him before they they dropped him on the two. Oh, is that why? That's that's him doing a, like this? <laughs> that is him doing a forty foot drop into a bag. They didn't. They, they actually had him do a forty foot drop into a bag, and the stunt guy said, "Okay, we're going to drop you on three. One, and they just let go of it. <laughs> oh God! And that was so. That's, ah! So he's like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not acting. I'm, not, I'm just. I'm just, fa- I'm just falling. really falling to my death. Yep. Yep." So yes, that is that is Alan Rickman not acting. So yes, um, he probably did have uh, a little extra on the way down. Um, <laughs> so, um, so so are are Kamarov and I still inside the house looking at a dead yes. dog? Yes, okay. yes, with a dead dog. What do you but want to do about that? Are outside looking at a headless, mostly harmless body. <laughs> I mean, there's probably some lower mandibles still attached. Well, we, we gotta we gotta clean up this mess. We've got a mess now. Yep, you definitely have a mess. Do we have um, cleaners for this, or do we? There's have... no other dogs showing up, right? Nope. <laughs> and the, the dog does appear to be a normal dog. Is it a, a cursory? It, it it appears to be. Okay. Uh, yeah. As long as I'm convinced the dog is dead, Kamaroff is going to still stagger outside, feeling very bad from the internal injuries mm-hmm. that he just suffered. But, All right. Uh, the. Uh, keeping an eye open to make sure we're not again more dogs aren't running in or we're not that the threat is actually over all right um the uh the i guess deflation of the situation as we sort of dial it down um uh go ahead uh andrew and just give me a sand roll for having a Guy's head blown off in front of you. Uh, 69. Um, that I think is above your sanity. sanity. Yeah, uh, yes, it is. No, yeah, it is by two points. You, 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 uh, let's see here. Um, you take a little <laughs> bit of sand points, uh, losing that. Let's see here. You take two points of sanity loss, seeing that happen. Um, Agent Marlowe, uh, give me a sand roll for blowing the head off a guy. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Not easy so. to do. We, we, it's, it's kind of a hard deal to blow the head straight off a guy until you're, you know. Uh, uh, I roll an eleven. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> you now have the you now have the option of adding another check to your character's uh, uh, incidents of violence without going insane, uh, where your character could now be um, uh, choose to become hardened against violence and take a hit to your uh, charisma and um, have your bonds all go down, uh, and, but never have to worry about rolling a die again when it comes to blasting people. What would you prefer to do? Would you prefer yeah, that to seems remain... about right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that seems then, yeah. like the right thing to happen. <laughs> all right, then. Let me uh, roll a die and see how low your charisma goes. I believe it's a D3 <laughs> for hardening yourself to violence and you lose two points of charisma uh two points of charisma and two points off all of your bonds all right so you are just a little more dead inside (laughs) a little less likable and still higher than some of the other people you you had the highest uh, Christmas score going into this, right? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, but, but we fix, but we fix that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say, um, yeah, uh, uh, Sean doesn't have to do nothing about shooting a dog. That was just fine. But uh, Winifred, or rather Gwen, give me a sand roll. See how you do with having been mauled by a dog and tried to blow its head off, and only four. Four? Okay, you have survived another incident of violence. You can put another check in there. To see if you eventually want to get to the point where you're inured to violence, um, hardened against violence, but not all the way up. Anyways, that's how that mechanic works. Now, what do you want to do about the the body? Is this a matter of setting everything on fire and walking away? Or you want to search this place a little more thoroughly, and you want to do some first aid about your leg. I want to do some first aid on my leg yeah. first. All right. Step one: Go ahead and give me a first aid roll, and you might want to do one to Sean when you're done with your leg. Can we help? 
I did a 43 for first aid. If you've got higher first aid than she does, which is through the roof, because no, she's a of course not. doctor. Did, no, I have a first aid score, but not that high. Okay, so 43 on me and... Oh, 83 on Sean. Just well, it's still, <laughs> that's still under it, isn't it? Yeah. That's <laughs> 84. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Well, the, it still counts. Even on okay. 84 counts. All right. So, uh, first aid is. All right. Wrong page. I believe it's um, a D3, but let me just check. It also. One of the main things for you is you stop the bleeding. So you don't have to worry about things like, you know, um, uh, uh, continuing to lose hit points, you know, <laughs> because you've, uh, all right, healing, resuscitation treatment. All right. Go ahead and give me a um, D4 hit points recovered by both of you. If you want to roll that yourself. D4, all right. Yeah. I thought it was a D3, but it's a D4. Apparently, we're more generous than 6th edition colleagues. I don't understand how this works. <laughs> uh, I'm going to roll a, you roll a, a four-sided die. I can roll one for you. I, I have one. an app that's rolling, but like this is, I don't know if you can see this. This is what, no, you can't. Nope, can't no. see it. This is what happens. Like the the it lands with like the point of the pyramid facing me. So I Yes. And oh, really? Well, like, the trick oh, is, like, is whichever number is right side up on the bottom. Oh, two. All right, you get two points back. All right, I picked up three points back. Excellent. Um, you're feeling slightly better. Uh, <laughs> however, you're leaving a lot of DNA around here, or at least one of you. Somebody is leaving a lot of DNA around here. <laughs> um, I will note right off the bat that uh, a shotgun... Um, Fortunately, it doesn't have any rifling in it, so there's no way to match the buckshot to the individual shotgun as long as you pick up your shell casings. So that process begins. Sanitization. Yeah. I won't bore you with the details. Do you want to search this environment some more? Yes. I do a little bit, yeah. So are we going right. to stage this up properly to make it look like a suicide fire? <laughs> well, you got a dog yeah. that's been you got a dog that's been shot twice. And then a guy whose head's been blown off with a shotgun. You put him in the bedroom um, with a shotgun. What, what, what it might look like, uh, what it might look like is that friends of the guy who shot his other dog came back and murdered him. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah there you fine. go. Yeah. Is that they're in jail? You know, so the cop, if that's going to go over. Those, friends of the jailbirds, okay. Yeah. Friends of, clearly, friends of the jailbirds came back and shot this guy. Really? I mean, they murdered him. Sure looks and, like that to and, me. And, we threw can, we can of, break the door in a little, you know. And threw him out a window? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think they threw him out a window. This is a problem. This is a this is a problem for other cops to figure out. Really. Yeah, absolutely. I, I put him in bed and light him it on fire, and it'll look like he uh, yeah. had another smoking incident. That's, that's yeah. right. With a shotgun, with you know, with, with his head blown off with a shotgun. Yeah, yeah no. Uh -huh. You leave yeah, the, the shotgun. Fires don't get that hot. You leave it with him in bed, and he's yeah. lighting and doing. It. Both the same. Clearly, he was in mourning for the dog that died. Yes. Sure. We just take the other dog's body away, and then nobody has to ask why is there a second dog. Exactly. Um, I am suddenly reminded of one of my favorite get rid of a body techniques that came up in a uh, James Elroy novel, but it won't work anymore because we're in the 21st century and we have you know DNA and finger. He was like, it was a scene where they're trying to get rid of bodies in Florida. And so they, you know, steal a car, put the two guys in the car, and then duct tape shotgun shells into their hands and then fill into their mouths and then set the car on fire that's to blow up the fingerprints and blow up the dental records and all this. I'm like, <laughs> that's fantastic. That wouldn't work. <laughs> that as brilliant as it is, it has no effect on modern forensics. Now, that bleach in your trunk. The bleach, yes. We have the, the bleach, bleach in your trunk might do some favors as far as any of the blood that you left behind when. Yes. Um, so like, what you're thinking is like we need to stage the body so the head is kind of where the pool of blood is. Pour but the problem is, is that you got, you got you got you got brains all over the place outside. The idea of picking up all of those little pieces of brain. Yeah, no, we need to stage a break in. Fire, where's the flamethrower when you need it? Uh, now, I mean, it. sure, if you want to set fire to the to the body, that's fine. I mean, there's there's <laughs> many options for doing that. I'm just saying, 
the body's not putting the body in the bed. So moving like, on, oh, it's leave not the body help. out. We set it on fire. We stage, you know, I don't know if there will be any evidence left after a fire, yeah. but we could do that. But yeah, no, no, go, go lock the door, break the door down. Yeah, exactly. And, Make and it look the, like they got in, break a couple other windows, do that, then set it on fire, you know, bake it, it out from there. Yes, perhaps they set his house on fire and he jumped out the window in order to avoid being burned and they shot him. Maybe. And crawled. That could totally work. And he crawled. Searching very, the place. Very plausible. Everybody see. roll everybody roll some search rolls, please. Tell me what you get. That would be S for search. Mm -hmm. 43. That is a success. 23. That's a success. All right. 29. All right. It looks like everybody's making it this time. Yeah. Except Sean. All right. I made it too. Yeah, congratulations. How there many is guns? A, <laughs> the, the, well, congratulations. There is a gun in every room. Yeah. <laughs> they're well, all revolvers. Texas. They're it's all Texas. revolvers, uh, primarily so that you know um you can um leave them loaded forever and it won't mess with the um the magazine's uh, uh spring strength, although that may be a myth, but yeah. Revolvers are all over this house. There's basically a revolver in every room, ranging in uh, ranging in caliber from 44 to 38 special. There is also uh, attached to the um, uh, the ladder from the uh, upstairs when you pull the ladder down from the attic. There's a M4 carbine right there on the stairs, uh, attached by uh, what appears to be a Velcro, a couple pieces of Velcro. Uh, around it, uh, holding this, uh, you know, assault rifle with a magazine in it, just right there. Uh, you know, if he had to pull down the. But that's not the cool part. The cool part is that now, when you ran around the side of the house, um, uh, Andrew, I wanted to note that uh, one of the things you ran around uh, was there was a a staircase that went down on the side of the house that was like going down to the cellar an exterior staircase down like one of those like uh you know concrete steps out from the side of the house but it was all filled with gravel it was all filled with gravel when you're searching around the rest of the house you get to the master bedroom um you guys pull a uh move the bed and underneath it there's a hatch do you, does anybody want to go down the hatch into the bowels of the house? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come this far, right? All right. You pop the hatch. Um, you guys uh, came equipped with uh, flashlights. Yes. It's a yes. dark and it's a I dark two, room. It's a dark room down there with a concrete floor. There is a um, there is a uh, a ladder, steel ladder that goes down into that basement. Who wants to go down the ladder? Me. All right. Somebody else go. My leg's still all messed up. No, yeah. I'm, I'm the person to go down. All right. <laughs> this um, is my there's, 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 there's no yeah. rolls and there's no rolls necessary. You get to the bottom of this thing. You're shining that shotgun around with a flashlight. And what you find down here appears to be, uh, well, first of all, you find down here, this is the basement. And there is a basement door, but that basement door has been basically uh, replaced with with like cinder blocks. It's been cinder blocked shut, okay? And then they filled it with, the exterior staircase was filled with gravel. Downstairs um, has got, you know, some fluorescent lights down here. What you see is there's a treadmill. There's a whole <laughs> bunch of free weights. There's like a gymnasium down here. There's also an arsenal. There's just, you know, big uh, cabinets, uh, upright cabinets holding various kinds of military firearms. Um, there's a bench, uh, you know, there's a big workbench that looks like it's filled with uh, gunsmithing tools. There's um, uh, partially disassembled uh parts for weapons. Um, there are cases of ammunition stored down here. They appear to be stored in a professional, you know, safe manner um, down here. Um, 
yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot of that. Thank you. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, uh, that combined with, as I said, some, uh, what appears to be gym, gym, physical workout for, uh, uh, uh treadmill, um, a, a bunch of, uh, free weights of various kinds. Yeah. The, that is all that is down here. The things that are down here, I will note, um, some of them look like they might have been like the some of them look like they uh were too big to bring down here through this hatch like maybe they must have been brought in through that door with the that's been cement blocked shut uh perhaps in the past but uh, most everything most things down here like the furniture like the cabinets the guns go in and and, and things like that but most everything down here is you know, designed to it is it looks like it's big enough to fit through the the uh, hatch under the bed. Um, the, there is um, there also is down here. Besides, there, there's also a small reference library down here of what appear to be um, U.S. military manuals of various kinds. Um, the kind of stuff you could get at any gun store, any gun show. A lot of them are, you know, few like a decade or two out of date, so they're no longer considered classified materials. But they're old SOPs on things like, you know, um, how to handle different weapon systems, um, how to set up guides to one arm generals, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, but yes, uh, there is, um, there is. Is he talking to people? Like, why did he need all the languages? Is it was it? I mean, all the books on languages. Um, What's with the two twin beds? Uh, on the <laughs> there is one other thing that's down here, and I should note that there are um, some benches. There's 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 like a, a a bench, a padded bench that you would do the exercises on, you know, rather than you know that you you would lift weights or do put you know, bench presses, except down here there's no um, uh, there's no like bench press machine there's just you know a bar set and set of weights uh not the smartest thing in the world to do that without a spotter but okay and um over next to the um the workspace where there's like a reloading uh kit and uh, a thing for you know cleaning your brass cleaning the uh, the powder out of your brass um, that's that thing Burke Gummer turns on, I think, during uh, Tremors. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why is he turning on that vibrating thing in the middle of the movie? That's to get the Burke powder off your brass so you can you can reload it later. Um, there is a a uh, a three ring binder down here uh, that is um, filled with uh, 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 well uh, magazine articles, newspaper clippings. Um, a lot of it looks like it's printed out as opposed to cut out of a newspaper, like it was printed off websites or printed off, um, uh, uh, yeah, printed off the internet. But, but we found um, no computer. Hmm? But we found no computer. No, no. Um, and uh, the, um, the, uh, the, like I said, the book appears to be divided into sections, this, this ring binder. And, um, you know, like the first one uh, is a uh, file or a section marked um, El Brujo Loco, and you open it up and it's a bunch of information about a um, uh, a Gulf cartel figure um, and, you know, news stories about him, um, excerpts from, uh, 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 you know, most of it's public source. There's nothing in here that looks like it's a uh, police report or a yeah. internal file. There's another one about uh, another uh, sectioned off part of this three ring binder, which is about, uh, let's see here. Oops, I lost my place again. <clears throat> It's um, talking about some guy named uh, Saxon. Uh, fortunately, not John Saxon, or none of you would have gotten out of here alive. <laughs> yeah. John Saxon. But um, 
yeah, there's a there's like a there's a, a a section on a guy who appears to be some sort of um uh I guess you'd call it um uh, uh, uh investment guy, you know. Um it's all uh, material about, you know, um what his uh where his his company money came from, where his seed capital came from, who he's invested with, you know, um Things like that. It looked like targeting of people. So this is this is look like a Delta Green Prime, you know, is it part of a another another organization? Yeah, I mean, it looks like. I mean, you don't know. I, actually, go ahead. Uh, do let's do this. Um, make a uh, roll under anyone who's got law uh, or history. Uh, make a roll on. Um, on that, see if you make it. Nope. 47 out of 41. No, I missed Okay. It. These names sound familiar to you. We'll wind down the scenario at this point. We'll just let you guys withdraw from this. Later, you will do the research and find out these guys are dead. These guys were <laughs> killed like last year. Yeah, they're targets. Um, During some what... mysterious times when, you know, Ben might have been missing and not at home. Hmm. Um. Yeah, if you um, uh, it, it, it'll be a little hard to ask those questions at this For point sure. since all yes. this shooting and death happened, and it might draw attention to yourselves. But now it's that we we we, we fucked all. around, we fucked around, and now we're getting to the GTFO part of the mission. Um, you guys scatter the, you guys get your stuff out of here. We're not going to like you know give you a hard time because it's not a continuing campaign uh, about like how well did you clean up your murder scene. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, that is uh that is one way for the scenario to end um and uh you uh you have some answers but not a lot um the question is how much of his stuff do you want to try and throw into the trunk of the ltd and get out of here with? well that binder at least mm -hmm. yeah, but how much of the weaponry it's all what untraceable um he's uh he has used um God, I mean, the, the Jim Beaver did a role on uh, uh, Breaking Bad as his arms dealer, and he had this whole thing about how to remove oh, serial yeah. numbers that are cut, and how you know uh, the uh, the that the FBI and the ATF now have these technology where even if you grind the serial numbers off a gun, they can still use certain kinds of scanning technology to see where the metal has been damaged under where the 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 the, the etched in number is Just so that away. even yeah you have to keep it going deeper or you have to use certain types of acids to remove it it's sort of cool um however uh yes these firearms have been are all in the process of well, many of them are in the process of being treated to remove all their serial numbers hmm. were you thinking about it uh marlo for for your for adding to the cash yeah yeah for cash, yes, absolutely. Throw, throw it into the okay. Uh, the also, green box. There's also uh, weapons in here that have been altered to fire full auto. I mean, yeah, sure. He's 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 smithed them so that they if they were purchased a uh, 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 if they were legal purchases, he's you know for cash he has removed the serial numbers and he has altered them to be able to be fired at full auto. So they might be fun for the next team who comes to visit San Antonio. Sorry, San, uh, El Paso. <laughs> El Paso. All right, and so, uh, we have a recording of this digitally uh, encrypted uh, from uh, the. I am sure that you recorded this conversation. But the ranting probably got recorded. Absolutely, you yeah. can hand that off to the squints, and they can analyze it until their eyes bleed or ears. I guess <laughs> it's ears, really, because it's audio. Exactly. But anyways, gentlemen, you and ladies, you have survived the enemy of my enemy. Wow, you survived! Very nice. And you're um, still alive. How about that? Us. I would like to point out that one of the reasons you survived is because you kind of crashed straight in. Um, yeah, so scenario, like, if we give them any time to prepare, there were guns everywhere. We would yeah, them. well, that's not the problem. The problem is that he's not alone, and there's guns everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So if you, if you, if uh, the more you dawdle, uh, the more you there's the the more the uh, odds can start sliding the other direction. Although it does get more entertaining when you meet his other buddies. Um, my player, other group of players got in this and they got into a thing where a firefight at the ranch where 
uh, one of his compatriots was providing covering fire with a sniper rifle, like uh, yeah. 500 yards out. And so the Ooh. players were being, you know, shot at by a weapon they couldn't reach with their pistols, you know, and it was very bad. Um, and then somebody rolled an 01. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, roll hit location, head. <laughs> Got damage 10 Got him. Five. <laughs> and it was literally the woman who had brought like the forensics expert you know just like just sticking the gun out from behind the car and just being like ah blam 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 <laughs> hit him in the head and just like, took him right out i'm like ah, okay the dice have spoken and then they found out that they had you know um they had killed essentially the guy from johnny got his gun they had killed a man uh, a quadriplegic with no eyes yeah uh, a deaf, uh, missing his lower mandible. So it was like um, the Phantom Limb Society, basically. Yeah. Yes. Um, congratulations, you've run into a cult of nodens. Uh, Sean needs to leave. Oh, I Sean. do, I do. So I just wanted to put in my my two cents of thanks, Scott. Thank you so much for running it, and uh, delightful to play with all you guys today. So thanks thank for uh, having us part of it. Thank thank you. You. I lost my thanks finger. for hanging out with us. Absolutely. Thanks for getting, sh thanks for getting shot. <laughs> my, my pleasure. <laughs> Do well. Bye bye. The hand is disappearing dependently. All right. So yes, you're clearly one of them. As your hand disappears, you're you're part of the problem. Like, so yes, you've run into a cult of nodens. Uh, I have uh, got some stuffs currently sitting with uh, Arc Dream being reviewed for publication for a cult of nodens that I have tentatively referred to as the Dock Soldiers, um, because there's this really weird connection between uh, Communication with the dead, communication with the other other side of the world, uh, dogs, um, and the actual deity that Lovecraft cribbed to make Nodens, right? The is based on an archaeological dig in England that, if you can believe this, fucking J.R. Tolkien wrote about because he was, you know, a dean of Anglo-Saxon and you know pre-Roman. Uh, you know, stuff. And there was this whole thing about um, uh, Lindbury. I think it's Lindbury. It's a it, it, it's a temple to Mars Nodens because the Romans built it. It was all it was built by Romans, Roman soldiers because there's inscriptions mm -hmm. at the temple saying this was built by Centurion, whatever, in fulfillment of a vow. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, from what they can tell about the place. It is a combination hospital, temple, since, you know, magic and religion and, and medicine are kind of linked up at the time. They had kennels on the ground for this Temple to Mars Nodens. And that's apparently where Lovecraft gets the name, because guess what, kids? Nodens doesn't, the name Nodens doesn't appear anywhere else in the archaeological record. There's a lot of argument, which Jared Tolkien, you know, got in on, on who is Nodens? What's this Nodens thing? Is it a Latinized version of Nuada or Nud or these other Celtic gods? And one of the theories is it's a it's a reference to Nuada Silverhand, who was the head of the Celtic pantheon, who was crippled in battle by losing his hand, his arm, then became Nuada Silverhand because his son or something forges him a silver arm to take the place of his lost hand. But because he's maimed, he can never be uh, the leader of the pantheon. But he then becomes this patron of like crippled soldiers and dogs, which are associated with healing and hunting. And it's all over the original Nodens material. And I just got this idea of making Nodens cultists less boring by turning them into a cult of injured, injured warriors who get re-recruited from the dreamlands by Nodens to fight Niranathotep. <laughs> Because right. uh, Nodens is stuck in the dreamlands, he can't come to the waking world. So he he gets there through his acolytes, through his followers, giving them a new lease on life. And all they have to do is take a special knife down in the abyss handed to them by Nodens and carve off the parts of their dream selves that they lost in the waking world. And once they've done that, those dream limbs come to the waking world and mm -hmm. serve them whenever they need them and then go away when they don't so nobody has to ask why did timmy grow his legs back <laughs> uh the the limbs do all kinds of cool shit like not have fingerprints and not leave footprints and not set off mines 
So, but you said there was other shoes. That's because some of the the phantom limb people didn't have. They had their legs, right? That's why they're shoes. Not to mention, when he goes on a mission, he puts on his boots. They're down in the basement. Oh, they do. He, he did wear. He boots. just puts them over. He just puts them over his feet. His phantom limbs, because when he's walking around in public, he doesn't want to look like a guy floating on the ground. <laughs> he just puts a glove on that missing hand and buttons his sleeve all the way down. Right. Now he's fine. Visible man. Oh. Long sleeve pants and some work boots, and he's good to go. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's what's going on with our cult of Nodens, and uh, yeah, they totally they they, they just want to fight Narlathotep. Don't you want to fight Narlathotep? Sure, Lee. I mean, it's too high. <laughs> you know, I'm sure no, I'm sure no, nothing bad will happen if you it's just easy. fight Narlathotep. Well, I haven't lost my limbs yet. Oh wait, yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> Who's that face that keeps peering in from behind you? It's just, it's like, I know every once in a while it catches. It this catches go, the, this the ghostly uh, face peers in from behind you. I don't like to look dun, at dun, that. Dun, dun. Here we go. You see it? There we go. Okay, it's a uh, Watson. Yeah, it's. In fact, it's uh, whoever Jeremy Brett's partner was. I've suddenly forgotten the name of the actor who played. Well, there's two of them because different seasons. Wait, mm -hmm. there were two different Watsons in the Jeremy Brett? Oh, fuck. I didn't notice. Yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> they both have so, mustaches and bowler hats, and so you just said, uh, whatever. They were stuffy and British, and exactly. And, okay. your alertness role. <laughs> yeah, so much for that. Yeah, David Burke was, I guess, the first one, or the second, yeah, first one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, series one. So that was the first one. Okay, hi, Watson. Watson looming over you. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, it'll be seeing publication in 2024 so that everyone can, uh, decide whether or not they want to um i don't know make a deal with an outer god i'm sure nodens isn't just another aspect of narlathotep right i mean of course not no, no. i mean it, i'm sure it's a completely separate entity and it, it only it only has yeah, our and best it's the light fighting the dark right yeah, yeah i mean yes exactly i mean why 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 would why wouldn't it have our best interests at heart? Right, and like all the exactly. men that were killed were clearly agents of, you know, Nihilothotep and not, yeah. you know. Well, you know. that's that's the problem. It's, it's, <laughs> they, they are, in fact, agents of Nihilothotep. It's just that Nihilothotep doesn't give a shit about collateral, sorry, Nodens doesn't give a shit about collateral damage. Yeah. Nodens is like, is he on a bus? Make the bus go away. Oh, okay. Problem solved. Um, Yes, I, I have two things to say. What's Scott. that? That is one is dynamite. You know, sanity is a uh, you know a sawed off shotgun and, and a stick of dynamite, and the, the other is fire, hot fire, burn. Those are those yeah, are fire, those things. are good things. They, we, Delta, we, Delta Green. That's that's what I know. You know, you know somebody. Oh, there was a podcast. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of their podcast. They're very good podcast. They started off talking about Delta Green, but they branched out into all kinds of other gaming related stuff. But. Um, uh, one of them, they had they had this thing about what was the, they had this whole riff in their in their podcast about uh, Mossy Arrowhead, the Stone Age version of Delta Green. Like <laughs> Delta Green is just scared of everything new, so Mossy Arrowhead would have been the guys who immediately stamped the fire out and smashed the head of the guy who invented fire. You know, like it was, oh, wheel new and bad, kill. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, and I I, I heard that I'm like. You might be right. You might be right. That might be what we really are. Is a is Delta Green might be just a bunch of um, uh, uh, reactionary clods who who smash anything new and different. That is that is a distinct it possibility. Is, that is true. I um, actually doubted myself for a little bit. You know, I was doing this. Yeah, I, early on, I was like, hmm. I'm going. I'm maybe we should join them to fight in his library. <laughs> Astro bodies or something like that. But uh, don't worry, they're not going to make you carve your arms and legs off. Just yet. <laughs> right. But the whole point of this thing is sort of to be a thing where if Delta Green players get their characters mangled, we got rules for permanent injury. Mm. You could have a dog wander into your life. Now, mind you, Sean's character has a, a VA dog. So when he goes home, he's going to be looking at that animal and <laughs> you know. Does he maybe maybe he keeps the bedroom door closed and makes the dog sleep in the front room from here on? Out. I and I was suspicious of Sean's character. Can you believe that? <laughs> really? <laughs> but um, yeah, so 
the whole idea is that this is a temptation. My character's out of rotation because they're mangled. We can fix that. Yeah. You can be back in the fight. Don't you need to be back in the fight? You know, and yeah, that's, there are many ways why that is a bad thing. And I will leave you to buying the book uh, when it comes out next year to understand why it's a bad thing to decide to team up for the big team up between Nod the Noden's cult and, um, and uh, 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 well, Delta is. Green. But yes, we, we, we had, I had a lot of fun building all the different cults around the world made out of mangled veterans. <laughs> uh, the thing is, there's fewer and fewer of them. Mm. Um, the number of people who suffered amputations in World War II, World War One, World War Two, that number has just gone down and down and down and down and down until it is a vanishingly small number of injured in our latest conflict. It's actually quite small. If you, however, on the other hand, over in the Ukraine, I imagine Nodens is having no problems finding no end of recruits. potential recruits over in that part of the world. But well, yes. It's good to have options, I guess, especially when you're playing with your characters that you like. And then, too, mm -hmm. we look forward to the uh, publication when it comes out. Thank so. you very much. Great. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Gwen. And, and, and thank you, Gwen, for inviting me along for this. Yeah, thank you for running, a, providing us with a afternoon and diversion. And it was super fun for me because I hardly ever get to play. And um, I'm sorry, the only thing I could manage to do is get you bit by a dog. And, that's and, okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> should, have, should have should have had something more horrible happen to you, but one of the problems is again, you know, it's it's a cult that doesn't have a lot of um, bayaki. Oh, well, there's there's night gods eventually. I mean, there will be night gods eventually. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there there's there, there there's not a lot of um, uh, super really creepy uh, other events that I have uh, attached to them. Maybe when it comes back from edits, uh, Shane would be like, they need to have more horrible things they do to people. Yeah. They need to throw in more stuff than just. The whole dreamland thing but i i personally quite like the dream so I think awesome. <laughs> maybe when the dog bites um their their limb starts to disappear because it's being transported back to the dream oh world. well I, I honestly biting a chunk out of you and having not be able to find the chunk would be yeah pretty yeah. horrifying actually <laughs> yes say i'm lost there yeah for sure <laughs> um because it just went to the dreamlands yes the doggies come from the dreamlands and there is a possibility also uh for your own dogs at home to start mm. to become a problem because what about cats cats aren't they egyptian and that's a bast problem that's a bass problem. <laughs> problem please please consult god's teeth the the campaign god's teeth for the problem <laughs> with bast this is a this is a dog problem this okay. is i'm afraid nodens is a doggy problem yeah so. dogs of war yeah <laughs> right. it's not cats of war it's dogs of war it's dogs of war yeah yeah all right. And until next time. Um, Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Cthulhu Girl, Michelle. You. Thanks, everyone. Had fun. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. For being here for five hours in your costume. Yeah. No, I'm ready to get out of it for sure. I, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> All right, Brian, take us out. All right, we'll see. <laughs>